This is a 12 hour conscious live stream event. This is a creation, um, a deep creation of quite a few exciting things. Um, a beautiful friend said this morning to universe to heal you. And those words really resonated with what we're doing today here because what my experience has been as I keep growing this beautiful little empire of mine, the millionaire shower woman, the awakened wealth community, our new upgraded quantum leap community where we are helping people, me and my master coaches, my quantum leap master coaches, are helping people to step into the next octave of their life, knowing that your next octave of life vibrates at a completely different frequency to the frequency that you're vibrating at right now. And to struggle, to, to push, to force for this next, next experience, expanded experience of your life to eventuate without working within yourself, without shifting your frequency, it is completely impossible might not be for you for this inner journey if you are not ready to experience profound change and be the driver of radical responsibility of of where you are and and your own creation the fact that what you're creating what you're seeing right now all of it all of it is coming from you and that is that is fucking exciting but also a massive responsibility there is nothing in your life that you can say I haven't created and I'm not creating, which means going forward, everything is by, everything is coming from this beautiful creative power that I want to awaken in you. I want to awaken this creative power in you today. So I'm going to be sharing you with you various parts of what I do. This was an idea actually from my coach who said, man, Clay, you should just take what you do behind these curtains that you keep so shut. And you should bring it and you should just bring it live onto all streams of social media. And I just laughed him off. I was like, yeah, no, because that really created some deep fear in me, some deep fear of, of being that vulnerable, of pulling that curtain fully back, of being all of me, bringing all of me through. And you, if you are not at that next octave that you keep seeking, the bigger business, the bigger income, the bigger impact, more influence, more authority. That's somewhere in you, you're holding on to fear. You are attached to security somewhere. I've realized this year is that this beautiful, deep soul happiness that is possible for all of us, it doesn't come synonymous with everything is going to stay the same and safe. And you have to be okay with getting to the most vulnerable place to step into co-creation with the universe which was why these beautiful words of these beautiful this beautiful friend this morning you know let allow the universe to heal you every single thing in your reality everything that you are creation and you have the opportunity to stop reacting to the things that you see and to start stepping into this beautiful with spirit that is living through you and today that is what we're doing that is what you're going to see in the things that we have lined up we are going to talk about activating this sacred life force that is running through you this sacred fucking pulsing current of prana life force that is running through you in your every moment i want you to get up onto your feet right now and feel your feet on the floor feel your connection this earth this earthly plane that we're all inhabiting in this, these, these beautiful physical bodies that we have but within us or through us is all just energy, all just energy. And that energy is what is manifesting in your world. So you can change it up, change state. You can learn to become the reality that you want in energy. So that you attract it this year that has been all about loving all of myself unconditionally forgiving myself you know letting go of these insecurities letting go of the vulnerability and just saying fuck it you know taking the next level in my own soul pilgrimage 
which is where I'm also helping my clients, which is we have to go from a place of victim consciousness. We have to let go of the idea that we're reaction to the world, that it is happening to us. We step up from there into this beautiful, beautiful radical responsibility that we have. We have this creative power <laughs> and we are creating all of it. And we begin to trust. We begin to trust in this fucking there is something there, something greater. There's a greater reality. And we are in it, but we're getting played, right? We start to trust in the fact that spirit has our back. You saw, if you're watching my documentary, that was Carmen's journey. Spirit has. But what we're doing today is going the next level and learning that spirit is within you. You are spirit. You, you are God. You are the awaken that trust for fucking trust full letting go of control letting go of everything letting go of attachment to every single essence of physical material security that you are holding on to with a fucking death grip i'm going to talk about that today because it is blocking it is the wall that is between where you really want to be and who you are in all of this beautiful light shining out and so we're going to start today with something that makes me feel fucking vulnerable because this year, as I have begun to love on all of these parts of myself and allow this beautiful creative energy within me to just keep coming up, keep rising and stirring and loving and, you know, bringing incredible experience of fully living into the feelings within. What do I love? What do I love to do? What activates me? doing this today has been quite an effort in the sense that I have had the, the the craziest last two weeks I have had the most insane painful last weeks and I didn't want to do this this morning I didn't want to do this today I I didn't feel like it but you know what I did feel passion. passion to bring this to you, to bring this that you can see in the um, caption, which tells you what we've got going on today. I felt passion. I felt passion to do this, to bring it to you, to bring me to you and bring all of me in all of my light. And one of the things that I've been doing over the last maybe six months is playing right here music I have been learning to play the cello I it, it, it looks like my next octave of life is very musical and I'm going to mix for you live today which I intended to practice I intended but in the last two weeks of chaos I fucking haven't wanted to and so you are getting creation right here which has not been practiced which is completely vulnerable vulnerable which complete and I'm scared shitless right now but you know what what I want you to do is to move your body listen dance feel today is about feeling whatever you're feeling right now you know maybe you're feeling top of the fucking world and it is the best day ever maybe you're feeling really low maybe you're feeling frustrated maybe the things in your business aren't moving fast enough and you know, you're tired. You're tired of the push. You're tired of the force. I want you to let it all go. I want you to let it all go and just be in your body and know that there is such ancient, encrypted wisdom in your body. We have these beautiful energy centers all the way through us that are connecting us to the universe. And that means that the universe is running through you. And that is why you can allow the universe to, to heal you, to help you, to, you know, it's circular. Uh, it's coming, it's coming back. It's all co-creation, which means that the feelings that you have to the things that are happening to you in your, in your business, in your life are key, right? We need to learn how to change them. We need to learn how to love unconditionally on what we see and know that it's all happening on purpose. There's a message in all of it. So today I'm going to get onto the old music in just a minute. I'll just I'll just show you them again. They're so freaking hot. Look at this. Woo! -hoo! I have to stick stickers on them to, to 
to know what the buttons do. That is the newbie I am, but I'm doing this because I want to get vulnerable. I want to show you that you can fail forward. You can go forward imperfectly and it doesn't mean anything. What can people do is tell me I'm a shit DJ. Fuck it. I don't care. I just want to do what I love and do what I do more of what I love and, you know, help you, help you through the experience of it. So, um, just going to schedule right here. Just checking if I'm live. I'm sure I am live. It's just I'm not talking to myself. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Look, I am. Um, our trustful schedule for today. Okay. So I'm going to be here at the music, here at the decks. Oh my God. It's 11, 11. Look at that. Perfect timing until midday. And then at midday, New Zealand, uh, 49 minutes from now, I'm going to be streaming the live seven day seven mystery school workshop which is the biggie you my awakened wealth blue the nine step journey i take clients through to really step into radical express trust the next level of their influence and authority whilst making more money with more freedom this is all about freedom this is all about liberty when you can let go of that attachment that you have outside of yourself because you release your fears everything is different right the world opens up to you because you open up isn't that beautiful the idea is vulnerabilities and you can blossom like the true flower that you are and like a flower know that the sun is going to rise the moon is going to follow and that it's all in circulation and that you are going to have everything that you need in every single moment because that is what you know there's a little bit of a drought The fucking flower knows what to do because that hologram is within its seed. It knows. You know. How would your life look differently if you start to navigate through these experiences through your inner compass? And that is what the mystery school has been about. Awakening your... And starting to understand that knowing is a feeling. Knowing knowing isn't a scientific study. Knowing isn't any of what the ordered civilization that we have the the beauty of living in tells us it is knowing is a feeling and we know your body knows we can start to navigate the feelings are like a treasure map towards whatever you are seeking and instead of avoiding them distracting from them numbing from them and I know this is really easy to do in your business right because you have that pressure of making money you want but you, it's taking you away from this divine way of quantum leaping. You know, I taught in the mystery school about the quantum staircase. In traditional coaching, if you work with a traditional coach, you will be shown that your goal is at the top of a staircase and the coach will help you to step up, you know, identify the steps up and take each one linear, logical. Whereas with quantum coaching we say sure you're there at the top of that stair- staircase and we help you to connect so deeply with it reality is within you which means there is no fucking staircase anymore because it, you are drawing it towards you quantum possibility quantum creation quantum surprises we've covered all of it in the mystery school this week and what the mystery school day said is is the culmination of that school and we're running that workshop live here on uh the live stream and you get to watch that okay um you're also going to get a copy of my book leading with light not the whole book just my chapter in it which is called how shamanism will save the world which is all about how we step out of this divide between helplessness and power by reclaiming our innate creative power letting go of go of our fears which is what the shaman does these rites of passage that a shaman takes to awaken a lion's heart get over the prime and you know maybe the days it was fighting bears being dug into holes but in your life you are being given opportunities every single day to overcome your primal need to stay alive and yeah the 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 chapter confronts that and how it is money and our fear around money and how our society has us locked in these fears on purpose because of the power, the highest frequency that is available to us, which is unconditional love. Um, and in this beautiful age of Aquarius that we're moving into, you know, this is where we're getting back to a new earth shift, a 
a new earth frequency of people saying, fuck that shit, unplugging the matrix and remembering, remembering the power within themselves and activating it. After that, we have, just checking on the thing, we have a beautiful interview with one, I said we, who is we? I am not alone anymore in this beautiful mission. I have uh, a stream of quantum coaches behind me who are also now going out and using my quantum leap method to help people, to help you potentially. And so one of my beautiful quantum leap coaches is coming in at 1.30 and she is going to be talking about about sex magic, creative energy that you feel, right? This has been our theme in my in my membership that I have, the Quantum Leap Portal. This lunar cycle, teaching you how to activate it, teaching you how to transmute it, use it, use it for manifest and man, manifestation, healing, really more than that as well. So we're going to be having a live chat with Joe, and these interviews today are going on to my brand new platform called, which is a platform for conscious creation. Um, there is going to be a, po a podcast on there and these interviews that we are filming today will be put in them. We're basically building this thing today through this live stream. So that's super cool. Then we're going to be coming back to me and I'm going to be taking you through a breathwork and somatic evolution, which is going to blow your freaking mind. Then at 3.45, I'm going to be taking you through a presentation about activating the fifth holistic circuit of your brain. So what we will be doing in this breath work is activating this fifth circuit. What is this fifth, fifth circuit? <laughs> and why are we not operating in it? And what will happen if we do? So if you're looking to make more money more easily and attract abundance into your life, I call this awakening your miracle frequency. That is the theory behind it, right? We're going to be, um, I'm going to be presenting on that 3.45. And then we are going to be coming into the premiere of A Baptism of Fire, this incredible documentary that I have been sharing with you over the last um, month or so, a couple of months. And this has profiled three of my clients' journeys to being authors and the journey that goes with um, really section and publicity and profile. You say you want it. You say that you want the 10K followers. You say that you want the $100,000 in the bank, your energy body is saying something completely different. So if you want an unconscious fear of having it all easily, then this documentary is going to show you how. And the thing is, as I was profiling my clients' wins, I was actually going through my own struggle in the background, and I'm going to be revealing what that was today. Um, we are then going into all of the final interviews. That is going to be with the beautiful Junk, Junk, Junker, who is um, a recently finished up client. She was working with me for nearly three years. Um, and she's going to be talking about authenticity, self-expression, and light leadership. And then we are going to have my other quantum leap coach, Carmen, coming in and talking on right. Um, we are then going to have a quick break to watch the second half of the Baptism of Fire. And then we're going to be finishing with this beautiful interview with um, Lizzie Vince, who I've been following on social media for a while. She lights my soul fire up. She's fucking incredible. And she's going to tell you about trusting or holding the dark side of your desires. Now, is we're going to get the music on. Um, are you going to bear with me? Because I say this is live. I've procrastinated enough. We're going to have 40 minutes of listening to me, putting some music together, dancing, enjoying feeling fine who you are you're going to see that in the episode of a baptism of fire today your feelings divine define who you are they define how you show up they define whether you make the decision to react to your world or use your experiences as a way of moving forward and releasing everything that is holding you back from the truth of who you are and this deep soul happiness but if we can find that deep soul happiness first they were activating the fifth and we're shortcutting everything. We're shortcutting all of this hard work, um, all of the trauma trap, all of the shit that keeps us locked in the left-hand side of the brain, trying to make everything logical and slow, actually. So the idea is when you film music is to, is to allow the music to awaken something in front in, inside of you, right? And I sit next to my cello teacher and she plays her cello. I love how, how the strings on my, on my cello vibrate. I'm like... 
like that's us that's what it is that is the you know this innate encoded wisdom in the body like sound sound heals sound awakens sound moves but only if you allow and so we want to listen to this music and we just want to lose ourselves in the music and feel allow love and um we'll be coming around in 40 minutes to the uh masterclass okay so let me share my screen gardens speak for me when I am gone. Let them speak in colored whispers of all the beauty I have seen and felt and lived. Let them speak of how much death had defined me, how many hard seasons it took to make me a living, breathing thing. Let them speak of my seasons of growth and abundance, but let them also tell of my seasons of loss and decay. Let the soft, wet earth be a reminder of hardness that didn't win, of sadness that didn't calcify, of surrender that triumphed over resistance and let the glorious fragrant blooms speak of my life and its greatest lesson that the beauty we make never dies come sit by my garden
I never pay attention in my mind. I'm recording, I'm about to win and ruin all your goals and dreams out of boredom. Riding on winning, ruin all your goals and dreams out of boredom. Riding on winning, ruin all your goals and dreams out of boredom. Riding on robbing homies like we wanna see.
sumo. My name's Rat and I know my judo. Kamu say hello, kill them like Pluto. Numero due, numero uno. You know, speak so frat like Bruno. Ace the rock, he loves Juno. Hugo, boss man, drip with a new flow. True though, Sharingan killer, they call me Naruto. Down on the beat, I'ma keep the ground on my feet. I don't win no crown on the street, but you still know me. Still the same old V, still the same old house on the same old street with a brand new flow on the same old beat, and it turns to gold every time I speak. Look me in my eyes, oh, thriller like Michael. Wait, delete that I made a typo. Michael Myers, Halloween psycho, like them fires. I'll send this pyro, spiral, dragon, I'm Frodo, bagging all the shit you're chatting. Your teeth get smashed in, extracting like dentist grafting. Nitrous oxide gas, no laughing. When I put it down on the beat, I'ma lay you down in the sheets. Take it to the circus, she's a freak. Vegan girl, she still likes my meat. Feed the girl, cause it's time to eat. Toes curl when I'm in too deep. Fuck the girl, now you really wanna be. Oh shit, he's knocking on the front door, leave! What the fuck? That black sock up, fuck up. That scene, talk my sock, sock, chop, chop. I'm a millipede on my feet. Mohammed Ali with my reach. Biting double D's in my teeth. I'm a freak, I'm a go with PD on the beat. You're a need, you're a little fuck boy, you're a geek. Let me speak, I'm a cop like Joy when I preach. I'm a beast, I'm a com lock nest unleashed. Who's that boy who moves like a raver? Oi, 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 a new tasty flavor. Anakin flow, I glow like a saber. No sweat, bro, I'm loving the labor. Work, 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 a work, workaholic. She's work, 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 she's working right on it. One in the backseat, one on the bonnet. Grabbing my William, this is my sonnet. I'm that fella sipping seller, we call that an interstellar. I'm a rapping Cinderella, serve it like it's mozzarella. A cappella, say it better, bend the beat like you again. Go get a trendsetter on your feet like David Guetta. Better and better, I serve it letter for letter. The upper better, I make the cheese, I make cheddar. I got the brrrr, better than that, I'm spitting pepper. When I <laughs> impeccable rhythm, the rock macker on the beat. When I put it down on the beat, I'ma make it sound so sweet. When you hit the sound of the gun, that's a cue to run. When I put it down on the beat, I'ma make it sound so sweet. When you hit the sound of the gun, that's a cue to run. Thank you. 
I think that's about as much as my adrenals can stand. <laughs> How was that? Oh my god! Okay, we have got 11 minutes until the live masterclass. We have the beautiful Don live here in the room with me. Um, we had a good chat this morning, eh, Don? Taking the taking the world on, and maybe he's gonna check in a little bit later and share his feels on this whole experience and what's going on for him. So I'm just going to pop a little advert on for a few minutes until we come around to the top of the hour where I think we're going to be seeing a lot more people coming in to this live stream room. All of the mystery school people who have been with me for the entire week learning a little bit more about this quantum leap method and how it plays into this, um, I'm get myself with these things on, um, how it plays into the Awakened Wealth Blueprint, these nine steps to really stepping into this fully radically expressed version of yourself experiencing the reality to match right because it's all coming from you it's all coming from your truth it's all coming from those feelings how did it feel to dance um and yeah let me put this little advert on and then we'll get on to our live masterclass. Woo uh, here we go. where are we where are we Not sure that this is sharing. Hang on a sec. Don't think we're sharing. So look. Love restream. Still figuring it out. Entire screen. Click. Share the audio. Click. 
go across over to here. Nothing's happening. Sharing your screen and audio. Stop sharing. Okay. So hang on a sec. How strange. Might not need an app. And let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. It's all good. We've got an amazing, amazing thing coming up. In seven minutes time, which I know you will be chomping at the bit for this incredible um, masterclass that we have coming up. So this masterclass is all about scaling income and scaling income really fast. Done. Let's try it this way. Wait a second. So it's all about scaling income easily and by tapping specifically into the dynamic interplay between energetic principles and simplified marketing strategies that's going to be coming up in six minutes time i'm going to have a quick pause just a second we're going to try this we are going to try this chrome tab here we go let's do it this way If you are ready for transformation, if you are ready for that 2.0 version of yourself, creating this business that you are proud of in a positive way, that is creating the income, the impact and the influence that you want. The way to do that is what I call activating your miracle frequency. And your mi miracle frequency is where you are just a bundle of those higher 
frequency emotions every single day. You are in a higher consciousness. You have stepped away from the victim consciousness to unlock this way of where things happen for you. Synchronicities and miracles are part of your status quo. You are attracting what you want to you with ease and you are in this place of freedom where you get to create what you want every day without those limiting emotions. I learned once from a TED talk this idea that emotions aren't just this thing in your mind like a bank that they're stored in there that they're just sat in there and then in the moment your brain taps into this little emotion bank and takes one out and then says here you go this is how you should react emotions are created completely from scratch from scratch in the moment you are in the experience they are created from the belief system that you have so if you can change your belief systems, then in the moment when your mind reaches back into those experiences, there will be no negative emotions that it latches onto to divert from an experience that aligns with your truth. The emotion will be created in the moment of joy, excitement, something that takes you forward, something that gets you into powerful action, something that allows you to take risk and go big, get super visible, use your voice, scream from rooftops. What it is that you believe can change the world. So work out that truth, connect with yourself, learn about yourself, chuck everything out that is misaligned to you. Start healing those limiting emotions and have the courage to step into your power. We all have a story. My story created the blueprint that I have to help you because I know how these emotions can limit what you want in your life. But if you're like me and you have that soul goal to make a difference and do it in a way where you are wealthy and able to experience an abundance in your own life, give your children the most amazing experiences, give to projects, give to charities, create foundations. I'm here to show you a way forward where you can have it all and it can be easy. It just takes courage. Courage is the line between those lower frequency emotions and those higher frequency emotions. And in those higher frequency emotions, if we can live through those emotions, joy, unlimited love, enlightenment every single day, because we have resolved those emotions of the past, we get to have those emotions guide our interpretation of the reality that we have and guide those big life decisions that we make and guide how we take action on these powerful strategies that are given to us in our business to create the results that we want. We activate your miracle frequency in such an easy way. I have created seven simple seven minute neurosomatic rituals that tap into the ancient wisdom of your body and tap into how we So you just saw there. Let's get this one off. You just saw there the big reveal. Yes, I am running a retreat. 
next year in March in Costa Rica. And, and it's going to be incredible. It's going to be, it's going to be three, five days of really going into this inner space and activating, activating the pulse of this sacred current that runs within you, eliminating separation completely. Because you may think that you feel that unity consciousness, but really I think a lot of us have our limits to fully letting go enough to experience that. And so in these intimate events, we get to go deep. We get to go really deep. We get to go into your body. We get to release. Um, we're going to be talking to Judith later on who was in my January event in Mexico and has been absolutely um, unrecognizable since and I'll let her explain why um, so that's amazing there is a little comment underneath this video and you can access in that comment you can access um, my, my chapter in a leading with light for free which I really recommend you go do um, you can pop your name on a wait list for the details of the retreat at the priority access and early bird price, which is fucking phenom phenomenal. Like just to let you know that you do not want to wait until this fully releases. Get on this out of trust fall today. Um, and you can also get into the free community as well, the Awakened Wealth community via our app um, and start using some of the techniques you're going to see and I'm going to talk about today. Um, I am now going to get into the presentation of the final day of the mystery school, which uh, a mystery school was phenomenal. If you weren't there, don't worry. We're going to have like a little recap of um, what we did, what we learned, but also how it all leads you to here. And right here is where we now start to step into um, the the full blueprint you know unleashing this this millionaire that lives inside of you um just hasn't come out yet in terms of your frequency so i'm going to cross to this beautiful i'm gonna hope to god this works now because the last one didn't and i think it's too big to go onto canva um let's give it a shot let's give it a shot we will go to Entire screen, click, share the audio, click. And just make that a little bit smaller, click. Ooh, look at this. I think I figured it out. Check her out. Check her out. Technology, the, the growth that is happening here. This is what happens, people, when you trust fall and you say, fuck it, I don't feel like it. I don't feel ready. I feel passionate. Okay, I've got something to share. I'm ready to share it. So I've got a screen here. We're going to make this one like this. We're going to get some sound on it. We are going to go back down here. And there we go. Enjoy this workshop. It is phenomenal. Sure, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's for me, and it just went automatically because that's what I had open on my phone. We can figure out how to move it. Hmm. It came through my email, but it opened my mind because I could with that and I had open it. Yeah. Oh, so you call me out of my eyes. The she says my eyes. Yeah. The first one is my eyes. She knows. She knows. She knows. And there I find you in the mist. Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Good evening. Good middle of the day. Middle of the day. Hey, you said it to me too. Yeah. 
coming around to we're coming around to five past so if i see people jumping on i will i will let them drip on as i start to introduce to do today what i'm going to be presenting for you i am going to pop all of you on to mute um, here we go where's my Let me know if there's any, I am using my phone and my laptop <laughs> just to make triple sure if anything drops off, we have a plan B. Amazing. Perfect. Amazing. So we're going to be talking today about the secret to scaling income easily by tapping into the dynamic interplay of energetic principles and simplified marketing strategy. We really have, we have taken energetics to the next level in the mystery school, right? We really have gone deep in the last, well, over seven days now. Um, and I'm gonna help you to understand why what we've talked about makes sense in terms of growing your soul business taking your soul business to the next level stepping more into your purpose stepping more into your light and stepping more into the limelight because you know you guys when you have um just looking here on the chat oh brilliant bell i'm going to pop that up here um when you have these skills and these gifts when you have these hearts and you're not putting yourself out there, you know, people aren't receiving these gifts, you're not able to connect with people that doesn't only affect your bank account, that affects the greater good. You have been through every single thing in your life so that you have these gifts, so that you can bring these gifts to people. And today I'm going to show you how I've not only created one multiple six figure business, I've now created a second multi six figure business and beyond. 
um, in a very short space of time, I have created epic quantum leaps and I create quantum leaps for my clients as well. And I really want to show you how I'm going to give you everything. I'm going to give you everything that you need to walk out the door and start creating magic in your own business. Week in the Mystery School has just been the most beautiful experience watching you break through, watching your progress, watching you support each other, watching you love each other, watching you become conscious to the unconscious, the mystery. And your mystery will run deeper than what we have seen it this week. So I'm really excited to see how you'll go forward with everything that you've learned to achieve your goals. And I really hope that you leave today feeling so confident to take the system I use to break my clients through their income plateaus in four to six weeks and step them into radical brand expression, a deep connection with their message and who they are, those avatars that you have shared this week. Imagine living your, not only your life through those avatars, but imagine bringing those avatars through in your business. Um, it really does come down to what I call unleashing your millionaire inside, really feeling into your, your truth, the expansiveness, um, instead of feeling caged by those limits that we talked about, that guide your decisions, that guide your actions. So how visionary transformation coaches healers and new earth leaders are creating more money in less time and taking their business to unprecedented heights of success give me a hoo ya in the chat if that sounds like good shit to you today if that's what you're here for i did see your your intentions as you came into mystery school and i know a lot of you were seeking clarity or were seeking a lift in your mood or were seeking you know, um, to release certain blocks, but we have to go beyond those intentions to the, so you can what? What are you really here for? What is the thing that is guiding your decisions right now? And at the end of the day, if you have a business, it is whether that business is making money. It is whether that business is making you feel fulfilled. It is whether that business is feeling aligned to your soul's truth. It is whether that business allows you to lean more into the things that you love or take those things that you love away. That is what my system does. It takes you into alignment, fulfillment, radical expression. But more importantly, like we read in my chapter, into freaking profit because profit means that you are making an impact because energy money the exchange if you're exchanging then you are reaching then you are impacting and i fall so much as a spiritual leader as somebody who has a soul business the whole charging piece you might have even seen a comment on my facebook just yesterday somebody hopped on the phone with me and and was absolutely you know dismayed that I could possibly ask to to charge for what I do and you know I thought to myself this is exactly this is exactly why I wrote my chapter because if we can change how we feel about money then we will switch on our energetic circuits of abundance and I hope that I really made that clear yesterday to what I believe about money about the exchange so you have to exchange on what you're giving you have to receive as well it's so important it's so key and then blending proven marketing techniques again once you have that beautiful clarity once you're high as a kite like bella you know imagine imagine being bella's energy every single day that focus that switched on that passionate that's from the work that she's doing on herself within herself her commitment every single day to sit down you know in her med on a meditation pillow and go in. And then we tap into these amazing marketing techniques because you'll feel like using them. You'll feel clear about what, what content to use through them. You'll know who you're talking to. You'll know why you're talking to them. So this is the power of, of, of tapping into your energetic potential as well and unleashing a million dollar message, a million dollar brand. 
Oh, yeah. Kendra says, who? Yeah. Jesse. Whoop, whoop. Bella. Whoop. I love it. I wish we had sound effects. How cool would that be? <laughs> um, perfect. Okay. So let's look at what we've done this week. This feels like school. Look at this. Look at all these badges that you guys have brought yourself through. Those of you who are on the call today, the majority of you have shown up every single day in that mystery school. Like, kudos to you guys. That's that's epic. You've taken yourself through these incredible steps, which are the foundation of breaking through your money ceilings and becoming an energetic match to what you want. And you've learned a lot as well. There was a lot of quantum theory behind these badges, right? You soaked a lot of stuff in. Now we want to take learning to action, to transformation. So today I'm going to show you how to design your own scaling income system in your business that works like clockwork. So you can attract the people that you want to work with. I sat on a call yesterday with a different guy <laughs> and I just realized, you know, he was, he was a perfect client. In fact, he signed up one-to-one. -one. He's taken one of my, um, one of my open one-to-one -one spaces and he was the perfect client in the perfect position, you know, with the perfect mindset. And that comes from speaking to your ideal clients, being clear about your ideal clients. But we can also be strategically clear about who we're talking to, but also then blocked in our heart too, holding back, feeling not worthy to call that, that client in. So these will, these will create the blocks. They'll create the income roller coasters. What I see a lot, so much in my, in my business is the self-sabotage. I'll take my clients to four figure months, five figure months, and then they ship themselves and they want to cut off the thing that works. They want to pivot. They want to change direction. Suddenly stuff's going on in the family. I have tools to actually help you to go through those things. And the beauty of that pressure, that's the toothpaste tube I talked about during the week, right? Squeezing you out, squeezing out the shit that's been holding you back. And that is why it's a scaling income system. Because based on the marketing principles and the energetic principles, as you're growing, as you're revealing more of yourself, becoming more expressive, and then you have what we use as our sales asset, which is going to it's going to get its own. Um, what's what's the statement? What's the what's the quote? It's going to gain its own ground, right? It's going to move itself. It's going to grow itself. And that allows your income to scale because, again, another problem that businesses have is they might break through their income and then they can't stay at that income. It's going up and down every month. It's not predictable. And then your business becomes very stressful to run. OK, so it works like clockwork so that you can attract the people that you want to work with you and create the money that you want to in your business. So just for a moment, I want you to close your eyes. And let's find a grounded, centered space. Let's start with relaxing and releasing our pelvic floor and our abdominal muscles. And then connecting with your breath. Oh, there it is. And then as you draw your breath up from your root into your heart and opening your heart space up, allowing whatever emotion is sitting there right now to connect to you, breathing that energy all the way up now into your midbrain, holding it in your midbrain, squeezing your pelvic floor so that we keep it there, hold it there just for a moment. And then let it go and relaxing all the way down as you let go. I'll take another breath just like that, squeezing in the pelvic floor, moving your energy, being with your energy as it moves up through your body, as it opens your heart, as it moves through your center of expression, your throat, your voice, into your third eye. Squeeze. Hold it there, keep your pelvic floor squeezed, hold it. 
and let it go. And one more time, just a beautiful breath in. Bringing your energy all the way up through the center of you, creating the grounded connection to your earth force, your channel through to your super conscious mind, the cosmic force, creating a circle with your breath as you let that breath go. And just asking yourself in truth, why am I here today? What made me click that form and join this masterclass? Some of you on the replay haven't haven't been in the mystery school. So what made you click yes to this class? What made you want to be here today? And when it comes to money, what do you really want? Because it's never the first number that comes up, right? That's your survival number. That's your logical number. That's the number that makes sense. What's your heart's desire? What would open everything up right now for you? Give you freedom. Give you possibility. If you implement this scaling income system, you'll realize that actually your freedom and possibility have nothing to do with that number. They have everything to do with what is in your heart, what is in your mystery. But I do want you to see the desire, feel the desire, allow that number to come up. And if, if you're open, you can pop that number in the chat. So something that I am very passionate about, yes, the number, but it's how we make the number. The story that I shared, that I'm going to share with you today, really is the reason why I am so passionate about the movement that I'm leading right now towards awakened wealth. I want you to make this money in a way that creates time freedom and an expanded experience of life. You know, we only get one go on this plane. <laughs> maybe, we, maybe, maybe we get to go through other planes. And maybe we'll get to hang out in them anyway, <laughs> as we as we experienced in our breathworks this week. But, you know, we only get one chance in this body, in this vessel, with this family, with these friends. And what we what we don't want to do is is be one of the what is it? The top five regrets, the one of the top five regrets of those that are dying, the, the things that you wish you had have said yes to the things that you wish you had have done. So this is the exact system that I, I personally use to attract my champagne clients every single month, but it's how I also stay aligned to my innate creativity, my passion and my desire for adventure and freedom. I did have a learning. I am going to go live about it on, um, on socials that this way of running my business, these launches, it isn't for me. You know, it does take too much time and um, too much presence away from my family. And I have been, I guess, discovering how you can find that balance. The way the, the thing that I'm going to teach you today can take launches away completely. Like you do not need, need to do them. But then you can choose to do them, right? And then you can choose to do them your way because I'm sure that there is a way of doing this that even feels even more like me, right? Even more like me. And that's what we're consistently discovering as you work with me is your innate creativity, your way, how you can do things. So you're constantly switched on in your passion, in your desires. And, and my, my desires are always for adventure and freedom. So woohoo, let's have a look at these numbers. Kendra, love it. I really love that. Two million dollars. Boom. Jesse, at first, a hundred thousand a year came to, and I was like, let's get real. I want a million, right? In a millionaire. It sits within all of us. Love that. Love that. Those of you on the replay, write your figure down. Don't let's let's playful out today. Let's be open 
<laughs> you know, it's when we have awareness and we we with ourselves that we really create shifts, right? So my name is Claire Williamson. I help other new earth leaders to create awakened wealth. I'm the founder of a beautiful app that you've been using this week. I hope that you have enjoyed your gift of the um, the quantum leap pre um, quantum leap portal. I know there's a few of you sticking around, which I'm really excited about. And obviously, we, we have a wider community around that the um, the free level of that of the app, the the awakened wealth Facebook group. Um, and I'm discovering more ways to connect with people currently as well and bring people who are like me who are seeking the adventure, the the freedom, the the creativity to connect and support each other, learn from each other and heal together and raise consciousness. This is about raising consciousness. We can raise consciousness. We can change the world. Like I, I said in my chapter, just by doing our own inner work, that has such an impact. We don't even have to take this shit out into the world because just by doing it ourselves, we're healing others. We're raising consciousness. So that was really behind the quantum leap method that I'm going to talk a little bit about today, the, the method that Bella's a student of, actually. And that's transforming leaders from inside out. So if you imagine that you're a coach or you work with people and you just keep coming up against their resistance, you know, they they self-sabotage or um, if you feel like they're not listening, <laughs> you know, it's sort of the method that is um, is really powerful in, in getting underneath and, and really finding out what's actually blocking results and change um, and helping to, them to go through that change, make the identity shift from the survivor of the emotions and the experiences and everything that's happening in their world into their creative power. And, you know, even as the certification, the journeys that the clients go on are wild. I mean, they're, they're wild, right, Bella? It's, it's nuts. <laughs> so, um, again, that's not even being certified. That's just going through the, going through the system, right? Going through the, going through the journey yourself. So I've helped hundreds of visionaries crack their abundance code. Dis excuse me, I've got hiccups. <laughs> Decipher the abundance code because it feels like a code, right? It's like, why can't I crack? Why can't I crack this? I've been going at this for however long. I, I just can't crack it. Well, I help you crack it. <laughs> and they've had breakthroughs that have changed the trajectory of their life and success. So many people who start working with me in a certain job or, you know, business pivot take a real change of direction because they realize that they haven't been you know in line with their soul's purpose or they haven't been playing big enough um i have created incredible financial results for people as well so um there's a few of those little little testimonials there i did want to start with this little video because usually people put testimonials at the end right <laughs> and um and and so many people have jumped off by them i want you to know why you're here i want you to know what's possible um and you know judith is actually one of the authors in leading with light this video was filmed i'm not sure maybe last year so she's now got another published book we will add that onto her list of <laughs> of things that have happened for her, but take a listen to this. I can make that really easy if you're listening now and thinking, because if I look back at my last 13 months, not only have I doubled my sales, so the income of that time is doubled compared to before. I've published a best-selling book. I'm about to publish the second one in June right now. I've up-leveled my clients. I've launched a group program on top of the one-on-one. -on -one. So that is just KPIs that came as a result from working with you largely programs. So if anyone is on that journey as well, stepping into higher income levels and creating more impact, being more visible and being clearer on what you want to communicate, who your ideal client is, then work with you. That is that it is because you do that epic combination of all that energetic and the integrates the marketing right because you know yeah. the business and the people side and that's yeah. just a really really unique and really cool combination 
that just brings a 360 degree thing your full circle i love that um i was thinking about that yesterday right you know so many people feel like their dreams are impossible um nothing's impossible nothing is impossible when you wake up every single morning just like the saying and you say do you know what i am possible i've published three books i sat there yesterday well i stood there because mums i i am realizing spend a lot of time stood in the kitchen <laughs> so I stood in the kitchen um this, our kitchen is the center of our of our house too so we live in a very very small house and there's quite a few of us um so we all end up in like this 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 kitchen <laughs> which i love i do i absolutely love it but i was in the kitchen and uh, the thing came through on my messenger did did from lil the book publisher you've done it you've done it claire and i just broke down and wept because i thought wow you know not just one book three books three books in 12 months bella reminded me i'd completely forgotten because i was so <laughs> i was so distracted with that book launch it's only been a year since I birthed the millionaire shower woman, only a year, publicly birthed that expression and that, I guess, Denise, where are you, Denise? Are you on this morning on the replay? You know, came out, came out with your truth, came out of the closet and, and knew who you were and felt, felt worthy of that role, that responsibility. So much is possible. Everything is possible. Everything is possible for you. And let's make it happen. I also did want to, I love Bella. I love Bella. I was like, send me a little testimonial. It's amazing. And I got this massive testimonial and I tried to cut it down <laughs> to, to try and get the, you know, but it was all amazing. So you guys are just going to have to listen to this. Okay. Bella says, I said out loud and declared to the universe that I have special spiritual gifts and need to learn what they are so that I can best help those who need me. I said specifically, I need a spiritual coach. Claire popped into my DM. When I heard Claire speak on one of her Facebook lives, I knew instantly she was the one to help me through my spiritual journey because I could feel her dynamic energy. I could feel through the deep inner work she had done for herself and instinctively knew that she would understand and guide me on my unique spiritual path. Thus far, I have learned more in six months than I would have ever learned in a lifetime on my own. It has been the best investment for myself that I could have ever imagined I'd experience. And with Claire's continuous squiggle way and openness, she can lead me even deeper into the remembrance of who I am and what I'm here to do in this lifetime. I feel like Claire is that turtle in Finding Nemo who shows me how cool life can be when we learn how to catch that wave tunnel under the water. And she continues to do this over and over again. My soul is enjoying the ride. I'm continuously learning how to get comfortable with being uncomfortable and ride the wave in my own style and enjoying every moment. I love Claire's tools and teachings and find them priceless. I want to continue passing on the torch to those who are awaiting this new energy and way of being in freedom from our own emotional prison that we have been living through. I want to be liberated so that I can help others, help guide the way for others to liberate themselves and live in true freedom and bliss every day. Fuck, who resonates with that, right? Oh my God, like Bella stepped into my mastermind really recently. She came through the Quantum Leap Method. She's about to um, to graduate and be a, a fully fledged Quantum Leap coach. Um, and then she stepped into the mastermind and we had a call yesterday about her possibility in the next six months. And it's, it's freaking wild. It's, it's incredible and she is changing lives and you, we, you, you are changing lives just by being you too. But we wanna increase your reach, increase your authority, you know, make you feel differently about who you are, the way that you do things. And, and yeah, like there's an energy to that, metaphysical marketing, we're gonna talk about that today. So this masterclass is for you. If you're ready to take your business to the next level, you are excited. <laughs> for next level income, impact, and light leadership. You're ready to bring something magical to life before the end of the year. Oh my goodness me, we're in the second half. We're on the, on the slide down to the end of the year. But you're blocked. You can't find 
behind your million dollar message. That's because it's not reflecting, right? The million dollars isn't in the bank, your millionaire brand, and it's leaving you frustrated. And you heard the call. This is really important piece. When I asked to, when I asked the universe to show me 13 light leaders that I can work forward with, it was very clear that these light leaders are hearing the call, calling the call from the new earth to step up as a new earth leader, to raise consciousness, to, um, what's the word, like to live in unity consciousness. And that is stirring the desires of your, of your true soul goal, because your soul has a contract. It's written. We've got absolutely, we, there is no get out. <laughs> if you try and get out in this lifetime, it's going to come and pip you in the next lifetime, right? You cannot get away from that soul contract. Oh, we've got the chat coming. What we got? Oh, I love this. Going to check on the chat. Oh, Bella makes me cry. Yeah, it made me cry. You make me cry a lot. <laughs> You're incredible. I love it. And I, and I really appreciate how Bella has just loved on all of you this week and really lifted you all. And yeah, thank you, Bella. It's been beautiful. So yes, you want all of that, but here's the, but you recognize you have fear. You have moments of imposter syndrome and not feeling good enough. You do lack confidence to be fully seen that has held you back. You get pulled into patterns of procrastination, distraction, saying no to your big dreams because of small time issues. They're taking up your time. They're taking up your attention. And you're done playing small. You're done feeling inadequate and ready to rise into divine coincidence. So across the next hour, I'm going to show you how to qualify your expansion raise the roof on your money and visibility ceilings and unleash a millionaire impact and brand i want you to have a successful business the more that you thrive the more that i fight thrive you are my fuel you are my food your stories of success are what keep me alive i think it's crazy it feels like you're my children and i feel that love i feel that love for you like i feel it for, for them that unconditional you know, pick you, just pick you up and lift you up and keep you moving forward on this journey and wealth. I call it awakened wealth because it is an awakening and we keep our eyes open. Do you remember I said, and I'll share the story as well today about how do you wake up when you don't know you're sleeping? So I've learned so much is unconscious. So now that the mystery school is over, I'm guessing some questions have come up for you and I have had this question <laughs> multiple times <laughs> so the answer is freaking yes i'm going to give you the ability to skyrocket your business growth and reach your goals faster than ever you want to know how to quantum leap into that you want especially especially considering the reality that you have I know you res, right? Comment yet. Yeah. I'm going to show you how to do that today. So, how do you come easily by tapping into the dynamic interplay of energetic principles and simplified marketing strategy? So, Joanne quit her job and was able time in her coaching business. She's a single mum of four. So you can imagine, you know, you look at your external reality and what you feel responsible to, what holds you back from taking, you know, making decisions, taking quantum leaps. Joanne was able to quit her job. She hated her fucking job. She hated it. I remember on her um, coaching questionnaire, it was like, she's like, I just hate my job. I've got to get out of my job. I can't get out of my job. I'm a single mum of four. And she was able to leave her job, go full time in her coaching business. And she was also one of the authors in um, A Leading with Light, Leading with Light. So this is really important. We get told a lot of stuff. We get told so much stuff. It's noise, right? Have the right business model, have the right campaign strategy, do more launches, reach more people, have a business plan, have a business coach, plan better. 
post more, post shitloads, post three reels a day, post six TikToks a day, have a sister, everyone, build funnels, have upsells, downsells, order bumps. <laughs> and that leads, right? Where does that lead? It leads to the launch to launch trap. You are literally making money through action. The condition on your money is you. Your money's coming through constant DM conversations that you're leading because you can't afford to pay someone. <laughs> and sales calls that eat up all your time. And all of the time that goes into preparing things like launches and funnels. Like, and that's the thing that I, as much as I love this mystery school, the administration behind it is insane. It is insane. It is freaking insane. My admin has been off sick this week. <laughs> it's been insane doing this this morning. It's 4.39 a.m. this morning so that I could do this before the kids wake up. And, you know, the, these are the things in your business that you become attached to, right? They've got to be, they've got, they've got to be ordered in the right way. Have you in the process, they've got to have a schedule attached, right? How do you get out of that trap? I really would love to hear if you that if you've felt like you spend so much time in your business on the busy work that you can't see the wood for the trees and you're looking at how to grow right and all you can see is freaking trees you're like lost in a forest and that question keeps coming through well it's got to be it's got to be a faster way it's got to be a different way there's got to be an easier way more effective way but you just yeah, you can't see the wood for the trees. And that is such a stress. And the creative blocks that creates as well, because think about where your brain waves are when you're asking yourself those questions, when you're feeling that stress. You're in a beta brain wave, which is not a creative brain wave. It is a survival brain wave and it is locked in the tunnel. When we're in our beta brain, we're in a reality tunnel that has the walls up that are, uh, you know, locking you tight within whatever belief systems that you have. And as we discussed, even, ex even empowering belief systems can, can, be, can become limiting, right? Because they're fixed. And that blocks your creative energy and disconnects you from spirit and also affects all your energy as well. You feel low, low, you feel, oh, you know, and that does not support reactions. As we know, we're manifesting in every single moment. So if you're reacting and you're, you're reacting through your stress, then you're manifesting whatever is the match to that energy, right? So it's kind of a, um, an ever revolving cycle of doom. <laughs> um, Kendra, yes, yes. Jesse, yes. Bella, yes. See, it's, um, it's nuts. How do you get out of it? You know, I, I felt up to my neck. I felt, I felt really stuck. Um, I'm trying to think when now. <laughs> I think it was 2021. All my years have come together. So to me, learning to grow my business in that way, um, just doing what you're doing right now, right? Taking the free stuff, jumping on webinars, following the people who seem to have what I want and trying to do what they do, um, the logical way gave me the limiting belief that to earn more income, you have to push harder, control more, do more, and basically freaking hustle. I was the condition to my abundance. And the thing is, I was also unconscious. I was the one, like you may have been in the mystery school, completely blind to what was really causing me to live in the reality that I had. And I didn't realize that I was, I was acting out from these belief systems. And that's the problem. Within our own paradigm, we are sleeping awake and alone without anybody to bounce our situation off, without somebody looking in over the tops of the walls and, and maybe even pushing the walls out a bit. There's no second perspective to see what's blocking our path. I'm absolutely certain that the internal work makes us creative, inventive, responsive, and freaking powerful. I used my own quantum leap method to release the fears, self-esteem blocks, and disempowering beliefs that were keeping me stuck in my survival mind and blocked from 
unleashing my good potential. And I'm back to scaling my business in one hour a day. That's why I find mystery school hard, right? It's, it's going from an hour a day to actually having to do some work. <laughs> Right. It's like it's a it's it's yeah, I'm, I'm joking. But what is beautiful that is around this hour, <laughs> the universe is just working miracles. Like I have some magic key that opens all the doors. Um, as you know, I call this switching on your miracle frequency, activating your miracle frequency. And it came from dedicating myself to ritual like I invited you today want to do on day one of this mystery school. That is the foundation of what I do. And I believe this divine assistance is available to everyone. It's available unconditionally, but it's only available when you're truly in alignment with your purpose. But honestly, all of this came from a place of hitting rock bottom. So if you're feeling like that right now, if, you, if you've got your butt, not, butt on the floor, if you're feeling like you're ready to give up, I was also ready to give up. And if, and. I created everything on a leap of faith and it, it simply took letting go of the rope. All of those things I was telling myself, all of the, the, the things that were creating the resistance to change, all of the things that I believed, just let all of them go. And I started to believe that I could create what I truly wanted. I didn't know how. And I was faced with the complete unknown. So what I want you to do with me right now, this is really freaking important. You are just a quantum leap from your goal. I need you to pledge. I promise. I promise that I will commit to what you are going to show me with trust because the transformation is in the transaction of my commitment and I owe it to myself and my clients to serve everyone involved at the highest level. Understood? Do I have your pledge? Don't fool yourself that this just seems too simple. <laughs> the Awakened Wealth Blueprint is a nine-step journey to swap hustle for predictable income, time freedom, and true light leadership. I'm going to talk you briefly through these steps. Like I said, I'm giving you everything. I'm holding nothing back today. You can take this away and do it yourself if if you want to. Those nine steps down into three powerful milestones. Milestone number one, you have began this week. Awaken. This is your personal transformation, the business energetics. Step number two, milestone number two, we start attracting. You already might even be doing that, right? The metaphysical marketing, the backdoor, I call them the backdoor messages. When you've done nothing at all, there's somebody who signed up to this masterclass and she she got that, right? She came uh, through one of my digital courses and she said, I got, I got the backdoor message. <laughs> People just turn up in your DMs because you're attracting them, because there is a metaphysical to the physical side of marketing. But we go deep into the marketing, into the metaphysical marketing and your radical brand expression as the second milestone. And then we unleash you from the conditions, the time, the limited beliefs around how a business can expand and grow and scale. And we implement an evergreen selling and scaling system that gives you absolute freedom. So framework number one is where we're really going deeper with what we started this week, connecting with who you are authentically, creating your own authentic avatar of success. We're removing the armors because what you're wearing when you're trying to keep yourself safe from the experiences that you haven't healed deeply in your body is wearing armors and they're actually protecting you from the level of success that you succeed from the level of success that you seek. Wow, that's a mouth twister. And then we get you stepping into powerful action, right? Just like you feel this week, you're already feeling it, aren't you? You're, you're feeling freaking indestructible. I've loved following Jessie's comments through the group. Like her feeling is changing everything. She's committed, she's productive, she's focused. Um, and that's magnetic. That is magnetic to what you want. What you want. That is the quantum feedback loop. 
remember you have to stay in the energy of your seed intention you have to stay focused on what it is that you're creating not how the world is matching it reality is matching it because there's going to be a gap there is going to be a gap you create polarity when you state a desire don't you right there's suddenly a gap between where I am and where I want to be if you don't keep focused in your energy if your energy body doesn't stay aligned to where you want to be where is the where is the magnet where is the magnetism is it towards what you want or towards what you have in your reactions right this is so important how do you how do you in those four to six weeks if i can change your income around in four to six weeks how do i keep you committed how do i keep you switched on how do i keep you in belief we do it by an entirely renewed and aligned perception purpose which leads to an entirely different prosperity living in the vibration of success and energy that you want you're going to you're going to really understand that in the baptism of fire the documentary um framework number two step number two milestone number two the metaphysical marketing a radical brand expression it's a strategic piece right identifying your ideal client avatar understanding their psychology purchasing habits but what is really important is how this plays out when you feel differently you're no longer working in your conscious mind you're no longer working with what you know you're working with what you feel which takes you into the unknown which takes you into the unlimited which takes you into the freaking exciting i heard a mentor say once he had been an ex basketball player i think um turned motivational speaker and he said that there is a slice in the market that's waiting for you just a little a little gap for you, you to bring what you do your way to the people who are specifically waiting for you and i loved that I loved that. I thought that's so true. So we use my personal story formula from my original business when I was coaching people um, around story selling and social media um, and the brand house method to create hooks and marketing that, that also make you physically magnetic to the ideal clients you want, right? It's both the metaphysical, the physical. And we also implement, and this is huge, this is huge, note this down. You need an engagement posting and DM strategy. What you might be working with now is one, you've got a content strategy. Maybe you've got a content strategy and a DM strategy, but you need an engagement strategy as well, or you need posting, you, you need the interplay of all these three. It's really key. Um, and I show you how to do that in a way that it, it takes under an hour. And it will attract high paying clients and then we launched this is something that i've designed in the last just in the last six months it's called the the content wheel the content wheel for liberty hungry star uh liberty hungry light leaders and freedom seeking star seeds this is the content wheel that takes the time away from creating social media Framework number three, milestone number three. This is the biggie. And this is only available if you step into my elite mastermind, my, um, you know, all bells and whistles. This is where we bring in your book funnel as a model. We birth your soul story. We, we write your book or we write a chapter in a book, just like the ladies have done in Baptism of Fire. And we use it as an evergreen sales asset imagine being able to make max maximum impact with your message movement and story with minimal time like minimal time it's all done for you happening behind you it was interesting yesterday so one of the authors is my ex-client she um you know she left my program before we implemented this part of the framework she doesn't have a book funnel and she was out sharing an amazon link how is she going to I mean, I'm not saying that her chapter will not attract clients, but it relies on the client from one touch, one, one reading of a chapter to, um, to buy into what she does. Whereas if you did what you saw I did and my clients did, we took your email address. We've put you into an email sequence. We're going to warm you up. We're going to help you understand why we wrote what we wrote, why we do what we do. 
you know, we're going to create connection with you. We're going to ask you questions. We're going to invite your feedback. We're going to bring you into our community, connect you to our free resources, right? You're going to suddenly become in into our fold, into our world. And that's where a lot of books are going wrong. You know, you wanting to publish a book, you want to put your story out there. There's no, there's no funnel. There's no connection to the clients that you want. You're not interplaying metaphysical marketing, physical marketing, and just freaking smart marketing. If you, you know, you want freedom, you want to be able to step out of your business whenever you want. So I give you every single system and template that you need for an effective sales system that is evergreen. You, you don't have to launch. Before I pivoted, I was launching every single month and it was exhausting. It was exhausting. I was launching something every, most coaches will tell you, launch monthly, come up with something to sell monthly, come up with mini offers, come up with multi offers, come up with omni channels, do, 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 right? This sales system makes money while you sleep. You'll wake up every single morning and there will be in your stripe. And that means that you have, you can take yourself out of and this triggers people i love this people with um with with icky sales uh trauma <laughs> you take ideal clients from cold to salt in under five days and i've tracked that i've got feel on that um you know how my my book funnel has been converting since i launched my book in february people are buying something within five days because they trust. And that comes from the, the beautiful and powerful combination of the content wheel and the book funnel. So you saw these beautiful, open hearted ladies just become published authors using my scaling income system. Um, and leading with light is officially a best seller. Yay. Um, so there are some hot steps in that roadmap that I just showed you um, that I will quickly go over. Um, but the most important thing is the creative wave of chaos. So what does that mean? We create a, way to, a creative wave of chaos. You step in with me, you step into the unknown. You step in with me, you step from the limited to the unlimited. It means you've got to have trust. That's my Benny down there. You've got to have trust. And that comes from what I taught you this week. This is the triangle of power that I taught you on. Is it day five or day six? This is what it actually looks like. And we really dig deep, really did dig deep into this um, as part of the work that we, that we do. And this made a really massive difference for Aisha so when Aisha came with me, she was working in her business, thinking about her business 24 seven, really stuck in, in unhealthy control and, and action. Um, and yeah, I'm going to play you this as she stopped that shit and started living the barley life, as she calls it. In case you want to follow me, uh, this is what I look like from behind. <laughs> funny eh but she had such huge anxiety when she came to work with me um every time she tried to stop um it her mind was crippling um and that ch everything changed and she does now she's now building retreats on the side of a mountain in bali um lots of time out of her business lots of time in her passions in what she loves um completely a different experience so I would love just on that note, I know we might run maybe five or six minutes over time to tell me if you have like a, a soul goal like that, that, you know, in your heart, when you think about it, if I could extricate myself from my business, like what would make you feel amazing in the next six months as a dream come true? What is the dream you specifically want to live? Like really feel into it, see yourself, living that dream and, and drop that in the chat. And if you can't connect with the soul goal, just imagine doubling or tripling your income. Like, how would it feel to do that? So this is um, from Carmen and she said about the mastermind. So obviously 
I've I've sort of introduced that in the mastermind we are very holistic. We are working with the energetics and the marketing and the business strategy. And she said, I think for me, what's made a huge difference has been the amount of support that I've had within this mastermind compared to other masterminds that I was in. And for me, I think that shifted things. It's been a huge shift, big, massive shifts, which is amazing. It feels like people actually magnetize towards you, if that makes sense. I'm kind of mind blown. And I guess maybe it was how I got rid of a lot of the blocks that I was hanging on to from my previous identity. So Carmen, when she came to me, as she came through a mystery school, the second mystery school, the first, um, this is the second mystery school officially. Um, the first one was last, uh, towards the end of last year. So no, she, she was in the first ever mystery school in August, um, which was just a beta run to see if this thing actually, you know, could grow legs. <laughs> and she said to me, Claire, 99% of people have fears and blocks, um, and she said, what did she say? We were talking, that's it. We were in the messenger uh, talking around the mystery school and the avatar and things like that. And she said something to me around her target audience. Um, you know, I work with people who have fears and blocks about birth. And I sat there and I thought, well, hang on a minute. 99% of people have fears and blocks about birth. And she was like, oh my God, you're right. That one tiny sh one tiny shift in perspective has led to the empire that she has now because it made her seek the sales message and branding that would speak to the one person whose fears and blocks were crippling her in a very specific moment right and you've got to reflect that crippling experience to your audience and also show her what is possible if she takes action and this is really this is a really key piece. You have to understand where your audience is when they cannot stand their pain any longer. They're so uncomfortable that they'll do anything to create their outcome, right? So this was a big thing for Carmen. This changed everything. I'm going to share a little video about her. Um, she went from targeting people who had fears and blocks around birth to targeting those that have specifically had a shit show um, birth the first time round that want to go into a VBAC birth the second time round. And that that conversation changed everything. And as you'll see in a baptism of fire, she has evolved that niche now as well into something even more, even more wild. When he started, um... I'm trying to think September time, I think it was roughly. And at the time I'd just come off from a previous mastermind that I was in where there was just a lot of heartache. I was just feeling really overwhelmed by everything. Um, nothing was working. I felt completely lost. Um, I was at a point in time where I was just thinking, oh, you know what? Like nothing's working. I might as well just call it quits and just find a job almost. Um, and then I started this journey and the layering of trauma that I've had to work through, um, from my childhood, it's no wonder I was so blocked. <laughs> it's no wonder why things weren't showing up in my life. And the minute that I've started chipping away at certain things that have been coming up and I continue to chip away, the growth has been incredible to see there's been people in my life that I've released. There has been others that have come into my world that I've blown by because I've never expected it. There's been speaking events that I've been invited to out of the blue without even filling in any forms or anything of the sort. Um, opportunities showing up like that. Um, clients just dropping into my DMs. Like I'm not chasing clients. I'm getting messages coming through into my dms um for clients wanting to work with me and it's been it's been incredible and one of the things also that's occurred is i was very much of the belief that i had to work really hard um in order to make money and it was all about the hustle and about moving through and and all of that that i never really gave myself the opportunity to be able to be at rest and a funny thing is is that last month the month of March was one of my highest income months where I made seven thousand pounds and I didn't really hustle. <laughs> I leaned into the relaxation. I leaned in, I gave myself the opportunity. I mean, on Tuesday night, 
I could have been doing some work and I went bowling with my husband and with my youngest daughter in the evening and we went out for dinner. Like this wouldn't have been me a few months ago. You know, I would have been like, no, 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 I've got to be at home because I was looking after her the whole day and I've got to go into and into the room and I've got to work and I've got to do this. No, I just allowed myself and let myself be and it felt really good. And I've given myself that grace because I deserve a rest also. I deserve a break also. And if it wasn't for all of this inner work that I had been doing with the neurosomatic sessions, with the breath work, with the support from the coaching also, it I don't think it would have been possible, if I'm honest. Like the tools that we get given on this mastermind are just mind blowing. And the breakthroughs that I've had through breath work sessions, through visualizations, through the neurosomatic work also, it's been super powerful so powerful that I'm actually training in this method to be able to work with these elements with my own clients. So yeah, it's pretty damn freaking powerful. So you have two options. You can do nothing and nothing will change. Or you can take a small step with no risk attached. More discomfort equals worse discomfort equals the universe is going to check you off. Would you rather create from the unknown and create quantum leaps? Like I want you to really imagine tapping into the possibilities of the quantum field. When in that February, March, whenever it was, when I sat on the side of the road and I said, right, fuck this shit, I'm done. I actually decided, made a decision, a conscious decision. I'm not selling to anyone. I'm not selling anything. I'm not, I cannot bring in another person that I have to drag to that damn fucking river like literally stick my fucking hand in their mouth, drag their tongue out and try and force them to drink. Fuck that shit. Excuse my French. But I didn't know who I was going to sell to. But I still set my intention. I said, I'm going to earn 25 grand this month. I received a 25k legacy payment in the third week of that month. Money can come from anywhere if you set intention and you have the right energy. So you've got a decision, right? You can either keep doing what you're doing and create more the, more of what you've got, or you can learn to trust. You can take the journey that I did from not trusting that what we've done this week in the mystery school will absolutely have leads coming to you and have everything in your business happening exactly as it should to create the results that you want feeling that peace feeling the freedom to be able to switch off you've got it you've got an option you've got an option right here and it is my alpha creation um technique protocol techniques in the protocol um that we really start to change your um yeah your reality with your mind so i'll teach you how to use the, t the neurosomatic techniques that we've used this week to create a new level of magnetism to the success that you want. I'll teach you how to access altered states of consciousness that bypass your internal program programming and increase your intuition, your creativity, your clarity, so that you can literally bend reality <laughs> to your desires. Everything, if everything is a mirror of your energy and your actions, Surely your energy and your actions should be your primary focus every single day, right? Type get it when you've got it in the comments. <laughs> I'm going to teach you how to tap into the ancient wisdom of your body and use that ancient wisdom to shift your unconscious programming. programming. So this goes very much away from most trauma-informed coaching that is very conscious and we start getting unconscious. You know, shifting shit without you knowing what you're shifting, just feeling different so that you can take empowered, expanded action and experience expression in more flow and trust than ever before. You can get in the trauma healing trap. You know, you can get stuck healing trauma to 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 trauma and nothing changes because of that. The alpha creation protocol gets you out of that trap. So there's just a few testimonials specifically to, um, you know, the results that that has created. I love this one. Claire, during our first conversation, you told me the money will come and it absolutely is. It's crazy how I'm already noticing small shifts. I can't wait for the next three months. Thank you. 
You know, you're finally going to be calling in your dream clients, making your dream money, living your dream life. In the last 12 months, I'm going to say it again, I've not only published three books, I took my business on the road. I hosted a retreat in the, in the Mexican jungle. I've given thousands of dollars to multiple charities. I've launched my app. I've launched a YouTube channel. I'm, e I'm experts in, I'm an expert else's mastermind. I'm, I'm featuring in a magazine. You know, I've got this incredible mastermind of my own. And the most exciting thing to me is I'm doing what lights my soul fire, fire up by stepping into transformational coaching. And the results my clients are getting prove the power of this work. So would you rather be able to relax, release and embody the identity shift that you described this week, that avatar and live in elevated emotions or stay stuck where you are, feeling the same things, experiencing the same struggles? It is my quantum leap method that is going to help you with this. So hot step number two, we're going to be connecting you to your truth releasing the limiting identity that's blocking the manifestation of what you want we're going to use somatic trauma transcendence to get you out of the trauma healing trap get you into action aligned with what you are creating with the alpha creation protocol that there's not action at all right and is bending reality so you can align your energetic frequency to your unlimited success Would you rather, and this is the final one, stay creatively blocked, you know, remaining unexpressed, staying asleep on your true, true dreams, playing small, or would you rather create magnetism, convert clients straight from your social media, have the courage to Sam thing? Because when your creative channels are activated, we can then start to distill your message down to its purest form. Because honestly, the reason why you're not making sales now is probably because you're not clear enough. You're not meeting your audience where they are at. You're not, um, you're not creating the offer like based on the audience. You're you're creating it based on you. Your brand's probably not memorable enough, and you're preaching instead of story selling. Your audience is receiving twenty to thirty thousand messaging touch points a day so if you think about them scrolling their phone using all these different platforms like the messaging not that they're getting twenty thousand twenty thousand dms every day but messaging they're getting hooks thrown at them things tapping into them 20 to thirty thousand times a day how are you going to be noticed remembered and have massive influence and this is going to get worse as we receive the tide of AI, because that is actually going to allow people to create even more content, right? <laughs> You're going to be able to put songs and movies out without even be out, being able to sing or act. It's just nuts. So the next hot step is the 30-day brand rebirth. So this takes you through the exact steps that you need to create an irresistible offer and position it perfectly with your audience. It unlocks your radical expression. So you start saying what you really feel, start sharing it your way and start telling the world why you are an authority and what you do. And we also identify your own proprietary success system so that clients will bite your hand off to access them. So I want you to think about like I've just talked about some hot steps in that process in the nine steps, some hot steps, like how much would you expect to pay to access just one of them you know work on your branding two thousand dollars five thousand dollars work with someone re related to your trauma five thousand dollars ten thousand dollars start to add those programs up like i did fifty thousand dollars wouldn't it be more awesome to skip years of trial and error skip trading time for money, skip having to pay $50,000 to connect with your audience and start making sales, be able to sell an offer that aligns to your true soul goal within weeks, 
be recognized for your thought leadership within months and double or maybe even triple your income in the next few weeks. My client, Vicky, who came out of the um, mystery school last November, the first official one, tripled her income in three weeks after she watched this masterclass and booked her call with me. My clients are unleashing their impossible. I unleashed my impossible and reached my last year's turnover in only six months this year. I unleashed my impossible and gave up my part-time job to be fully in on my business, my passion and glory. And I'm getting high ticket paying clients. I've just finished the six month accelerator program. My biggest win has been how I've now managed to scale up my business as a result of my Instagram presence. My impossible, becoming a master manifesto, calling in and receiving $25,000. It's so funny when I, when I was putting that video together last year, little Bowie was like, <laughs> so there is some urgency to take action now. I am inviting people to come and work with me. My calendar is pretty full already. And, you know, I don't do this often anymore. I've gone from launching every month to, you know, opening doors once a year. And I want to help you to do that too. I said to my husband the other day, like I could have signed off from the money that I made from the last mystery school last year. You know, I made more money that most people make in a year, but I didn't. You know, I didn't need to switch off. I wasn't tired. I wasn't burnt out. I was absolutely in my element and my creativity. And so we've only grown from there, right? But working directly with people, working one-to-one, -one, the mastermind, that's really intimate. That's really, you know, boutique. And that is where I'm inviting you to work with me right now. You know, not a digital program, one-to-one, -one, whether that's one-to-one, -one, one-to-one -one or one-to-one -one within the group i want you to come and work with me one-to-one -one. and i only have a handful of clients in my mastermind each year it's usually six there are reasons that i have doubled that <laughs> you're going to see that in the baptism of fire i've been through my own personal struggle <laughs> in the last uh few months in terms of, of of my business not a financial struggle but more of a um more of a realization where I was playing small and not in trust and not necessarily in total, uh, oh, I guess unconditional love. I was, I was, I was scared. So I had a big breakthrough myself in baptism of fire that you're gonna, you're gonna see. And that's why I've doubled the spaces and we're looking at the number 13 that I was gifted in my visualization. I want, I want you to be my next success story. I want to empower you. Every day that passes from this point, you're potentially missing out on step, stepping powerfully forward in your business and letting go of your rope, whatever your rope is, right? You could leave this masterclass right now and spend months or even years of your time trying to figure out this framework on your own. But the truth is you'll never get that time back like I said, there are two people that came into the mystery school that have been following me for five years. They came through my original manifestation challenge. And as I can see it, the problems that they have are the same that the problems are same as the same as the problems that they had. Five years, guys. You never get that time back. So imagine instead you get to save that time and effort because I've already spent it for you. I've done I've done the hard yards. And you can work with me directly to achieve this for yourself. It will cost you money to get started if you decide to working together as a fit, but that money's going to replenish. That's the first thing we've got to shift is your freaking money 
mindset that goes so deep, so much deeper than mindset. It is not mindset at all. It is in your body. Trauma with money is in your body. It runs deep. It's ancestral. It's societal. Change that shit. Money does not run out. Money does not expire, extinguish. It is absolutely replenishing all of the time. Not, not when you are holding on to it. Because by holding on to it, you are in fear and you are creating an energetic wall to abundance coming in. So as you can see from my clients, it can replenish within weeks. But if you go back to the drawing board today, the time you spend working away alone on this instead of with your family or on other aspects of your business is wasted effort and gone forever. So if you would like, take a breath, Claire. If you would like to unleash your millionaire business, here's what you need to do, okay? You can have it all and it can be easy. I'm going to keep singing that message from the freaking hilltops, mountaintops, but with great power comes great responsibility. You will build an empire. You will create reach and influence and you will create, create and attract money. But you have to accept the power this system has. And that's what I realized in the last few months. That's what I wasn't doing. I was playing small. So I accepted, I had my soul contract to play fucking bigger, to move through my fears, to let go of the beliefs that I was harboring. I want you to accept that mission impossible, mission possible too. And I actually want you to accept in the comments, say, I accept if you're ready to change your life. And if you would like to book a call, all you have to actually do is click the little link that I'm going to put in the comments. I'm going to also put the pri uh, give the prize prize uh, reveal out as well. We've got way over time. Oh my God. Like I'm such a squiggle. Bella will be just laughing. I think she had to jump off because she had a call, but I, I can't keep to time. I'm terrible. I live outside of the time space. Continu continuum. I hope you've had value <laughs> for nearly two hours now. We're in nearly two hours. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for attending this training today. I, I can't wait to see you on the free calls. Step one is to click the link I just put in the chat. <laughs> and find a time that works for you. If there isn't a time that works for you, then um, you know, please let me know. <laughs> Message me. We might be able to work something out. Um, there is a recorded video after the form. So um, it's really important you watch that because I really want your commitment. I want you to come prepared. And, the, and I also want you to fill out the short form as well, because that gives me information that if we're a good fit, I will confirm the call. And then I've also got way more time on the call to help you. Okay. Just having a quick check in on comments Kendra congratulations congratulations so awesome Jesse very exciting love this all Kendra I want to be my success story and your success story you totally are you're in you're in you're in and very informative but I had to leave oh bye Anne other Anne um <laughs> Natalie's got it um Kendra says for me my sole goal is to continue my freedom lifestyle and make more income as death death doula it's done my girl it is so done Ooh, Natalie making consistent seven to ten k months taking and passing my driver's license <laughs> um booking a holiday to Barbados creating a retreat wow see we can make this stuff happen this is, this is so real it's so real it's real in my heart it's real in your hearts um Emily said the mystery school has been incredible. Everybody loves Bella. <laughs> Got all the woohoos. Thank you for everything. Oh, thank you for everything. Thank you so, so, so much. And I will see you all in the DMs, in the email, in the group. The group will stay active until the end of the weekend. Um, and ask any questions that you have, you know, um, share any breakthroughs that you have. And yeah. Have a beautiful rest of your evening, your day. Thank you. Oh, oh, oh my gosh, where's my voice gone? <clears throat> How was that? I would love to say and share actually that um, Kendra, 
who was quite active in that. That was a, a replay, a recording from about two months ago where we ran the Mystery School live. And the quantum leap that Kendra has taken since then has been so beautiful. She's one of these light leaders that has connected with a message that is so outside of what society tells us, right? And that is what we're here for as light leaders, is to take that knowing that is a feeling that you have experienced something through your lifetime and likely through previous lifetimes that is your soul contract. And your whole journey here is to right the wrongs of the past, take the lessons that you didn't learn, allow those soul fragments to come back to your wholeness of being and allow you to walk forward with this beautiful light shining out of you, right? And that is what Kendra has done. Kendra has increased her income. She has had opportunities coming out from all over the place. She's been so busy. She has not even been on the mastermind calls. Um, It's been incredible to watch. And we actually had a a 100% success rate in income increase within, well, most of them were within four weeks and one was within um, eight weeks uh, coming out of the mystery school into the mastermind and having a huge income leap. So if you would like to book a call with me, I would love to invite you to to go down into the comments underneath wherever you're watching this video um, and click that link. Take that quantum leap. In just a few minutes, we are going to be um, spending some time with one of my quantum leap master coaches, the incredible Joanne Webb, who has journeyed with me for a few years now. And she actually... um, came through my mastermind as well. She also came through my quantum leap intensive. And then once graduated as a quantum leap coach, stepped into my quantum leap master coach program. You've heard me refer to this method, the quantum leap method. We're creating a movement with this and you are invited to join this movement. Whether that be just coming along the journey and starting to implement some of what we're doing to shift how we're feeling, to change our frequency, to attune to a higher frequency that attracts the high frequency reality that you want to be your life, that you want to experience without the push, without the force, without the hustle, or whether you'd like to take this method out into your business, through your business, if you would like to do either of those things, just comment below, yes. I'm going to run a really quick, uh, literally not all of it because I want to get Jo on because I know she's got to be somewhere too. Um, I'm going to share a quick advert. Um, and the advert is for my upcoming retreat in Costa Rica in March. And, you know, if you decide to come into one of my programs, whether it be the mastermind, whether it be the intensive, you're going to get access to this incredible experience, absolutely free. So I encourage you again book a call. If you want to have a chat with me, there are no obligations on this call to do anything, but explore, surrender, allow, know that synchronicities are constantly coming into your life, but they require you to to say yes to them. Law of attraction, last few letters of the word, A-C-T-I-O-N. Right, I'm going to put this on really quickly and share the screen. This one. And then we'll be going across to Joanne. How on earth do I do this? Hang on. Boop, boop, boo. Go across here. Go across here. Here we go, guys. Boom. Nope, we're in the wrong place. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Put it back to the beginning. Let's go. We were running on time until this. Oh, my God, he's terrible. Hang on. Right. Do you know what? Hmm. 
I'm going to run it here. Beautiful. Okay, heading back over to our little room here with beautiful Joanne. Scroll down to Jo so you can see her. Let her in. She there. Are you there? Are you there, Joanne? There, 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 there she is. We got your sound. Give me a hoo ya. Can you hear me? <laughs> Is it coming from my earphones? Hello. Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. This is very exciting. Oh, sorry, I'm in like the weirdest place. I'm in like the corner of my bedroom because the whole house is going crazy with children and people. So I've like snuck into this little tiny bit. So I'm kind of crunched up. But here I am. You are super quiet though. Hang on. Let me just do a test and check we've got your full sound. Just do, I'm going to do a quick test. I can bring my microphone closer. Yeah. Just do, I'm going to do a quick test. Joanne, speak. Oh, there it is. We've got you. We've got you. Phone closer. That's way better. That's way better. Now you're frozen. Oh my gosh. I can hear you. you. I can see you. Internet, internet, internet. Speak to me again. I can see you now. Me? Yes. Yes. I think there's just a big delay. There's a big delay. There's like there's so much quantum energy in the room, Joe. There's like we're literally blowing it up right now. Well, today is a massive day. The, the energy is shifting yet again today. The mass is shifting yet again. This is one hell wow so we've had an exciting week this week we have really taken things to another level in the quantum leap portal mm -hmm. obviously we launched the quantum leap community which is just an extra special space of the awakened wealth community the awakened, the awakened wealth community is a free-for-all you know if you're ready to shift this operating system within right because we create from it you know we've been inviting people to step onto this journey use our tools but 
the way that we work with the quantum leap method is so somatic, so with the body, so, you know, in awe of this ancient wisdom that we hold. And so we decided with the quantum leap portal to talk into something very specifically around that. And that was sex magic. And of course, you came through into the portal this week and did your high frequency session on this subject, blew my freaking circuits. And this subject has to do with what we're doing today, right? I said that Joe was going to talk about love and I changed it. I said that Joe was going to talk about love because that is the movement that Joanne is on and she's had a profound impact on me and on my life and, and you know, guided and led in such a beautiful way how we can love ourselves more deeply and find our self-worth. But I decided to shift the topic because the sex magic plays into this. And like you started your presentation with the fact that there's a little bit of confusion, isn't there, when we talk about sex magic and where our mind goes and how society has conditioned this subject. And let's be frank, Joe, how society has hidden this fucking ancient power from us, along with so many others that we can harness and use to manifest, to heal, and for divinity, actually. Do you want to talk into that? Sexual energy, it's energy, it's not sex. So we can go out and have sex, and it can be shitty sex, it can be glorphans, it can be not bring on endorphins, we can have orgasms. We've all been there let's face it but um certainly have but sex energy is but it can be brought into sex and it can be that when the two things collide that's when the whole of the stratosphere but sex energy it's a life force that comes from source all, all the way down to the deep deep and you know when all the fire is bubbling in the earth and the and it's crazy down there. It's more explosive. That energy is us. And as I said the other day, it has not been given an accident. Everything we have is on, on purpose. Now, it has been. Sex has been a shameful subject for so long. It's been subjected to, you know, cover their bodies in places like like I ran and sex shamed for being sluts and, and whore, whatever other words. I mean, there's you look at the words that st stem pages. What do we call men? Drop. Because it's getting this, this amazing, beautiful life for deep within us and, and can tap into for vitality and the most amazing well-being energy when you know it exists and when you've tapped into unstoppable you are limitless you are source given the ability to have amazing orgasms for no the creators are very clever thing energy we've got all of this well the universe began with a big bang <laughs> i mean let's just look at that right but actually i mean actually in sex magic when we're looking at sex magic we're not orgasming we're not ejaculating we look at Tantra and, um, you know, the, the ancient ritual of sex. We're actually learning to circulate this energy and build this energy and hold this energy. And as I shared in the portal in my audio insight, it is expanding your capacity to hold sensation. And that's good sensation, mm. but also bad sensation, right? Because we don't as human beings. Oh. We numb our feelings. We distract our feelings. Um, I was thinking about how fucking mindful you have to be to use sex magic in sex to not just fucking, you know, like whether it's from pleasure or from pain, like, like check out, 
you have to be fully mindful. You have to be there. You have to be in the experience. You have to be using your breath to expand the capacity to hold the sensation, which we can do in day-to-day -day life. Instead of reacting, yeah. we can use our breath. This is where the, the seven by seven method, the step one in the Awakened Wealth Blueprint, learn to be coherent. Learn to feel emotions mm -hmm. and allow yourself to feel the fucking emotions, all of them. You know, emotions are waves, they have peaks, and then the wave rolls off and they have a purpose, they have a message. So in the universe, everything is always in creation, everything is always in expansion. And so, and everything is always in circulation, right? We are giving and we are receiving back. We are giving and we are receiving back. Now, I write about that in my chapter with leading in Leading with Light, you know, how it's, it's like a breath, it's like oxygen. We don't breathe all the way out and then just give up, right? We breathe all the way out. There are so many beautiful properties in that carbon dioxide that feed the earth. And then that comes back to us as, as oxygen that we breathe in. And I referred to love in that. You know, because when your worthiness is super low, you actually do breathe all the way out. You give all your love, you know, in the hopes that you might, you know, be loved, be secure, be whatever it is that you're seeking. But then you you are you are not with vitality. You're fucking dead. Right. Mm -hmm. You were also an author right. in Leading with Light. Um, you wrote about love in Leading with Light. You want to talk to me uh, about your chapter? And if you want to bring it back into this topic, you are welcome because I love, I love everything. Yeah, no, I, the, all into just the quick, the bloody, the bloody portal interview. You have to go and listen to it when you're in the app. There's a link to the app in the comments. If you go into the free app and upgrade to the Quantum Leap portal, you'll get to access Joe's uh, uh, session, and you'll also be able to connect with Joe because she is freaking master coach go on i'll stop talking over you tell us about the chapter and leading with life it, i know it's like coming back to another topic it's so oh, everything is interlinked everything is interlinked we, well, we can we can talk about them separates but we are not very, very integrated and interlinked and there's lots of the same time or layer upon layer so my chat with life is called changing the world with love big journey and I know from all the clients I help, my friends, people I've met throughout my entire 46 years on this planet, the, the only time we change anything, and I, it's for long, longevity, love. You, you try changing anything, like hate, you know, yourself, or, or another, or your life, Love, there's a different friend. Love is the only thing that's going to change this freaking world with ourselves. So, my chapter goes, Heal thyself, love thy world. And this is it's three because, again, they're all interlinked, but it, that's separated it for an easy read. It's so, it's so important when we love everything that's happened to us, you know, and this brings it. In this, um, um, healing the lineage, healing when oh, we've had a Joe freeze. She's gonna come back. She's gonna come back. Come back, Joe. Come back. right about the freaking energies i tell you they've been wild we might have lost her are we back oh, she's back she's back she's back i was hey, rabbiting on and i thought oh, i better shut up because what did you last hear um yeah you were talking about love changing the world with love changing yeah. the world with your all unique amazing fabulous upon a time i hated myself I see people who hate not breaking, and, and then of course, then, and there's all the support we we address healing in each of us if we ability for our healing. Because yes, things have happened to us, and not go back and change. That's where radical accepting that it has happened because we can't. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, I've got a wobbly stream. We've got a wobbly stream. I might step in. We've lost her again. I mean, this is so powerful and if we do loop this topic of love back to sex magic, you know, if you really want to utilize this creative life force Shut that is within you. Oh, she's, no, she's not back. She is back. She is back. I've moved. moved. You're back. I'm, yeah. I'm in the hall by my connector and hoping that it's to stay some person. But, but bear with me. <laughs> I'm here. I just started to talk, I just started to, I did dip in because you froze. But what I was saying is if we bring this subject, because I, ha I had a question this year, late, like late this year, not quite recently. And it was like, fucking hell, can the, you know, can the, 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 the answer to utopia be that simple? Can it simply be pure love? And I realized, yes. And this is where if we loop back to this topic of, of sex magic, right, and we think about exactly like you said, how our bodies, how our appearance, how our traumas, how our roles as women, roles as men as well, let's not forget men in this because it's exactly the same, um, has robbed us of the ability to be in that vulnerable position of, of sex, right, which is the most vulnerable position, right? It is that position mm -hmm. of all your armor's off, all your guards taken down. You think about how we walk through life. We walk around with massive armors on because we're afraid of getting rejected. We're afraid of getting hurt. We're afraid of judgment. We're afraid of failing. We're afraid of success. We're afraid of fucking everything, right? Because we've been taught to be afraid of everything because that is how yeah. ordered society has been ordered so that there is a massive yeah. divide between helplessness and power and the power stays with a small group of people, right? So we've been we've been squashed into this um, this helpless, helplessness place, and I think things are changing. I think things are really changing. And I think talking about things like this is really important. I have an ex client who believes actually that you know he has experienced death in past lives from trying to speak out on this topic. That it you know it's one of the hidden ancient uh things you know that is so accessible to us like all of them like the breath like um your super conscious mind like fucking meditation i mean it's all like we've seen the crime rates in new delhi drop when monks have come together weekly for transcendental meditation these things are so simple so accessible to all of us but not when we're living in fear not when we have these armors up so you know, you can bring those two topics together very, very, very easily because it is a case of, it is a case of loving yourself. It is to be fully vulnerable. You have to say everything as it is, I am absolutely in love with. I agree, Claire. And you mentioned utopia and for me, it's about changing the world with love. And my bigger picture is because that I've been granted that by source. I've been given those, you know, I'm not one of those C people who see it. I was given when you and I were working together, when you were my coach with me, I, I was given utopia. I live living in a world where each and every one of us love our relationships with people, and those relationships may well enter us without the resentment, without one person hurting another. We grow in that part where we need to grow. Maybe there's growth elsewhere, and there's another person for us. And that can work, work, it can be in romantic relationships it can be how much bitterness is around the world and resentment fear 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 the world does not is so simple are we are love source is love there is nothing unlovable about any each and every one of us as humans tapped into that energy that has been proven to be as well, you know, that frequency of love is there. The frequency of bliss, how humans we are supposed to be living. And this low frequency we see emotions. And yes, it is fucking life full like no other. And it can come into the sexual aspect. It can come into passion and purpose. It's there everywhere. It's the inside out and it flows around into that energy. 
in the electrical grid. And go, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, that's what today is about, right? If you can, you know, you can tap in. Obviously, we started with the music that I realized um, was not playing live to Facebook because I forgot to click a button. It was playing to no one. I think it was playing to the Facebook group and to the beautiful Don who was sat here live in the room. Um, but it will be there on the replay. It will be there at the start. And you know, we started there with really feeling into your body. And then I talked into the Awakened Wealth Blueprint and about how much we lean into this uh, power of emotions, the power of using your life as the classroom to express and lead. Um, and now we're getting into this beautiful topic of some of the ancient ways that have been hidden from us to remember this is about remembrance it's not that any of this is new it's that all of it all of it is within us and it's interesting that you you talk about um that that um vision that you saw because i saw also in 2020 i saw this vision of the world split into and on one side there was this dark gray robotic world where people looked like they were just on like a treadmill of life and they all looked sick they all looked sad they were carrying briefcases I'm not sure if that was just my mind giving me like a, a cartoon characters but on the other side was this beautiful golden light and it was as if like it was as if this golden light was coming from this infinite sun which is truth right that sun that abundance that universal state of abundance is absolutely inexhaustible and the reason why it was circulating was because everybody on the other side of the line had found freedom, had found this love for themselves, were living through their passions, were doing the things that made them feel good, had extricated themselves from the matrix of beliefs that makes anything scarce, right? Anything off, off not accessible, inaccessible. And I realized, not immediately, but I have realized in the last three years that that is my mission, that is my soul's contract. You know, I, 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 I remembered leading in this loving way from a life back in ancient Egypt. Um, and I actually shared with Don in the comments of a post one day that I feel like COVID has been this massive backfire because it was this thing that was meant to give us more fear, that was meant to, you know, connect us more into civilization and, and being sort of squashed and boxed. But so many people have woken up, like so many people, it literally like activated the light within. And so many people stood up, stood out and said, yeah, nah, this is not, this is not for us. And so many more light leaders are coming out and shining their lights for other people to follow, stepping out of these systems and ways that we've constantly just been squashed and unexpressed so many freaking women but also so many men as well and men that are just embracing this beautiful you know blend of their masculine and feminine energy um and love like i say again is such a huge part of this the ability to i mean to heal is to find love isn't it is to look back like you say on these experiences with the with a high frequency with a high frequency emotion of gratitude mm -hmm of acceptance of unconditional love say about the planet right now because i've been doing a lot of ascension work or so and you, know, you think i was laughing you know, you, you would have got burnt on the stake for doing the work we do now would we probably did but um i've been doing a lot i know because i felt it i've seen it it is changing is changing considerably over the last two decades Decades just now down to this energy, this new healing can happen like that. And in a heartbeat, into the stories that healing has to take forever. And I'm not either. I, I'm not doing that. I, I'm not saying that you have because you haven't been traumatic and life altering. I, I honor each and every person's story the story that you have to be in therapy for the next 25 forever to get over things you can stand and you can heal it's accessible to us yeah and it, it is amazing gentle energy of the planet there is this soft powerful 
don't mistake the end soft, soft and beautiful but it's all just fluffy it's the best way possible we have been run on greed control and corruption the power in this earth it is nurture it is wisdom it is wanting each and every individual to be the best continent to be lush and 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 we share each union and, and collaboration with no enemy and you certainly don't know. not now now not ever therefore you and the world will by that happening into the divine rise allowing us to slow down down and to say go tap it into that innate wisdom to horses with that sacred sacred masculine energy or in the sun that lights the sacred masculine mm. it, it's powerful and then tap magic energy life force it's the three of them are together we talk about the kundalini rising up and whoop, it turns it's full of potential it's and again absolutely what we're doing today you know that idea i heard the i heard the idea of alchemical marriage the other day the idea that um you know if you can find your connection to spirit within if you you think about in marriage you sign a you, you effectively sign a contract don't you over to another person and you say in good and in evil in sickness and in health and all of this other stuff um <laughs> And sorry, it's been a long couple of weeks. It's this idea that actually you sign over to spirit. You say that if I can fully be in service to you in that same way, and you can find that wholeness within, and you can find that oneness within, and you can find that oneness without too, you know, everything becomes unity and peace and love. That once you have that foundation, everything else flows to you you know it's 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 incredible and it's where we're sort of going now in this um as we go into the second half of this event actually or the second two-thirds of this event is you know really going into how do you feel that in your body first because like i said earlier with the quantum staircase you know the the um versus the traditional approach of how we've been taught to do things. It has to be step by step. Like you said, I've got trauma, I've got to go through talking therapy and I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And it's going to take this amount of time to heal. There's a quantum leap and it always comes to feeling something first. Mm -hmm. So when we go into these experiences, um, you know, these, these, these high frequency feelings that I know you've done so much work with me and, and it's been incredible. When you get there first, everything aligns outside of you as yeah. well. Yeah. One of the things I loved, Joe, I think she's frozen again, is when you were working in the last few years when you've been working with me, just seeing how your brand really shifted to bring through that strength that you talked about. You know, the idea that um, love is a soft, thing but and your brand was quite soft <laughs> and where you where you are who you are has never been soft it has been so strong you are this amazing warrior goddess and to watch your brand evolve into this expression has been super 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 powerful um and i know a lot of the inspiration for that brand expression for the brand evolvement came from those experiences where you went into your body and you felt who you were. Um, so I think we might have lost her. And I think also it is her time up. I love this. I love how the universe is like keeping me to schedule. Um, I'm going to share a quick clip before we move on to the next thing, which is uh, our beautiful, I think, I'll just double check the schedule because you know me, I have a memory like a sieve and live in constant creative chaos. So 1, 2.15. At 2.15, we're going to be doing a um, breath work and, your, and well, more of a somatic evolution, a somatic experience. Because I want you to feel this. I want you to be able to connect with the truth of who you are inside and remember those feelings. And also know that what you are remembering is remembrance of your truth. 
like I say, we go through life and we put these armors on as we go through experiences that create our fears and that divines who, who we are. And as I've noticed in my business, so much of this is unconscious. So much is actually trapped in our body. It, it is somatic. We have to have a somatic trauma transcendence to be able to move forward, to be able to really step into where we want to be. Um, and my episode of A Baptism of Fire actually really digs into this. So I'm going to show you a little clip of this episode so that you can um, see what I'm talking about. What I'll do is go into a little break. Um, I will also ask Don because he's been in the room for like the whole time, whether he wants to pop in before the quarter past two. I will ask him on the chat um, and say anything, share anything, because I'm so open to this beautiful collaboration and expression and sharing. Um, and that's what my you is going to be, this conscious platform that we are building today with these interviews, with the music, if it wasn't that shit. And, um, you know, really, really creating a space for us light leaders to come together, share, collaborate and lead. Um, so I will go over to this little clip of a baptism of fire that's going to be coming out of fire today over on YouTube. That's New Zealand time, which is three hours from now. Um, let's have a look. We've got Go over here, we'll go to Instagram, share the sound, um, go to my profile. What can you see? What can you see? So look. Give me a second. I'm going to be such a pro at this restream by the end of the day, aren't I? <laughs> um, here we go. Okay, here we go. So <laughs> Don's got question marks. I'm gonna I'll talk to you in just one second, John um John, Don. Okay, just one second. Pop this up here. And we will go over and I'm going to show you this clip from A Baptism of Fire. If you are not watching, um, if you have not watched A Baptism of Fire, then you can catch up on all of the episodes from my uh, YouTube channel. But today is a really special day because today is my episode. And like I say, that's premier premiering at 5 p.m. I think you should watch it if you are a light leader and you are looking to step into your next level um plateaued and you're not sure why i think it will be really helpful so here we go here is the little clip for you coming up right now things is that they define who you are and who you are defines how you show up the decisions that you make if you are truly a light leader and you do want to go out there and, and change the world you have to get to grip with the feelings that you're experiencing in the moment, you have to allow them, however sick, scared, insecure they make you feel. This beautiful process of allowing emotions to rise, to go through the journey of facing that emotion, learning to be okay through that emotion and, and, and learning that emotions lesson allows you to become neutral to that emotion. The thing about your feelings is that they define who you are and who you are. There we go. So this episode is huge. It's um, been quite vulnerable to put it together and to share with you what has really gone on um, earlier this year, not, not recently, um, but a, a few months Few months back behind the journeys of my clients and creating our book leading with light um i say in the baptism of fire that you know it's like a ritual of initiation to the sales and opportunities that you want writing a book because you you get put in a position when you say that you're going to share your story that you you actually have to share your story you know there's no getting out of this journey of of meeting yourself 
meeting the fears that you've had that have kept you small, that have kept you unexpressed and that have kept you misaligned as well. And, you know, what I watched in my own process of publishing Awaken Your Miracle Frequency was this beautiful expansion and this beautiful growth and this beautiful healing and radical expression that came from that. And I was so curious to know whether the same thing would happen for my clients, right? And so I decided to get them to sign media release forms and profile their journeys to publishing their books. And they were also publishing a system behind the books, which was the same system that I used with Awaken Your Miracle Frequency to basically for lead generation, to generate sales on automation and really, really fast. So we can take a cold audience to a client within five days with the system that we have behind the books. And my clients have built this system And they went through this ritual of initiation to the sales and opportunities that they wanted. And it's been such a beautiful process of profiling that and showing you their journeys and how it is a baptism of fire. You do literally have to burn all of these identities to the ground. And most of them you don't even know that you have, the armors that you don't even know that you're wearing to be able to have this level of income, impact and opportunity that you want. So I went through a personal struggle behind their journeys that I've not shared about publicly, but I'm sharing that today. That will be 5 p.m. New Zealand time, just under three hours away from now, and it will be live. Um, And we also have the beautiful Don here to speak to me. And I'm curious because we have never spoken live before. We have chatted on Facebook, this hoping that... (laughs) Yeah, let's go. (laughs) He's smiling. I hope he's smiling at me. Right, here we go. Let's bring you on. Hello. We have some sound. Do you have some sound? We haven't got any sound. We got some sound. A mic, maybe. You're not on mute. Is that better? Can you hear me now? Yeah, you're there. Hello. 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 How are you enjoying Trustful? Um, it, it's been, yeah. I've been listening for the past couple of hours and. Yeah, you've, you've said a lot of great things about um, that the conscious development people have to go through to uh, to awaken um, that energy and uh, develop that awareness um, to, to to know themselves, to love themselves, and to yeah to to live their most inspired life. So. Yeah, it's a lot. Of what you said is 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 great. Um, and um, on the subject of what was I thinking? Of frequency, though, like what is? Oh, oh could you explain like what was like? Uh, what what do you mean by your own frequency? Because I I, We're all I, I had I made some an assumption, but I wouldn't want to be wrong about it. You know. So go on, share what what did you assume? What did I assume? <laughs> um well I didn't think it was necessarily a note or necessarily a sound so much, but just living authentically. Is that what you mean by So if you if you think about everything in the universe is energy. Yeah. And it is basically um we've seen through the double double slit experiment which is a quantum experiment that wherever we put our focus how we focus actually creates the form turns the light into matter the energy into matter and so theoretically the way that we're seeing our world creates our world right and this is fascinating obviously this is fascinating i mean like they're actually saying like at the quantum level it's conscious it's sentient at the quantum level and it's crazy that we don't think anything is that sentient apart from ourselves necessarily and maybe animals a bit but everything is sentient down to the quantum level which is incredible yeah yeah we're creating all of it and that is i mean my journey interaction that is manifesting yeah it's not just like creating um individually though is it it's like it's all co- co-creation somehow. Yeah, absolutely. Abs- and I, I love that you're bringing this up because, you know, we can say that every relationship that we have, every interaction that we have, every experience that we have is coming from us. 
So it is actually revealing to us our shadows, potentially. And we are always being met authentically where we are. So whatever level of authenticity you have to your soul's truth is where you will be met with your external reality, including the people, including the opportunities, everything, right? So, you know, you can say, okay, if I don't have the income that I want, if my business isn't as far along as I want it to be, if I don't have the love that I want in my life, Mm -hmm. like, what am I bringing to that line? What am I bringing to that line that is being met in my physical? reality what how am I seeing a a thing that I say to my clients all the time is look to see because the minute you can look to see something so you know you imagine that when you're a kid and you believe that fairies are in the trees Mm -hmm. right you look at those trees you believe that the fairies are there and you see the fairies you live in this imaginary world right but that is what we're doing now we are living in an imaginary world we are creating the world from what we choose to see, what we believe, Absolutely. which comes from this, this operating system, right? This, yeah, this is this is the ult- this is like the ultimate noble precept that we are, you know, the controllers. You know, they can manifest almost anything. Um, you know, we can recognize like a, a future condition. We can recognize suffering, and we can recognize how that suffering ends, and we can recognize a cause to the suffering. And we can recognize a path to the cessation of that suffering. And it's this same way, noble idea that we have the power to change anything, really, if we put our minds to it, if we can visualize it. Einstein said, um, rephrased it in a way that said, like, um, uh, you can't fix a problem with the same level of consciousness that created it. That's right. so there are many ways you can play with, with this realization of empowerment, but it's absolutely true. I think one of the things that was surprising when I when I launched my my third book, which is Leading with Light, and I I took on this subject. I actually took on the subject of spirituality yeah. and, and and shamanism, <laughs> all in one chapter. And you know, I was met with I was I was met with um, I was I was met with quite some anger and sort of, and I know we always have to know that anger comes from fear, right? It comes from fear to believe that something isn't as we see it is because the way that we see it, looking to see gives us the security that we want to feel. But, you know, what I talked about in the chapter and I wanted to talk about it and I was prepared to receive what I did receive um, was just how society has been built to keep us in this, uh, to keep us away from these superpowers that we have from this ultimate power of creation that we have and and some of the reasons why um and you know you say you said something so powerful right there that you know coming to this self-awareness taking this journey of self-realization realizing we are these sentient sentient beings it's like the power of one right we think we think as one person what can we possibly do to change these huge global issues and the truth is we can do a lot we can because we're actually like a the tuning fork that vibrates we've created the all the problems that we have today right? to... i mean humans are behind the creation of all the problems right um we we ought to be the ones behind it and we should be able to fix them if and the idea is like to me like if we can all live from more inspired perspective respecting life then everything's going to be fine for everyone but we're all living on this low frequency of of material gain and and um, of, of purely material gain without like uh, the conscious return and a benefit to all, and that's that's been uh, that's been dragging down humanity and the planet for a long time. And even if even if like the green policies that they're trying to bring in, they're they're still trying to control people through that sort of thing. So really, it takes, you know, a lot of people to start living from a more inspired level. I think from the first, leaders are going to have to be there, right? The ones who are willing to take the jump. And, yeah, they'll present their inspired ideas and uh, present they've had a, an inspiration to, to take this direction. 
I've certainly seen you doing that. And, and like, I've, I've felt one of the things that I've noticed this year is like, you know, when you, when you allow yourself to be all of who you are, you start to attract other people into your, your environment that are vibrating at the same level. Right. And you're not the first person that's just popped up in maybe my Instagram chat or my Facebook profile. And I thought, wow, yeah, this guy's, this guy's doing something incredible. Um, and, and I think where, where we get stuck or where a lot of people get stuck and certainly where I used to get stuck is to make everything so difficult because of the feelings that I had, because of the beliefs that I had, instead of just getting down and doing it, right? Just getting down, showing up, you know, posting the Facebook post, doing the live video, saying the damn thing without all the fear of everything that whatever it is that we fear. And that's what I see you do. I see you sharing these, I call them thought farts. <laughs> you know, like the thought fart just pops out and you just share it. Whereas, you know, when we're when we're carrying all these limiting belief systems, the fart, it's like the fart farts and you try and keep it in your pants. You don't want to share that thing in case it's Claire, so bad, right? I feel but like I've got it down doing? to an art what now. I want to do like 369 of them and then put them into like a whole. <laughs> year of motivation it's like, I, they just keep coming like i have to keep sharing <laughs> yeah good because it's, it's just about getting up and doing it you know like today like i said it was quite funny i think you're the only one i don't want to be too team. intrusive on people's lives though you see um i don't want to be too annoying but so everything i want to do needs to be like really breakthrough inspirational so yeah and and to the point yeah yeah, but you, you know, I was just saying that you were probably the only person that heard the mixing live and, you know, there were mistakes in there and the sound was shit. I couldn't set the sound up properly. But you know what? It's it's a case of showing up and doing it. And it's a case of leaning into the stuff that we love because the, the stuff that we love when we're doing it, we're feeling something differently. And I know, again, going back to my own journey of living into this operating system that I had on the inside and all of its limits, I didn't really know who I was. I didn't really know what I loved. And I was literally a robot, you know, I'd show up and do things that were just completely mismatched, inauthentic, and not even realize it at the time. And that's where the frequency is coming from. How are you feeling when you're doing stuff that you hate? Maybe that's going into a, a nine to five job every day that you fucking hate. Maybe it's staying with a relationship that makes you feel like hell. Maybe it's whatever it is, forgetting yourself, not loving yourself, not investing in yourself. It comes down to in the moment decisions to choose love. Yeah. And that is what we're that is what we're doing today. That is what we're talking today. That is what we're sharing today. That is what we're creating content to put onto Mayu, which is gonna be a beautiful platform for collaborations and conversations just like this. Yeah. I started with food, I went and went all the way into spirituality and it's like only recently I'm really getting into like the body now as well. Just that I'm getting into I was doing my upper body, but like the past recently, I've been working on my hips and my legs, like just trying to like realign my legs and stuff. And wow. um, it's God, you wouldn't believe this, uh, this, <laughs> this technique I've found. <laughs> so if God, you can lie in your bed. Okay. Um, face down <laughs> and have the, your feet like hanging off the back of your left bed. Right. And then you can lift one leg at a time and that's going to like work your lower back muscles. And then you can also then like kick them down <laughs> and that's going to work the front of the leg, the hip and the knee and you're all, and then the ankle. And you're also going to get this little vibration that's going to like extend it. Right. And you hit when you kick it down and then you just, <laughs> just flutter kick your, it's almost automatic. your leg. It becomes automatic you're saying and you do it in um in a conscious way you know so there is some sort of tantric sort of feel to it you know where but after like the first few times you can feel like your, your legs activating consciously because it's the whole lower body movement yeah. and it's it's going to open up the lower spine as well it's yeah. going to um open up each of your hips and, and yeah, for I think it's a very comfortable way for anyone to 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 start start get their movement going in their legs. Because okay. I think a lot of people because they've neglected it for so long, they think, oh, it's impossible. I'm never going to do it. But doing this this is so soft and simple, and it can actually quite be 
it's quite good fun to do. <laughs> I, lo I love that you're sharing this because if you imagine, so your flight and fight, flight and fight center is your psoas yeah. muscles, which is all wrapped into your hips. So I, yeah. I always notice with clients that have a lot of trauma, yeah. whether that's sexual trauma, other trauma, big trauma, mm -hmm. little trauma, right. they get very locked up in their hips get very right. locked up in their lower back, usually experience pain in their lower back as well. And that's because you've got to imagine that... To lock in the hips. Yeah. So you know, your, your fight, and fight yeah. muscles are, unco and this is the key word, unconsciously tensing all day long because of these experiences that are imprinted into your nervous system memory, uh, your brain stem that are saying unsafe, 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 unsafe. And so you get tension in this area. And that's actually a lot of what we do in the somatic side of my work is use, I love that you said, so simple, so easy ways of actually unlocking the body. I, I said to a client mm. the other day, like freedom in your spine, buddy, is freedom in your life. I promise you, if you can move better, more mm. easily, life will be more in flow. Yeah, I've been thinking about the psychosomatic connection with legs and movement, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you can move your legs, then you're going to be moving in your life. 100%. Yeah. The ancient, the ancient Egyptian, um, there's an ancient Egyptian um, healing system called Abukra yeah. that believes that we have pyramids that are spinning. And the feet is one of the areas where we have one of these spinning, uh, it's like an octahedron, uh, with two yeah. pyramids together, right? One up, one down. And we have them all the way up our body. And it's here that we connect with the, the, the strings, the waves of the universe. And so we have yeah. to get these, we have to get these octahedrons spinning. And um, yeah, like movement is a, is a very powerful way to do, do that. Do you, you know that, you know, you've got like a pyramid inside your respiratory system. Okay. Yeah. It's like your nasal passages, your throat. Oh, you're right. Oh, you're lungs. right. Well, that's one of the areas as well. I love that. <laughs> Again, ancient that's... wisdom ancient fucking wisdom it's like it's so obvious like when you start to see it it's like i can't unsee it like why why would this stuff be be hidden from us you know and and we go to a doctor and we have pills yeah. shoved down our throat and we have our feelings numbed you know it's it's insane i feel like i'm on a fucking mission right now to say to people come back to your power yeah come back that, to that's... your innate creative power yeah yeah the the voice alchemy took me to like to looking at like uh the construction of the vocal system the respiratory wow. system and like how like different vowels apply to different areas of it and yeah you you literally <laughs> have like this this sort of pyramid as like even going into through the nose some people don't count the nose some people say it only goes as far as the throat but you can get into overtones wow. you can produce frequencies you can't hear because of this pyramid shape. And that's the beauty of voice alchemy. To the podcast. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna put this into the podcast. Obviously, we're launching myu.tv and yeah. it's gonna be one of the first interviews, but I'd love to book another one with you and talk into the voice alchemy. And okay, okay. Can you yeah. share with me what it is you do? Uh, we'll share with everyone because we're live and I'm watching the numbers creep up, by the way, over on socials. So that's epic. Okay. We're getting more and more people watching as the day is going on <laughs> so that's okay. good so i i've been working with voice alchemy recently but i've been working with consciousness expansion for about 20 years about a couple of decades and wow. um, my i began with like um chanting through like a buddhist tradition um that came through you know india china korea japan okay um and it's based on a lotus sutra and i was chanting that for a long time everybody was getting a lot of benefit from it but nobody was really understanding why and part of it is something to do with like the beauty of the real life story of enlightenment that happened in the lotus sutra and so like resonating with that path of enlightenment and it's all revealed in there so it's no you know it's just a you know it, it, it says it talks about compassion as an as as a gateway to all wisdom it says it's within the grasp of all sentient beings humans and non-humans and you know all sentience um uh it's very open it's very empowering it's very realistic but there's but there's something about the chanting that really inspired me that um got me wondering like what is this thing about sound and healing 
and I was looking at a guy called Jonathan Goldman and a lot of other sound healers of the time, and they had associated like some vowels, funny vowels to different chakras, eight chakra systems. Um, it didn't, none of it seemed to resonate with me at the time, and I, and I kind of left it there, but uh, I had always wondered about the universality of sound, always, like since, the, you know, since, um, since, you know, that, that practice sort of awoken me, and um, yeah, I, I was looking towards like um, the native Indians and their uh, appreciation of chanting, and they were talking about, you know, uh, the importance of vowels, but, um, and, and I could, and only recently, like, I could see, like, vowels, they haven't, they animate everything. They animate all our words, firstly, right? In all our languages, okay? So it's a universal thing, I realized, you know? It's, um, but then mm. in another way, they're empty. They are without, say, a direction. So they have this emptiness quality about them, as well as being universal. So it's it's like pure energy, untainted. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <sighs> right. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um. So yeah. I developed a diamond voss alchemy based around this vowel system. Um, wow. And this vowel system, um, I, I see not only extends like actually to our respiratory system, you can actually sense like each of these vowels are gonna target like a certain part of your body. It's incredible. It's like mm. we are like an instrument for we universal sounds. Like there's no other, major notes we play mm -hmm. it's based around these vowels you if you practice it you'll notice it um so so yeah it's 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 based around realizing um th these sounds that universal quality but then i started making this other deeper connection with with alchemy and um and alignment and I was looking into alchemical elements and I was looking at earth, fire, water, air, and spirit. Yeah. And, and these are, <sighs> these we can relate to our vowels, mm. to our vowel practice. So if we want to like clear our, our lower energies, so what is, what is, what is the earth energy? The point of alchemy is like trans is to, is to manifest and transform like uh, we say produce gold, but like is is bringing down consciousness into the manifestation. Currently, this world is backwards. Like we're trying to like force this form world into consciousness, and it's not. Yeah. It's never going to happen. And we're gonna. That's right. We, we're coming back now and now. Okay. We, <laughs> so, um this connection a chemical process um bringing consciousness into form bringing spirit through to earth okay mm. so what is this process it's like earth is like knowledge knowledge of matter and um, fire is transformation transformation that's uh this was this blew me away when i was looking this is our senses it's our senses simply are, are, are the fire yeah. <laughs> and our water is empathy okay mm. and, and, our, and our empathy has the power to swell up as well and to build itself up as well okay mm -hmm. as well as empathize okay as well as to relate to others and we have um we have the throat chakra and the throat chakra well, actually, we can actually do so much with the voice and sound, actually, but it's actually for the original, the origination of, for the voice is perception projection. Right. <laughs> perception projection, okay? That's mm. what it, it does it in many ways, actually, not just through words, okay? It's 
that's that's what many ways um and then we have spirit so what does the house of spirit play into it that's our conscious awareness all this can function without spirit but when we start including spirit into it when we are talking about 5d when we were only in here we're like we're only in our 3d when we like in here 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 we're in like our 4d and then like here we're like when we got it all going we're like full in 5d so with, when the spirit empowers all of it or is spirit empowering all of it but we're cut off like it's because if you think about energy and yeah. you think about how we lock this trap this energy in our body you know it's like i use a principle called the triangle another triangle of power right so the idea that we have this this foundation in our body which is our our root security our root safety like i said a lot of people that i work with have so much pain and, and immobility in this part of their body uh, locked up in the hips locked up in the spine so and you think about this base chakra and it's just carrying all your shit like you haven't alchemized this ex these experiences to wisdom to love so it's just all trapped in there right and then on this side of the triangle you have your nervous system which is imprinted with all the triggers and crap from the base chakra the quickest way to and then down the other it. side the quickest so, way to normalize trapped, it all right? it's like yeah you it can get be. up it can the, be, yes. We can't get up through here, which and, is the center of worthiness, which is the center of commitment to even get close to these fucking higher things up here where we're, you know, at one with spirit in the higher energies. It's just a block. We block it. We, and we actually be, also yeah. see it as outside of ourselves, which it, it isn't. It, is, it isn't. Um, there's, I think a lot of the problem that people have had is, it's, there's not an easy way for people to connect with their consciousness. See, yeah. the moment well, they're, they're, the moment that happened really. to me, the moment I feel like the top <laughs> of my consciousness, like I, you know, I can you can feel this positive energy come through you, and you realize, wow, you can actually just feel great on your own. You know, when you connect with your consciousness, and that's just that that was mind blowing. Okay, and that then you realize what? Oh, well, then it's. The whole world and the whole environment and it's like all my actions are then changing this state of bliss so i need to be more careful about my actions um yes. yeah wow but that That's kind of that kind of realization everyone can, can can have when they actually make that connection and so as soon as they do that it's it just turn, changes their lives so something i noticed i mean obviously you know, I, I met meditation, breath work, consciousness is a real fundamental part of of my life now. <laughs> I feel like it saved my life to to realize exactly what you just said that I can go within and I can I can find this peace, serenity, happiness, joy, like nothing outside of myself. A couple of weeks ago, I went through something that really it did it did rock me and it really. Um, uh, up, upset me I guess upset my my apple cart of life and what I noticed I remember the next day lying in bed I would normally jump up with the sun I don't sleep with my curtains shut I have them open because I love the sunrise and I love the sunset and I always meditate with the sunrise and meditate with the sunset I can't fucking sleep through sunrise I just I'm so wired with it and so sun, the sun began to rise and I lay there in my bed and I was like not not one single cell in my body wanted to get up and meditate and I lay there with it and I thought oh wow this is this is what it is isn't it it's like when we are on when when we haven't processed our crap when we're scared of our feelings because I was fucking terrified of the feelings that I had the grief the emotion the the fear all of it right and I didn't want to sit in meditation because I knew that the minute I sat down and I switched my mind off try or went through the process of going through the conscious mind into myself that it was all going to come up I was going to have to feel all of it and we don't want to feel all of it we don't want to feel the hard feelings we don't want to feel the scary feelings and so actually accessing conscious consciousness is super simple we simply have to connect with our breath and allow ourselves to relax and let go but that is going to require the shit that we are holding on to to come up and we, we need to allow it to come up. We need to feel it. We need to know that it, it, it is that emotional way. 
wave, like I said with Joe, it will peak and it will, some, I mean, it will feel horrible sometimes. It will feel horrible. And I sat down finally at that altar and I cried. And a little bit later I got in my shower and I ended up screaming so loud that the bloody neighbor came down to check whether I was okay because I had to get it out. I had to feel all of it. I had to just let it fucking go. And we're scared to let go because when we let go, what is left? When we let go of all the shit that we're holding on to, what is left? For a lot of people, we say nothing and we go, uh oh, there's nothing there. There's nothing to hold on to. There's no material security to grasp. And then we go, our entire primal safety system goes, what the? Whereas actually, that's the fucking freedom. That is. Your neighbors freedom. are lucky. I'm, I'm like screaming every day with voice alchemy. <laughs> 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 I was thinking, oh, no, that, I, I was thinking about my neighbors. Oh my God, I'm, what am I putting in? <laughs> Oh, it's um, it's the way forward and you know i'm gonna i'm gonna wrap this round because we are gonna do a um a breath work um we are, i want to leave some time to do some breath work yeah. before the other interviews so what i said at the beginning of today was that the next level of your life is at another octave so if you think about music the frequency of the music the sound of the music you know the the sound of your music right now is not the sound and the frequency of the next octave right, when you have stepped over, which means you have to vibrate at the next octave first. That is how you step across, is to just become those feelings. And so I love that you're using sound because sound is a huge part. We are going to be using some chanting in the breath work as well because it activates these centers, it activates these really powerful centers in the body. Um, you know, again, centers that are shut down, centers, especially the pineal gland. You know, it's like this is this when this wakes up and opens up, this is our connection to divine. This is the connection to the higher energy. Sound, simple fucking sound can activate this beautiful gland yeah, 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 yeah. It, in our brain. As you, as, you, as, you, as you harmonize through all the tones, yeah. and then you can you then hit the high tone and you just it, you can sense, you know, it's empowering your whole body, your whole being. It's, it's quite a revelation for ev everyone. Everyone who's tried it, it's, um, it's quite incredible. But yeah, you, the sound um, creates a stabilizing feel, yeah. which um, one level resonates like all your matter and all this resonation and collision creates even spacing. Um, and yeah it creates this openness um within your body and you go through that through all through all your vowels all the frequencies and it's you become harmonized on a level you 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 couldn't do otherwise it's like even if you had like electronic equipment out, out outside of you it's not the same you can try and project it onto you it's not the same you can have a crystal but it's not the same as, as bringing it from within yourself it's something else and you know what what else the benefit, great benefit you develop this this respiratory system and voice with it as well you connect this thing this your this thalamus this this condition called the voice of god yeah. <laughs> um yeah sound is incredible for like being able to harmonize and align the whole system to enable your right, your but it's your birthright to to know this, to experience this, and yeah, it's time. It's time for it's time for everyone to to release themselves. You know what I I love again about what you're saying. So another realization that I had this year was because um, my mum my mum has quite severe mental illness and she has had that mental illness yeah. like my whole life and I I was sort of uh reflecting on how she's been treated as an ill person and filled with pills and I've obviously had a, a journey of healing my relationship is actually with her from the whatever there's a, um there's a job to change the narrative was the, about you know the, drugs there's a job to change the narrative about drugs you know, so many oh, shit, yeah. relatives because they did, they, they listened to that narrative. 100%. And what I thought was, you know, like, number one, if someone like me had shown up 
maybe when she was in her 30s or even maybe a little bit younger and said, hey, do you know that you can hum and your vagus nerve is going to switch on? Hey, did you know that you could put this sound on and your body is going to go into a resonant frequency? Hey, did you know that you could just breathe in for four and out for eight and you're not going to feel like you want to fucking kill yourself? That wasn't there then, right? But do you know what's beautiful? The fact that I went through my experience with her that was traumatizing, that led me to my own mental illness, yeah. that led me to break out of the matrix, which led me to all of these beautiful, easy, accessible ways to find resonant frequency, to heal without the conscious mind being such a huge part of the process, is that my mom has had this beautiful legacy. She has this beautiful legacy of me now helping people to attune to these higher frequencies. I thought to myself, if if I, if I she had never gone what she had gone through and I had never gone through what I went through, and if I had not sought alternatives, if I had not sought to heal, then this legacy wouldn't be here. You know, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing and creating this movement and getting up every day and just, you know, like I said a little while ago, just doing it and sharing it. Like we can do it instead of trying to force everyone to do breath work and meditate, just keep fucking doing it. You know, just show up every day in your own little world and just do it and share, show people, share, show them how easy it is. So I want to celebrate you for showing up and being here today bring with us what you do. I think you're awesome. I'm so happy that we've connected. I would love for you to go over to Facebook um, or YouTube or wherever um, the Instagram link failed. <laughs> That's not streaming. Um, but put your put your like whatever under there so that people can connect with you. And I'll copy that across to Mayu as well when we launch the um, platform later in the weekend. Um, and I'm going to, what I'm going to do is pop, I'm going to say thank you to you and pop you off. You're yes, amazing. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to run our little advert for a few minutes so that I can go and pee. And I'm going to set ourselves up for our beautiful breathwork and somatic evolution. Um, which will be a little bit shorter, but I don't, I mean, I love that the universe has just gifted us today, this like experience of talking to Don and, and hearing what he has to say. And like, I think that he has just made this event even better. So thank you. And if you're here watching on the live streams and you want to jump into this live room, there is a link at the top of the, um, the Facebook post, the YouTube post. Oh, we've got Raywin here in the room live as well now. Um, if you want to share, if you feel like you want to share, you are absolutely welcome to just put your hand up, drop something into the chat, let me know, and I will bring you in because we've got spaces for that during the day to collaborate. Um, so we will be starting the live breathwork and somatic evolution in probably about 10 to 15 minutes. Um, I will put this over... On. Let's see if we can make this work again. <laughs> this is so fun. Put this one over here. Come over here. Come over here. Come over here. Put the sound on. Boop, boop, boop. Give me a second. That's the one. Boop, boop, boop. Pause it, put it back to the start, put it up here. Uh, and what I'm doing with these little adverts is just um, bringing to you some opportunities to, to engage together. So um, I do have this beautiful Awakened Wealth community, which is a free community. Um, and our movement is to create awakened wealth which is the journey of knowing that every single every single experience that you've ever had is it's bringing you to now it has brought you to now we can change this internal operating system we can do it simply you know uh nothing cannot be overcome uh there is a legacy in you there is a movement in you there is light leadership in you and we're really in a new earth shift right now which is cracking the seams of the old earth paradigm. And so many of us are stepping up and wanting to lead with light, but we will only ever lead with a little torch if we do not heal ourselves, if we do not heal within. Your light can only sh shine boldly. You can only have radical expression when you can feel the vulnerability to, to be all of you, to be in your true authentic expression, to let go of your fears. Um, so that is my movement, the Awakened Wealth movement. And in the last couple of weeks, we have launched this beautiful uh, VIP part of the community called the Quantum Leap.
community, which is if you want to go a little bit deeper, if you're feeling the activations that I'm sharing and you want to be able to tap into resources, you want to be able to tap into coaches, my Quantum Leap Master Coaches are helping me to lead this beautiful VIP community. Um, and we have a membership that you can join where you can access loads of somatic breath work, uh, sex magic, the whole plethora of ways to activate your body, to feel the frequency of the next octave of your life now. OK, you can feel it now. And if you can feel it now, then you are going to attract it towards you. Um, you can also become a coach. You can also become a quantum leap coach. You can take the quantum leap method and take it out to your clients. I want you to drop me a comment if you're interested in that, because I can send you some details as to how you can do that. And, you know, I am leading towards the most incredible experience in March next year, which I'm calling Pulse. It is taking place in Costa Rica, and we are going to be connecting you to this, this sacred current that, that, pulses within you that perhaps you aren't connected to because you are feeling separation. Perhaps you are holding on to trauma. Maybe you are just not uh, not aware of what is keeping you plateaued and you really do want to go to that next level. You want immersion into the kind of, kind of experiences that we're going to do right now, but just so much deeper, so much more powerful. You're going to hear from Judith um, in a few hours time as to what happened to her, for her, with her in my last event in Mexico, which has been absolutely life altering for her and for her business. You know, you, you can change everything in an instant. And uh, Bella called it a portal of truth. <laughs> and she also had, you know, a life changing experience. You can have a life changing experience with me um, for a very, very low priority access early bird investment that is only going to be available for two days following this event. So down in the comments, again, you can put your name on a list, the wait list to receive those details. If you are looking for a beautiful experience to have next year, um, you know, and it doesn't have to wait until then. You can get this experience for free by working with me. And so I've also put my call booking link in there as well. If you caught the masterclass at 12, uh, nearly three hours ago now, oh, we've been going live for nearly four hours. This is epic. Um, I love this. Like, what, what are we even doing here? Like, this is fucking amazing. Um, you can uh, book a call, have a chat to me and talk to me about the next evolution of you, of your soul business, of your soul's pilgrimage, home, home to who you truly are, remembrance. You know, I know that that word gives you the goosebumps because you've already began to remember you know, you are ready to connect with this ancient wisdom that you hold in your body. You are ready for things to be easy. And I want to show you how to do that. You don't have to wait till March. You can jump on a call and I can talk to you about some of the programs that I have that might be a fit for where you are and what you want. So I'm going to head over to this beautiful uh, little advert. I'm going to go to the bathroom and get a setup for the breath work. And um, yeah, this is, this is so exciting. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> 
If you are ready for transformation, if you are ready for that 2.0 version of yourself, creating this business that you are proud of in a positive way, that is creating the income, the impact and the influence that you want. The way to do that is what I call activating your miracle frequency. And your mi miracle frequency is where you are just a bundle of those higher frequency emotions every single day. You are in a higher consciousness. You have stepped away from the victim consciousness to unlock this way of living your life where things happen for you. Synchronicities and miracles are part of your status quo. You are attracting what you want to you with ease and you are in this place of freedom where you get to create what you want every day without those limiting emotions. I learned once from a TED talk this idea that emotions aren't just this thing in your mind like a bank that they're stored in there that they're just sat in there and then in the moment your brain taps into this little emotion bank and takes one out and then says here you go this is how you should react emotions are created completely from scratch from scratch in the moment you are in the experience they are created from the belief system that you have so if you can change your belief systems, then in the moment when your mind reaches back into those experiences, there will be no negative emotions that it latches onto to divert from an experience that aligns with your truth. The emotion will be created in the moment of joy, excitement, something that takes you forward, something that gets you into powerful action, something that allows you to take risk and go big, get super visible, use your voice, scream from rooftops. What it is that you believe can change the world. So work out that truth. Connect with yourself. Learn about yourself. Chuck everything out that is misaligned to you. Start healing those limiting emotions and have the courage to step into your power. We all have a story. My story created the blueprint that I have to help you because I know how these emotions can limit what you want in your life. But if you're like me and you have that soul goal to make a difference and do it in a way where you are wealthy and able to experience an abundance in your own life, give your children the most amazing experiences, give to projects, give to charities, create foundations. I am here to show you a way forward where you can have it all and it can be easy. It just takes courage. Courage is the line between those lower frequency emotions and those higher frequency emotions. And in those higher frequency emotions, if we can live through those emotions, joy, unlimited love, enlightenment every single day, because we have resolved those emotions of the past, we get to have those emotions guide our interpretation of the reality that we have and guide those big life decisions that we make and guide how we take action on these powerful strategies that are given to us in our business to create the results that we want. We activate your miracle frequency in such an easy way. I have created seven simple, seven minute neurosomatic rituals that tap into the ancient wisdom of your body and tap into how we can work with your subconscious mind to create new empowering belief systems, a new level of energy and vibration. And all you have to do is use these seven simple, seven minute neurosomatic rituals seven times a day. I have created a free app where you get to tap in to these amazing, simple, powerful rituals. And at the same time, connect with a community of people who are on the same journey as you, seeking what I call awakened wealth, where you are creating money in a way that aligns to, aligns to your joy and passion and desire for impact and freedom and where you are supported with accountability to tap in seven times a day to yourself to connect with your truth and raise your vibration. A client came to me once and I offered her this suggestion of the seven by seven method, just sitting with herself, creating space.
self-sabotage that is happening from these thoughts is uh, filling up your head and filling up that space and she said no I said so what do you trust more do you trust those thoughts spiraling constantly filling your head with rubbish leading to action that is not powerful leading to inaction or do you trust sitting in the space and creating the vibration of everything that you want so that everything that you want starts attracting to you and you have that inspired action come through from a place of truth from a place of the truth of you so that your business is a radical expression of who you are and how you want to make a difference in the world and she said oh my god i trust the space this client went on to earn significant amounts in her business and I'm inviting you to do the same too. If every single thought has an energetic equivalent, if that energy is what is creating your reality because everything in your reality is a mirror to who you are energetically, what do you trust more to create what you want? Jump into the link below and access my amazing awakened wealth community download the app that is going to help you to tap into those neurosomatic rituals every single day and also tap into other resources to grow your income grow your impact and grow your influence and thank you for listening to this video i will see you right over there soon bye bye <laughs>
and they've uh, done a lot of studies how these kids go into university having, you know, I mean, my kids don't even get taught to read until they're seven or do maths and all these things. And yet they're smarter than the ones that have gone through this kind of traditional schooling. And it's because they're focusing on the right hand side of the brain. They're focusing on creativity. They're focusing on movement. Another thing is that we, when we experience trauma, just as I was saying before, you know, going through something a couple of weeks ago, threw me off my center of balance, brought up a lot of pain and emotion and feeling a big resistance to sit down and meditate, to sit down and do my breath work, to sit at my altar and connect with with myself, essentially, because I knew all of these emotions were going to come up and I didn't want to experience them. Or my conscious mind was telling me that I didn't want to experience them because I was in the survival area of my brain you know my survival brain was already deciding what it was going to feel like already telling me the stories of what these emotions were going to lead to and this whole experience was going to lead to painting this picture that then becomes our reality because of what we talked about with Don how we turn energy into matter through our focus and our focus comes from what what we believe but when I sat there and I allowed myself to feel these emotions, I allowed myself to reconnect my, to my feeling center. I began to bring my heart and my mind into synchronicity. I began to allow the emotions to flow. I breathed through these emotions. I breathed into my superconscious mind where I saw an entirely different reality. I saw an entirely different possibility. And this is how we should be creating our life. I jumped on with... Um, somebody yesterday to do some breath work because you know he's he was blocked in his creative vision and I I offered him this session of breath work to activate this vision because we don't find it in the con in the conscious mind because the conscious mind can only dig back through what we know and if you're creating a business if you're a light leader if you want to make fucking magic happen you've got to get into not just what you don't know but what you don't know that you don't know and it's in the subconscious mind it is in the alpha brainwave, which is your sleepy brainwave, not right down into theta where you're, you know, you're into subconscious and you're being drilled. You know, this is where kids are between the years of zero to seven, right? They're in a theta brainwave where they're being programmed. You don't want to be programmed. You want to be creative. You want to go from survival brain. This is what it is to this is what it could be. And this what it could be is connected to who I am in my truth, in my authenticity, my values, my belief systems my openness to possibility, my openness to vulnerability, my letting go of attachment to anything, everything, so that I can become pure and infinite possibility, which is what the quantum field is. The quantum field is infinite possibility. I talked in the mystery school that there are infinite doors, infinite doors, right? You get to open any of them. But the one that you will open will be the one that you focus on. And what people are doing is they are stuck in a room within the walls of their own subconscious belief systems, their internal belief systems. And what they do is they want to make progress. They want to make change in their life. And they walk out of that door, you know, hoping to see something different. But they just walk into the same fucking room with the same fucking walls and the same fucking door on the other side. Nothing changes until you change. But you can't change anything either when you're not connected to who you truly are and what is truth for you, and what is divine will for you, not your ego's perception, you know, not not what your little eyes, we call it the little eyes, right? All of those little eyes. What about the divine eye? What about the fact that you have a divine destiny? What about the fact that it is already written, that that star seed within the hologram of that seed is already within you, and you just got to start listening. You know, it doesn't have to look as you even like plan it because what if there is a greater more beautiful possibility you have to become open and in these experiences we become open we switch off the default mode network of the brain which is just constantly thinking it's fucking exhausting and we allow ourselves to drop into imagination so we are going to drop into imagination and we are going to breathe together This is going to be a four round breath work using the Soma breath method, which is rhythmic breathing coupled together with breath retentions. Um, Let me just check this left hand side so we've got anybody else in the room. Um, And what we're doing in the breath breath retentions is dropping into very deep. I'm going to be guiding you to hold your breath, to breathe in um, together and hold at the top. And then we go into another round of breath work. 
At the end of the breath work, I'm going to invite us to get up and to actually start moving our body, um, which is what I call the somatic evolution, right? The idea that this trauma is trapped in your in the cells of your body, actually, and we can actually shake it out when we're fully relaxed. When we're in that dreamy state, we can actually then start to really supercharge and to release. And you might really release. You might want to, you know, like scream or shake or smash or grab a pillow and like just allow, just allow you, you know, this is what we were talking about with Joe, the vulnerability to, to fully be through how you feel, right? To express, this is expression. This is expression, guys. This is the vulnerability. Vulnerability is where you are in your truth, where the walls come down, where the armors come off, and you allow yourself to be fully seen. Because allowing yourself to be fully seen is where the world gets to see your magic. And in switching off your conscious mind is where you get to awaken your gifts. We all have them. We all have connection to spirit. We all have uh, my... This is so funny. My daughter was sick a few weeks ago and I sat with her and I, I, I healed her actually and she really felt healed and evidently she went into school and she told one of her friends, well, in fact she told all of her friends about this experience and one of her, her friends, her mum is our cleaner and she came around to clean on Wednesday and she said, oh my God, you know, my my daughter had us howling with laughter the other day. She said, she came home and said, "Mummy, Eden's mummy is a psychopath. <sighs> she healed Eden." <laughs> and she was just laughing. She's like, "I think she got the wrong word. I'm not sure if she meant psychic, but I mean, I'm all good with psychopath." But you know, my daughter felt the difference. My my daughter felt the difference, and my clients feel the difference when I work with their energy. Um, and you know you have these gifts too it's just that you you're not you're not activating them and if you're in a soul business you can and you should because like we've talked about all of today the way forward is not through push and force and manipulating and control preaching and trying to get people to hear your message we can move them with our energy we can move them with our frequency we can change the world i believe we can change the world with pure love um i'm going to sing from that I'm jumping on. I'm jumping on Joe's bandwagon and starting to sing that message, because that's the sacred pulse that runs within you. That is the life force that is pulsating within you. Creation, creation, creative power, not survival mode. Creative power. Whatever level you are at at your business, and whatever level you want to get to, and whatever your plateau is, this stuff can help you. It can unlock your subconscious creativity. It can unlock the unconscious trauma in your body that's keeping you from radically expressing and keeping small. And, you know, and then we throw in all the marketing strategy. If you missed the masterclass, you can rewind back when this goes off live in quite a few hours time. Ooh, going all the way through till um, probably midnight New Zealand time. This is fucking wild. This is so cool. Um and you can watch the masterclass that shows you how I blend. It's like an interplay of energetics and proven marketing strategy. Because actually no strategy will work if your, your energy is out anyway. Um, but marketing strategy can become more powerful when you're more in your creative power and when your radical expression is unlocked. And I've, I've designed a blueprint, a nine-step blueprint, to really get you to that place. Um, and we're specifically focusing also on an evergreen sales asset that can really take your influence and authority to the next level. And that evergreen sales asset is a book because the whole world should know your story. The whole world should hear your soul story. And I believe that your soul story can change the world. And we want to get that into the hands of as many people as possible. And the system that we build behind that actually shortcuts lead generation and takes you out of the lead generation pro process so that you can have more freedom in your light business. Um, when I launched this system for myself back in March, uh, I felt like I'd retired. And maybe this started the journey of like true creativity and expression and authenticity because I was like, what the hell do I do with all this time? I felt like one of those people who had retired and then starts playing bowls or watching Netflix because they don't know themselves enough. I had to I had to know myself. And this is where I started to play with music um, and going to Don's conversation here, something about that music has just opened up something inside of me that is even more magnetic. 
If you want to read my whole story, uh, there is a link in the comments, Awaken Your Miracle Frequency. It's easier than you think to have it all. If you're listening to this and you're like, yeah, are you sure about that, Claire? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm fucking really sure. And read my story. Read the things that have happened in my life in the last, um, especially the last few years. Um, But let's now experience this. Just give me one second to download uh, our second piece of music because I need a shorter one because we've rattled and we've interviewed um, and now my entire set is not right. So give me a second to download a little bit of a shorter track for us. Shouldn't take too long. I think if you're watching on the live stream, you're probably settled in right now you've probably got your feet up this is a good opportunity for you to find a place where you can relax either seated or lying down Um, like I said after the breathing we will be moving so create a little bit of space behind you I'm actually really lacking in space so I apologize Um, you might not be able to see the whole of me Uh, the place where I usually hire to um to do these events so I do these events regularly with my clients um but I just had this well invitation from my beautiful coach to bring this out to more people to make it more um accessible so I am this is where the live stream idea came from Um, I think it's a beautiful idea now that we're doing it. Uh, It's the first time I've done it. I am using um, one, this one stream restream type thing. So uh, we have had some technical little issues, but I think we're getting there. I think we're getting there now. So let me pop this down into my downloads. Let me add it into my audacity over here. Raywin, Don in the live room, if you, um, if you are there, I could do with some some testers. So in a moment, or maybe anybody who is watching on the live stream over here. Oh, Raywin's there in the chat. Don's busy. Great. Okay. So Raywin, in a moment. And if you want to jump on, Raywin, and breathe together like the good times, because Raywin's one of my mastermind clients, <laughs> and we breathe together quite regularly, and it's fucking awesome. And she had the most ex- amazing experience in um, in my last virtual retreat, actually, which was what led to her coming into the mastermind. She she was sold. She was sold. She thought it was epic, and she joined us, and now she's writing in the next um the next volume of Leading with Light. Did I just say that out loud? Yes, I did. There is another volume of Leading with Light. So if you have been listening today and you've been like, "Mm, actually, I have a soul story. I would love, I would freaking love to put it out there. There is the opportunity to do exactly what I've done, to do exactly what Raywin has done, to do exactly what Joe has done and Raywin and Judith, who you will meet shortly, have done which is to share your story and to build a behind it that uses your story as as lead generation taking you out of the process so that you can live more into your love of life okay um because i know that you are a freedom hungry starseed just like me a liberty loving light leader and we don't like to be stuck in our admin we like to be in our creativity right um okay i think we are Okay, let me just do a little sound test.
can you hear me now? Yeah, can you hear me now? Let's test. Oh, let's not test actually. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Let's not test because we got it working. Okay, can you hear? Hang on. Can you hear? Sun. Can you hear some music? Give me a second. Going across, going across, going across. Okay, this is great. Okay, I'm not going to touch anything. You can. Okay, this is great. Okay, I'm not going to touch anything. What I'm going to ask you to do is to close your eyes. Close down your eyes. And simply relax, relax into your body. Connect with your breath. Can you feel that beautiful air coming in through your nose? Breathe it all the way in, squeeze it at the top. Maybe even squeeze your pelvic floor, hold that energy in, and then let it go with a sigh of good feelings. Ah. Feel the release. Feel those good feelings. What I want you to do is feel you. Have a moment of beautiful gratitude for you. Your soul. You know that feeling when you feel deeply connected to who you are, those moments, those glimmers of truth. Feel that feeling right now, the feeling of connecting to your authentic truth and love from that feeling, love through your whole body. Activate the sacred creative energy within you just by feeling love and gratitude. And again, let's squeeze down the pelvic floor and just breathe in together all the way up, hold it, squeeze your pelvic floor, keep it up there, and this time I want you to let go with a beautiful chant of Aum, one more chant but this time I want you to move the energy as you chant from your abdomen up into your heart center and then up into your pineal gland behind the eyes so the R in the abdomen the ooh in the chest and the mm in your brain ah feel the vibration ah vibration that is coming from you is the reality that comes to you and what we're going to do is breathe together in a beautiful round four rounds of 
in for four and out for four, guided. And what we want to do is increase the good feelings with every breath. actually squeeze down your pelvic floor and your in-breath and fully release with your out-breath. <sighs> breathing in a rhythm, breathing in that circle of life. The creation that flows from you in your vibration and the abundance that is received by you from the inexhaustible, infinite abundance of the universe. Allow your body to move with your breath, become fluid and flow. Fully let go. Fully let go. And what we're going to do now is take a big deep breath in. Hold and squeeze it at the top. Ah, let it go. Let your whole body go. Ah, down into a breath of tension. Hold your breath. Feel the stillness. When you press pause on your breath, you press pause on life. Allow your mind to drift out of your body, allow it to drift up. And if you feel the urge to breathe, I want you to ignore it. And just allow the sensation to build a little bit beyond your comfort zone. And then I want you to harness that creative power by squeezing down on your pelvic floor and breathing up. Following the energy up, up, up your spine, squeeze it. Squeeze it behind your eyes, drop your chin, squeeze your eyebrows together, hold your breath. Keep holding. And then release, ah. Noticing your energy field, feel your energy field around you. As you have circulated this energy, it has expanded in feeling. You are aware of the fact that there is no separation between you and what is around you. You are the same energy in flow, and we're going to breathe again. Mm. 
good feelings up. Allow whatever you see, whatever you see without question, allow yourself to fully be in this vision, be in this experience. Ah. Fully experience this vision, bringing all into this movie in your mind. Knowing that this movie is exactly the movie that you are experiencing in your world, in your day-to-day -day reality, being created from the vibration that is coming from you. What is the possibility of that? What is the possibility of changing your frequency? And do we use that possibility up in all the way up hold and then let it go ah down into your breath attention allowing your focus to come up out of your body to the spaciousness of infinite possibility. Keep holding your breath. Again, if you feel the urge to breathe, ignore it or take a little sip and blow it back out again. Allow the sensation of life, force, creation, that is your urge to breathe, your urge to live, allow it to build, trusting that you are the one with the power, you choose when to squeeze down that pelvic floor, we choose now together, squeeze and breathe in, following that energy all the way up your spine, Holding it, dropping your chin, squeezing your eyebrows together. See the light. And let it go. <sighs> Back into that beautiful puddle of energy as we begin to breathe again. as if you are making love with life as it is right now, as it is with whatever is 
healing card or a struggle or a block. Allow yourself with every out breath to release those low frequency feelings, release the frustration, release whatever you're feeling. Inadequacy, ugliness, release with every out breath and breathe in love. Breathe in love. Breathe out. Release. Feel how you are creating space within. You are becoming the same energetic possibility as in the breath retention. Opening, clearing, releasing, letting go. When you let go, you let in. On this next one, we're going to breathe all the way in. Ready? Squeeze your pelvic floor. Hold and let go. Ah. Drop back into your breath retention. Feel the vibration buzzing in your body. You are opening up space in your life to let in. What is your heart calling for? What is your heart calling in? Allow that vision to seed for now. You don't have to see it clearly, see the glimmers. See what means something to you. And feeling. Hold that vision. Hold that vision and see that you are merely one step, a portal. Feel that portal in front of you. Feel the commitment in your solar plexus to step through. Step through to this vision. Hold down your pelvic floor, are you ready? And we're going to breathe in and you're going to see yourself step, go. See yourself step in, breathe up, bring the energy up into your mind's eye, behind your eyes, squeeze down your eyebrows, drop your chin, hold that breath. Feel yourself in the infinite possibility, in the higher mind, in the higher energies. And let go. I want you to smile now as you breathe in. In, two, and out. Two, three, four. In, two, out. Two, three, four. In, two, out. Two, three, four. Oneness, possibility, you are the creative power. Circulate this creative energy, give it to the universe and feel in feeling how the abundance returns to you. And now 
squeeze down your pelvic floor and breathe in. And out, and then all the way in. Hold it at the top, squeeze. Hold a little longer this time, feel the illumination, feel the light, and then release with a chant. Um. So you continue to chant, I want you to feel your vibration leaving you becoming one with everything around you in. Chant with passion, chant with soul, chant with feeling. vibrating differently notice how you're feeling differently one more chant uh... evolution soma your body somatic full presence in your body at your body's will is at divine will the universe speaks through you speaks through your feelings speaks through your vision speaks in a language that your conscious mind cannot understand, meaning that your next evolution will be outside of anything that your conscious mind can understand. Your next evolution can manifest instantly into your reality, simply by letting go like this. Allowing yourself to be in full consciousness and in full consciousness, I want you to notice right now, what do you feel? This will be subjective to you, it might be good, it might be bad, it might be neutral. What do you feel? In a few moments I'm going to guide you to stand up because whatever you feel, what you are feeling is low frequency, maybe some, maybe for some frustration, maybe some guilt, maybe some shame, maybe some sadness, maybe some grief. You're going to move it out. And if you are already feeling good feelings, you're going to breathe those feelings up. And hopefully if you're feeling low frequency feelings, you're going to transition, you're going to transmute them, you're going to move them up through the chakras of your body because every single chakra of your body is a center of wisdom, of ancient encoded wisdom in your body can allow, can allow this beautiful transmutation to love, to the infinite power, the boundless power of love, the boundless power of love in every moment to see what you see and receive its gifts and blessings to not create a gap between where you are and you, where you want to be to allow what is to simply be this does not mean that we let go of what feels aligned to us but it means that we attract it in 
with more ease. The higher you vibrate, the faster you vibrate, the easier it is to manifest and the more that you love, the faster you vibrate. So let's vibrate together now. I want you to stand up. This is where my sound might get a bit dodgy, so I'm going to try my best to, to speak into <laughs> the computer's microphone because this is the one that has stopped working. I want you to stand up, feet on the floor, firmly on the floor. I'm just going to turn it down for a second. it down for a second just so you can hear me explain I want you to have your feet placed firmly on the floor and I want you to imagine that you're on a vibration pad and this vibration is going to start coming up with your feet it's going to come all the way up your body so that you are in a tremor your body is tremoring and you bring this vibration all the way up okay so I'm going to bring this music up let's fucking let loose guys
now is to bring the breath in, okay? We're going to be breathing in and out, in and out. I want you to bring your arms up with your breath like this. We're going to be going... <sighs> Ready? Bringing the music back up. life force. This is your life force energy. Hold it, feel it, feel the buzz, feel the light. And then let it go. Ah. And as you let it go, I want you to feel the energy around you. Feel what it feels like. Feel the vibration. Notice. Notice and feel. <sighs> Raywin, I'm bringing you in. What are you feeling? Put your sound on. I'm playing with my energy. Good, right? Yes, I love this. What do you feel? You can feel it, right? You can feel yeah, your energy. Totally feel it, yeah. I always feel it in my hands. Like I feel, uh, I just feel so much tingling and and you can feel like this, um, it's like a magnet. It's like, mm -hmm. a, like, a, like a soft, squishy balloon, like a magnet. I just love like, and it's tingling all up my legs. Yes. And just all over my whole body. Yes. I feel I feel it heaps in my hands. Heaps in my hands. Heaps. Love it. Love, 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 love that. Love it. Love that. Yeah. And that's just the, the tiniest experience, right? Like that's wow. I mean compared to what we do, eh, Ray, when like yep. going so cool. deep into those experiences and you know, so really cool. starting to connect with our energetic body, connect with the wisdom in our body. Have mm. you, like, you, my retreat, my, so my online retreat, I felt like you, you experienced such a shift across those three days. Yeah, it was huge. It was massive. It just want to, it just pulls you back to wanting more of that feeling. So you want to continue to feel this feeling, this fear, this this vibrational energy pull to and and for me like I'm quite visual in what I see but when I do this work there's a nothingness to it which makes you feel almost lost but mm. it's uh but it's not it's a it's a love loss lost it's like a mm. You, you're not lost. You are. You're home. You're, you're home. home. You're home. 
you, you're unattached actually is is you know what I mean it's it's the that's the oneness that's the realizing that you are one with everything you are all of it but you're also none of it mm. you know mm. what has connecting to connecting to these feelings these good feelings done to your creativity in the last oh. couple of months well, I mean, you, you know, you know that the the benefits of doing this work has been phenomenal, um, absolutely phenomenal, and it, it's grown me as a person. It's grown our business um, more than what we could have ever expected. You know, over a month, a period of a month, just by. I mean, we already have our regular practices anyway, but. But increasing those regular practices with the the quantum leap, with the 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 methods, um, is it it is a quantum leap. <laughs> There's no other way to describe it. It is like yes. taking a quantum leap. Yeah, because I mean, you've got life. You know, you've still got life. You've still got to deal with shit. You've still got to deal with with stuff, right? But if you with having with 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 committing to putting yourself in a place where you own it and you step into it and you connect it's it, it's just about connecting with yourself isn't it it's just about connecting within do you know the words the word is quantum because actually quantum is atomic a, qu a quantum is so small and that's the essence of a quantum leap. It's not all this big stuff that you're trying, you know, the, the, the massive campaigns and the launches. It is the in the moment, tiny decisions to live into the frequency of your next, next octave, mm -hmm. to make the decision that creates those feelings, which like you've experienced is sometimes letting go of the to-do list and sitting down and opening up the quantum leap portal and breathing, moving, chanting mm -hmm. dancing i get so much more done when i do the seven by seven <laughs> yeah no me too it creates time yeah, doesn't it you just get so much more done you know it's nuts I, yeah yeah it's it's out of it it's out of it um it's, it's out of it but it's but it's amazing it, it's know? also you know you think about you think about you know i know if you're a creator out there right one of your biggest struggles is what do I create? What do I post? What do I say today? Mm. Guys, I've been live since 11 a.m. this morning. It's 4 p.m. This has not got, this is the only list I have, which is to do with the next session, just to make sure I, I cover everything. Because <laughs> I want to talk into the fifth holistic circuit of your brain, um, which I know um, Raywin already, already heard some of this in the, in the last retreat. Um, but that just has been through just being in the moment, right? Rolling moment to moment, bringing Don on, having mm. stuff that, you know, like I said to, um, I just not sure if it was Don or, or somebody else that was chatting to me in Messenger this morning. You know, he said, I'm really surprised that you've been able to show up for the last couple of weeks. I said, dude, I haven't. Like none of my content has been live. Mm. It's, uh, you mm -hmm. might be able to tell with the hair, right? It's like it was a different color and long this is not content this is just inspired like sharing because yeah. that's where we want to be is we want to wake up every single morning with the divine download this is what i have to share today and what yeah. the awakened wealth blueprint is it gives you a way of creating a wheel of content that's constantly turning with this inspiration right we multi-purpose everything that you're doing and that you're creating so that if you want to step out of your business on purpose you can. If one gets sick, if you get sick, if you want to take a sabbatical, you can. Freedom, freedom. I remember feeling locked tight into my business, rope round the neck, got to show up, got to constantly be pushing the wheel. You know, we want to come away from that. And that this, this is how we do it, is to become an absolute vessel of creative inspiration, inspired. I used the words in that breath work, making love with life yeah. as it is. In the moment. In the moment. In the moment. 
isn't that a kiwi expression it is what it is and you go oh fucking hell well you want to go it is what it is and i fucking love it anyway right yeah. it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna bring all of myself fully yes. into this moment whatever this moment is and the more that you can make the decision to do that in the moment the more your external reality will change naturally will just begin to align to this new frequency that you're at mm. Um, and I know that you've experienced that, like, you know, the vibration of things towards you without all the, the push and the force, right? Absolutely. Totally. Just let it, let it come, let yeah. it be. And listen, just listen, you know, it's actually, it's, it's connecting and listening, not forcing, not trying to fix anything, just creating. And then not going, sorry, what was that? I'm not going to do that. <laughs> saying yes right you've got to say however crazy it is however illogical it is oh, you've got to so understand that, like this is yeah. the, the message from the universe to you and this is the thing i think uh the, the session that we had on the weekend was so powerful or during the week last what day is the, the weekend now so middle of the week when we did our coaching and you were saying how you know in the moment you were just literally in receptivity to the experience that you were in and it ended up differently to how you could have planned or strategized but it worked out it mm. probably worked out better it created opportunity it created op like possibility mm -hmm. which is the truth right think to yourself yep. as you're holding on to security as you're holding on to safety where are you cutting out quantum surprises where are you creating an actual wall to things being better than you could possibly have imagined and living into that expanded experience of life that was another another thing when I you know I, I cracked multi six figures and I'm sat there and I'm like where's all the experiences that I thought I would be having with this money I was trapped in abundance mm. do you know that after our session this week we got another high ticket <laughs> Yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And it was all just, yeah. I mean, it, it's all just, I mean, yeah, you have to put yourself out there. Absolutely. But you, you have to trust in those people that, you know, that are, that you're calling to that, that are needing to hear you, you know, and yeah. it's trust. It's, it, but you have to put your, you know, use use the vibration use the energy it's it's so available to you right it's so mm -hmm. available to you yeah so mm -hmm. cool thank you so much ha huh. we've just gone across the four o'clock line so i'm going to take this moment to uh start this this uh this presentation actually which i'm going to take thank you raywin you're amazing you. not in the room <laughs> back to you um so where are we we have talked about the principle today that we're basically manifesting in every moment right we are reality coming to us from us and the thing is that we don't know what we are creating unconsciously from, from a primal need of safety from the place of our trauma until we know <laughs> which is what don said right he said he said that magical word awareness many of us especially if we're running a really you know and the thing is that when you crack success right when you have the clients coming in you have even less time to invest into yourself into your meditation into your breath work you know when i was in a big mastermind i'd hear so many of the women say oh well you know i, I want now i've got some money i want to go to the gym but how do i find time to go to the gym i mean as raywin has just said by taking time to invest in meditation you create time time opens up time is actually an illusion it's actually it's actually coming from you the space when you're in spaciousness you're creating spaciousness um so in this spaciousness when we're transmuting these feelings you know of the moment say you've had a hard day with the kids maybe 
you didn't get any sleep. Maybe a client hasn't paid. Maybe you are feeling like you're hitting walls left, right and center. If you can sit down seven times a day and actually allow those feelings to come up and transmute them and find clarity and peace and love, then you become a whole different vibration that is going to change what you have on the outside. Now, throw something in that's a curveball, you know, maybe something quite traumatic happens. Again, the ability to actually be with those feelings and begin to heal immediately, you know. We do not get traumatized by the experience that we have. We get traumatized by the way that we replay it in our minds. You know, a year ago yesterday, I lost my dog and I went through this. I, I understood how trauma is created. It was it was the, the, the wildest experience. You know, I obviously was overwhelmed emotionally in the moment that what happened happened. And what happens in your brain in that moment is an engram forms, like a little neural, like a uh, cluster of, of pathways, basically. Um, and what you do as you replay this in your mind, because it's overwhelming emotionally, you don't know why it happened. You're trying to process it, right? Maybe you, uh, it's confirming beliefs that you've got about yourself. So you replay this fucking picture in your mind. I experienced this, seeing this over and over and over again. And all these questions are coming up. Why? What? Who I am? Telling me who I am. Telling me that it was my fault, you know? And what you're doing is attaching neural pathways. You are sticking this file into the brain cabinet that gets stored away that basically guides how you go forwards in your life um so if you can have a method and this is how i created the seven by seven method was to experience such deep trauma that i didn't know how to go forward and one of my own master coaches one of my own beautiful quantum leap master coaches rang me and said claire you know what to do you have brought us through things like this. You know what to do. And I realized she's right. I know, I know what to do. And, you know, I actually went to the Quantum Leap Intensive, which is the certification to take this method out to other people. And I took myself through one of my own assessments, which is to create what we call an integration plan, which is to take all of these ways that we can tap into consciousness, that we can become peaceful, that we can create resonant harmony, uh, resonant fre harmonious frequency, resonant frequency. And I created a plan so that I, I did, right? Because that's when you are traumatized, when you go through something, you need something to hold on to. You need a stable ground. And I thought rather than the crutches, maybe the alcohol, maybe the going to the gym and, and, and killing myself there or signing up for a fight or whatever, all the shit that I used to do, I thought maybe I hold on to this integration plan, which included seven times a day sitting at my altar and leaning into neurosomatic practice seven simple rituals that I then put onto the 7x7 seven seven app that you can get down in the comments. Um, and what we're doing is um, having a somatic evolution. Our entire vibration changes. And as Raywin just shared, from this uh, change in frequency, this change in feeling, you, you become a different expression of yourself, right? It's like you want to love on life. You want to bring love to every moment. I had somebody uh, in the messenger say that I was pissing her off with my messages. And, uh, you know, she said, um, I can't remember what she said, but I loved on her. I said, hey, you know, it's, it's okay. Like ev everything is, is okay. I'm sorry that I, you know, you're in a, an automated thing. I'll unclick the box and, you know, I hope everything's okay. And she came back and she said, well, it isn't. And I said, it's okay. It's okay. You know, like I could have reacted. I could have been triggered by her, uh, you know, gentle attack but it's still sort of a you know it's it's the reactions we change them to responses loving responses and the entire situation changes and from that things that attract differently to you right so somatic evolution leads to if you can do things like we just experienced a little bit of more often you are you are bringing a whole different version energetically of yourself into every situation of life um and this is where the Awakened Wealth Blueprint takes your business to the next level because we build these things in. So you might be in a program right now that's strategy based. You might be in a mastermind that is business focused. 
And maybe you're in this mastermind or you're in this program and you're asking yourself, you know, how do I how do I take care of myself a little bit more? How do I, uh, you know, increase my worthiness? How do I get over these feelings that I'm having? How do I um, you're aware, right? You are aware that something needs to shift internally. Well, we build this into your program. It's, it's a major part of the Awakened Wealth Blueprint in a way that we also actually make accessing this alpha mind of yours, this super consciousness, part of your damn strategy because it is your creative expression. It is where you unlock radical expression. And when you unlock radical expression, you start stirring the waters of your visibility and people start to notice. People start to connect with you. People start to uh, get curious about you, right? Rather than the resistance that they feel every time you share a bloody offers post or your next launch or whatever else it is, you know, you bring them into your world. Um, so I say that, you know, my work is transforming leaders from the inside out. And I specifically work with light leaders, people who have um, a story generally, and this story has led to them believing something that is usually just slightly outside of the box. And for that reason, it's difficult to get traction in a market uh, if you do not have the right expression, you know, and this is where strategically we might go to a copywriter or we might go to a marketing coach or we might go to a social media um, like graphic person or manager or whatever else. But what I'm saying is you just need to go deeper into yourself because the version of you that has mastered this expression is, is already there, right? And it's simply a case of, of intention to be more than you are that seeds what I call the quantum feedback loop, which is how your energy comes from you and comes back to you in the reality that you want. This is not logical or linear, right? So I say there is a blueprint. I say there is an awakened wealth blueprint that has nine steps, but really it's not a linear or logical process because we're in the quantum. We're quantum field of infinite possibilities. What you just heard from Raywin, the quantum leaps are, the quantum surprises are. We do not want to be attached to a plan. Your plan, brain, is over here in the four circuits, we're going to talk about in a minute, of your brain that are keeping you stuck and small. Where we want to get into is the fifth to eight circuits of the brain, starting with the fifth holistic circuit of the brain, which is going to, man, like completely change how you show up in business and life and how business and life starts happening for you. I say step one of the Awakened Wealth Blueprint, awaken your miracle frequency, use the seven by seven methods, start to experience coherence. But that's only step one, right? We then want to start living, like I say, in more of your right brain, the alpha mind, away from the survival brain into the creative brain. And this is where like you just see an entirely different version of life, new possibilities. Look, I, I said earlier, I say to my clients a lot, look to see. The only reason you're seeing what you're seeing is because you believe something. So if you're not seeing something, you can change a belief system and you can start to see it. And if you see it, it will become. That is how energy turns to matter, <laughs> right? So we need to get into our creative brain. We need to get into our imagination where I took you in the breath work just then, just for a short amount of time, but you danced in your imagination there. You switched off the default mode network of your brain that spins around with the same records, same stories, same nar narratives, and you go across into this beautiful place of possibility, just like a child, this dreamy, beautiful state of possibility. And this is actually where we are taking the reptilian brain, which is part of your survival brain, which is your reptilian brain keeping you stuck because the reptilian brain is literally like a big switch at the back that as the information comes in, the reticular activated system is filtering everything out that is not important. And the most important thing is that you stay a fucking live. OK, you have got to stay alive. That's what your brain is saying. <laughs> your reptilian brain is making sure that you stay alive. And it is basically going like, you know, it is it is working to your disadvantage. But what we can do is use it to your advantage, because what the reptilian brain does is it doesn't work in, in words. It works in sounds. It works in shapes. It works in colors. And we can take this beautiful information and we can use it to create things that are new, new possibility. 
you know, I had a beautiful experience with somebody yesterday. I did a breath work with them. And, you know, in my breath works, I'm very careful to uh, not fill the mind with pictures, but to guide your mind to create its own pictures, which is where the reptilian brain is working, right? And he said how he saw this beautiful white eagle and this beautiful white eagle was flying and he then saw the white eagle just turn into like the cosmos almost and he said he got this beautiful message from this you know that that there is no separation it it guided him to see how he should be showing up he came out of the breath work and he's like just hang on a minute i need to write this stuff down he had a massive breakthrough yesterday like a huge breakthrough and he said i've got to do this more often you've got to do this more often too so we can make your reptilian brain an ally to the growth of your business. Um, and we do that by activating this, this, this number one, the fifth holistic circuit of your brain. So I'm going to talk you through the levels of, of the brain, right? And these circuits of your brain, circuits one to four are the left brain your linear, logical, survival brain. The base circuit is your bio survival system. And this is, um, you know, uh, it's like what you come out of the womb with, right? And if we go back in time, it is the very primal instinctive, just get through, just, just you know, exist. Um, if we align it to the levels of consciousness, it is the to me level of consciousness, level one, because it is very much like the world is happening to me and I have to stay safe. Okay, so it is very primal. Um, if you are traumatized, you will be falling to this default base level of your brain more often than other people. Um, it can be quite narcissistic, selfish. You know, it will it will cause you to um, feed the safety over everything else. And I think you know, in my book, I talk about um, how a podcast and talk about the. the the victim Olympics, how society is like the victim Olympics right now, because society has fed this primal circuit of the brain, created systems to keep us safe, you know, stepped in when things go to shit so that we, we feel like we can rely on things outside of ourselves. Um, it's playing on this very primal circuit of the brain. And, 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 and we need to break out of that because we have such infinite power beyond that, right? Um, Circuit number two is your emotional territorial circuit. And you create your reality tunnels on this, right? So if you imagine um, that you are storing information through the reptilian brain, so information comes into the brain and it is like deciding based on past experiences, whether this is like a green flag or a red flag. And if it's a red flag, then you have an emotion that stops you <laughs> in your tracks of action or guides your behaviors, how you take action, right? Um, so when we're in this circuit of the brain, you're going to be very stuck behind your emotions. You're going to see in my episode of A Baptism of Fire, which is coming up in 40 minutes. <laughs> um, you know, if I had have got stuck behind the emotions that you see me have, which are quite dramatic, my business would have gone no nowhere, right? And I was having them, you know, my existing situation was bringing me things that were triggering this emotion, but this was emo this emotion was nothing to do with the with the present moment, if that makes sense. And that's what happens, right? We're having emotions in the present moment that are nothing to do with the present moment, but that we're pulling them from the past, which means we're walking backwards into our future. We can't see our future because we're looking backwards, which means we're not creating it because we're over in this left-hand survival side of the brain, right? We can go another level up into the third circuit of the brain. And this circuit is your time binding semantic um, circuit of the brain, which is a little bit like um, personal responsibility. It's like the next level of consciousness where you realize that you can have an active part in how you lead your life. Um, but the thing about this circuit of the brain is it's still very linear. It's still very logical. It does lead to push and to force or to be pushed and forced. Um, And I'm smiling because, yeah, I'll tell you in a minute. 
so we're we're dancing across these three circuits and then the fourth circuit is what we call the social social sexual um uh circuit of the brain and this is where we again step out of that level of consciousness where we're in the level two and and we're sort of like pushing and forcing and we do actually start to realize that we can give we can kind of give up the the conscious mind right that we can start leaning into um, our feelings and our experiences and our interactions, uh, the, um, yeah, like almost the unknown, the, the outside of the matrix. And this is why it's sort of right on the line of the two sides of the brain, because in here we, we, we will often, this is where you can end up in spiritual crisis You know, you can start to say, actually, my God, this is just so scary to let go of everything that I know that I'm going to shut down and then just go back down to the lower levels of the brain, right? The lower circuits instead of um, stepping across. And this is where we step across into the fifth holistic circuit of the brain, which is your neurosomatic system. This is where we do completely let go of the conscious mind, tap back into the body, neurosomatic. Um... And if you can fully lean in, let go and be in this fifth holistic circuit of the brain, which takes you from the left brain across to the right brain, then you can actually begin to let go of your ego completely. And if you let go of your ego completely, then that's effectively the death of struggle, right? Because it's all, if, if you are in struggle, if something is hard, then that is your ego. That is, that is that is your ego. You can say immediately, I'm operating from my ego that wants to keep me safe rather than from pure possibility, which is looking at what you are experiencing with love and seeing the gifts and the blessings in it. So we want to turn on the neurosomatic circuit of the brain, the fifth holistic circuit of the brain on purpose because in that circuit of the brain, we stop struggling. We start allowing we start being, we start loving, we start vibrating at a higher frequency all the time. And like Raywin said, when you can connect with those feelings, you want more of those feelings and they're easier to switch on. When you are constantly living in your linear, logical left-hand side of the brain, survival brain, it's actually really hard to let go of your body. Going back to what we talked about with Joe, the um, the sex magic, you know, you think about sex and it is this really vulnerable place, right? It is a vulnerable place of uh, pure openness and trust. And that's trust of the other, but then also trust of yourself. And it's actually more trust of yourself because if you fully trust in yourself, then you'll actually trust the other, right? So, and, you, and you'll trust that you are the other <laughs> too actually, you know, and that is what we're doing in sex magic is we're combining these beautiful energies. They are becoming one. You're letting go of the physical body completely. And you are allowing this creative life force to alchemize, to transmute, to release. Um, And, you know, Joe talked about vitality. Yes, it's very good for you, but it's also a place of, you know, real divine illumination. And um, yeah, like, this place where you are fully at one that you can be in receivership of the abundance that is there for you um and it's really really powerful but it it it, like this body of ours and this is the journey that i had you know i i I did experience sexual trauma i have spent a long time unable to relax unable to um let go unable to trust Um, And when I discovered this neurosomatic stuff and I began to breathe and I began to move and I realized, like, I remember realizing about a year ago, I was like starting to dance and I was like, oh my God, this is the first time I've I've danced without being drunk. I couldn't dance. Now I dance all the time. Like you cannot stop me dancing. I dance like an idiot. My kids are like, oh my God, mom, just, you know, and then they dance with me. Moving your body, freedom in your body, freedom to be, freedom to feel, freedom to be actually as you are, 
right? And we want to grow this. We want to grow this uh, vulnerability because from this vulnerability comes this creative energy and from this creative energy comes your expression, okay? So the beauty of this fifth holistic circuit of the brain is that it wipes all the other circuits. So you're there in this linear logical mind, maybe going through your strategy, maybe going through your counseling, your talk therapy, your whatever, your whatever it is. But if you could just switch this fifth holistic circuit of the brain on, it wipes all those other circuits. They are, they stop working, but you need to reconnect to your body. You need to be able to be in your body. You need to be able to let go. You need to be able to, yeah, I, I'm repeating myself. It is this beautiful, happy, high feeling, right? Whatever is going on in your surrounding. You know, maybe my, my beautiful assistant told me the other day that um, this word, maybe it looks like you're delusional. And apparently there is a TikTok hashtag called Delulu. And he said, you are completely Delulu, Claire. And I said, good, because being Delulu has brought the abundance that I have into my reality easily. Um, because you get outside of the time space continuum, right? You stop being caught in these boxes of your reality. You break free. You experience freedom to be all of you. And you bring all of you into every moment. Um, you let go of this conscious control. Like you, you, you may right now be where I was and I welcome you to read my full story. There's a comment with my book, Awaken Your Miracle Frequency. And it's really having a death grip on conscious control of everything because you're scared to let go of it. Um, so we can create these feelings. We can learn to create these feelings. And I, I feel really passionate about helping you to do this, which is why today is also the launch of Mayu, which is my platform, mayu.tv. And what I see on this platform is conscious collaboration with other people, um, sharing of content, sharing of music, sharing of, of modalities and experiences to show you how to tap into this divinity within, to reconnect to your body, to awaken this uh, sacred ancient wisdom that is there and available to all of us that is going to help you to switch this circuit on. Um, something that I've discovered certainly this year and something that you're gonna see in A Baptism of Fire, my episode, 33 minutes time over on YouTube, is that you do, we do have a divine destiny. It is already written. Um, we are like a player and a play. We, we're a player, but we're being played in this greater reality. So everything should be about co-creation, not about questioning, right? Assuming. Um, I talked about in, um, I'm not sure what event I did recently, maybe the flow state, how we're doing four things all of the time, right? We are um, making assumptions. We are feeling resistance. We are um, um, where, what are we feeling? I've had a mind blank, feeling resistance, assuming, feeling resistance, feeling aversion and attaching. And all of those four things, I'll give you an example. So feeling aversion is like, I'm just, I just, I'm like, I can't, I'm physically allergic. Feeling attachment is, fuck, if I don't have this, then it's really, really bad. Um, feeling resistance is, oh, my feet are in, in custard. I'll kind of do it, but I really don't want to be there. A little bit like aversion, but more like, um, yeah, it's, it's doing it, but playing small. And... Um, assuming is like already deciding what something is before you actually get there, right? So in a sales call, for example, you might get on the sales call and you're already assuming that the person has no money. And so that guides how you show up on the call. So we're doing these things based on our programming, right? What we actually have to do is understand that every single moment is divinely gifted and we have to let go to let God, knowing that we are God, and surrender in full vulnerability to what we're experiencing and feel ecstatic bliss anyway, right? So if we bring this into money, right? Let's bring, let's bring this into the idea of money. Like I, like I write about in my book, Leading With Light, my chapter um, in Leading With Light, which again, you can get for free down in the comments. That's so hard because of the conditioning that we have. Like we're conditioned to believe that money is 
scarce, money runs out, money is only accessible to some. There's so many programs and conditions that literally are being plugged into us, plumbed into us from the minute we're born. And, you know, there's this way that we see money being made and it's through action. It's possibly through hustle. It is only through um, having the security of a job. Um, we have an idea of what those jobs look like. We have an idea about what working look like, what, what, you know, but if we are living into those programs and conditions and feeling like crud, actually just creating more of what we're experiencing right so what about if you can change state what about if you can like I said make love with every moment it is actually possible and what happens when you start to do that when you're able to start to do that and again the long way is to go through every single belief system and rewire it or you can activate the fifth circuit of the brain and you can actually release that that engram you can let it go it's absolutely been studied as possible. We cross the alpha and theta brainwave over and the brain is releasing shit and you feel differently. You feel uh, like you've had an, an enlightenment, right? And there are ways of making this happen even faster. So if we start to use Kavala Kumbhaka in um, breathwork, which is, um, you know, really bringing the body into this um, uh, highly almost aroused state of energy, really awakening the Kundalini, getting that, that circulating energy, um, coming to a place of breathlessness that is really easy, right? So really taking the deep meditation that you dropped into, through the breath work just before, but like super deep that you have breathed in a rhythm so much that your pH has changed, your oxygen, um, carbon dioxide balance is completely different. You go into uh, really deep hypoxia and you release DMT. So then you are completely changing the physical state of the body. Like you're in absolute ecstasy. It's, it's incredible. Like, you know, um, I have had whole body orgasm through just breath work clients have had the same it's nuts and these are the energy that is this is the energy that is coming from you that will come back to you in abundance right um so we've got to start doing some of this on purpose and i really want to be the leader that shows you how and you know for me that has been about embodying it myself you know really going deep with this work myself and because of that it has required me to face a lot of my fears to uh get through my own fear that if i step out of everything that i know that i know about making money that i know about staying secure that i know about getting shit done you know that i i will be okay and that has led to this place of such freedom to live and breathe this stuff, right? That it, it's rubbing off onto, onto other people. And um, it's just incredible. Your, your death fear, it's like, it's, it's so primal. It's working 24 seven. And like I said, it's, it's trying to keep you alive. And society has really played on that. And there's this massive gap because of that between helplessness and power we see the those in power being a smaller percentage of people but there's also groups within the power as well right and the biggest group is the ones that are pushing and forcing and manipulating and controlling um, society is set up so that those systems that they put in place make us feel secure but what we're really doing is not trusting ourselves and letting go of our innate natural creative power that we can wake up and magic can happen from that. Now, we also um, are doing something really important to manifestation when we activate the fifth holistic circuit of the brain, because when we when we can follow sort of traditional manifestation methods, which is setting a vision and trying to feel it like it, it's happened already, we're actually creating a gap. So energetically, we're saying that we don't really believe that we have it. Um, but we see it over here and we're going to try and focus on it. But because we're not there and we're not there in energy, we're creating a gap, which is actually scarcity, which doesn't manifest high quality abundance. Right. So in activating the, the fifth holistic circuit of the brain, you, there's no conscious process. You are there energetically or you are you are there. There is no gap. Um, and again, 
like this challenges our conditioning so deeply, doesn't it? Because you know, where were you ever taught at school that you can do a bit of breath work and manifest abundance? You're not told that. You're told that productivity actually creates results. Physical work creates results. And you're rewarded for all of that as well, right? You've gone through school getting rewarded for being smart. You go into work, you get rewarded for showing up, you get bonuses for staying late. You get pay rises for getting smarter. None, none of it's told us that it can be that easy, right? So you're gonna you're gonna fight your your brain on this a little bit, and this is not just um, this is not just down to individual belief systems as well. This is actually to do with collective belief. So there's this beautiful story of a guy that I think it was the last uh, or the first and last documented levitation. I can't remember from when, but very 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 long time ago, and. Basically, it was documented that this guy levitated quite high off the ground. Now, the key part of this story is that they hadn't discovered gravity yet. So gravity hadn't been discovered. So collectively, we would not have believed that, yeah, that it was impossible. So you've got to think about collectively, what do we believe is impossible? Because those beliefs are infiltrating. They're, they, you know, you are affected by the collective beliefs as well as your own beliefs um so it kind of makes it it kind of makes it kind of makes this this internal work even deeper right to to again because if you let go of some of these collective beliefs we get punished in society you know again we see it through covid when you had an inner knowing you had an inner feeling that the vaccine wasn't for you and you know you you didn't follow the the crowd um we got punished for that. We got isolated. We got cut off from certain things. Um, it's all a power play, right? And it's 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 hard to say. Actually, I'm gonna risk being seen as mad. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna risk being seen as Delulu, and I'm gonna follow the inner knowing. And I'm gonna start to learn to trust this even more deeply. And again, this is what my episode is about: this inner knowing, this inner feeling, this self trust. Um, So, and it's, and it's also very, um, like I say, in receptivity, we started the day, we started today, I said a statement, a friend had put something on Instagram that said, allow the universe to heal you. And it had impacted me deeply because I thought, wow, that's just what today is about, right? Um, is to be in that 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 co-creation to know that if you can switch on this fifth holistic circuit of the brain and be at peace with what is and create good feelings this happy high feeling then this um you know uh healing process even becomes a quantum leap right you can allow whatever experience you are going through to to be the path to your healing rather than us going down this route, um, this conscious route, this clunky route of it needing to be a certain way, nothing needs to be a certain way. That's the creative wave of chaos is to just let go and to, yeah, like jump on that that surfboard and ride, ride, where, feel, feel the vulnerability of falling off and know that you won't, right? And if you do, you'll be okay. Um, so your evolution in consciousness, um, it won't be linear. It won't be logical. Um, it will be in this right hand side of the brain, but this right hand side of the brain is very inactive. Okay. So we need to wake it up. We need to know how to activate it. We need to reconnect the mind to the body. Um, and I feel like our future evolution is here in this right hand side of the brain and all of these ways that we can, um, awaken, you know, awaken our creative power. And all that is required to do that is to feel. So, you know, like I said, this is the good feelings, the bad feelings, the ugly feelings, because they're all vibrations, energy in motion. And we can transmute the bad feelings and we can turn the bad feelings into good feelings and we feel more of the good feelings. But it means we've got to feel, which means we need to slow down. It means we need to switch off more. It means we need to let go of the things that we death grip onto to keep us safe and secure. It means that we need to start with the simple things like 
the seven by seven method, carving in seven times a day, seven simple neurosomatic rituals that allow you to evolve your consciousness. Again, free app down in the comments, go grab that. I am so passionate about breath because breath is the gateway to this. Breath is the gateway to activating this fifth holistic circuit of your brain because your breath is actually, um, you know, it's your nervous system. So the minute that the, the breath shifts, the nervous system shifts. So if you can learn to be in conscious connection with your breath, slow it down, then you can be creating coherence really, really easily. You can also master expanding the capacity to hold feelings because to transmute feelings we have to feel feelings okay and what we what we what we can't do when we're um yeah we we've lost the ability to feel right we distract ourselves we go numb those feelings um but we've got to expand our capacity to hold those feelings and we can use the breath to do that we can use the breath to move through the discomfort just as with the sex magic we're using the breath to feel more of the, the good feelings, to expand the capacity to hold the good feelings so that we're create, circulating more of this energy, right? So we're expanding the capacity to hold, to feel, to allow, to transmute. And, you know, at the end of the day, you are just biology. I, I say this to my clients, like it can seem really complicated and emotional and quite dramatic, but we're just biology, right? Yes, we are these, these beautiful souls within the biology that we're wanting the soul to come through a little bit more, but ultimately we are in a physical vessel and that physical vessel is just biology, which is why biohacking, emotional biohacking is so powerful, learning these ways to hack your nervous system to override your fight and flight center, to stop living in the chemical fucking like bomb, like um, nuclear bomb that is going off in your body every day and causing you to basically die quicker. <laughs> we can use the breath. We can use the breath to create beautiful coherence and to create a different response in the moment to expand our capacity to hold feelings so that we can transmute them and hold more of the good sensations. Um, I like this analogy of breathing is the way to escape from a hole. <laughs> so if you imagine yourself in a hole right now, right, whatever situation it is that, um, you know, maybe, maybe doesn't feel good, maybe doesn't feel like your authentic expression, doesn't feel like it matches the feeling of who you are inside. And you can feel like you're in a hole, you can feel stuck, it can feel dark, it can feel impossible to climb out. You're looking up the walls and you're like, and I actually have to climb out, right? I have to claw my way up and it's hard and I just don't have the energy, I just don't have the motivation. And the thing is that your breath, you imagine like a, um, a helium balloon or a, um, uh, what are they called? Those things with the baskets and they're floating up, you know, uh, hot air balloon. When you start to breathe, you start to become lighter. And so connecting to your breath, beginning to breathe in a rhythm, even if it's just for seven minutes, is literally floating out of the hole. Um, using the breath consciously to shift your vibration is like growing fucking wings and flying out of the hole. Okay. Like I cannot say that with any more enthusiasm, like learning to master your breath is the most powerful, powerful, powerful tool to change everything in your reality really, really fast. And it's also um, a way that we can get over this primal death feeling right because again it's just the nervous system if the nervous system doesn't feel like you're going to die then your energetic expression is not you know a complete surviving death it is beginning to live right um it's beginning to live so i'm gonna check the old facebook if i can find my phone and see if there are any questions are there any questions from anybody who is here live in the room um, on this fifth holistic circuit of the brain. Let's have a look on Facebook, see if there's any questions there. No questions in that one. I'll go across here. Uh, have we got any questions on the other one? Oh, 
me. We've got some hearts. Hi. Hi, love. Uh, beautiful. Um, okay, beautiful. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a, a quick 15 minute break. And after the break, I'm going to be premiering my episode of A Baptism of Fire. Um, this one is. Um, this one has been hard to put together, put out. I definitely felt the fire of transformation. A baptism of fire came from the idea that your transformation, your step into the next octave of your life really is a fire. It's not comfortable. It does come from accepting with grace what you are experiencing in the present moment so that you can use what it illuminates to you to burn down all of these identities, you know, all of these expressions of you that are not true to you and you change, you know, you have an identity shift, your energetic, your energetic blueprint is different in this identity shift and you experience a different reality. Um, so I definitely was experiencing some discomfort about six months ago um, in my business that was actually making me feel like I wanted to walk away from my business some days. And it came from the desire to help more people. So I'd made a commitment at the beginning of this year that I wanted to help more people. I'd restructured my value offer. So I had made a lot available for free. Um, I had taken uh, a couple of my digital courses from, um, you know, one of them I'd put into really affordable uh, installments for people. One of them, I'd reduced the cost by about $2,000. Um, I'd really gone, I'd really gone out on a limb to help more people. And what happened was not what I expected to happen, actually. And you're going to see what did happen and the feelings that it created in me and how this is a, a prime example of how your experience in the now is nothing to do with the now and how it's a beautiful illumination of, of something that you're carrying and whatever you're carrying is blocking it's creating the separation from this beautiful unity consciousness from this place of you know if you want if you want to help people as a light leader then you actually step into divine service you step into divine will this is no longer about you and how you think that you should help people or what you want to do this is actually about what you're here for and it's your soul's purpose and it's that beautiful hologram on the inside of your star seed starting to roll out into manifestation and you've got to take the hands off the steering wheel for this you've got to allow and you've got to let go and this year I've let go of a considerable amount of things um and I said to my clients, you know, a couple of weeks ago, nobody talks about this, that these quantum leaps, they actually invite loss. They require you to let go. And that sometimes what you're letting go of is, has been part of your identity. But your, your identity has been founded in where you've been feeling unsafe and insecure and said from this beautiful reality of your ultimate infinite scale of creative power so you're going to see my own quantum leap and it really has opened up uh, a beautiful new level of my business and it is the embodiment as well of where i help my clients to take ownership um to find alignment and really step into leadership um by going through this discomfort uh by receiving it with grace and by receiving its gift and actually going forward with the wisdom that comes from these gifts as well. So I'm going to put on the, um, I'm going to put on our little advert while I go for a bathroom break because we've been here since 11am and I've only peed once. And uh, then I'll take you over to the premiere. Now, if you would like to watch the YouTube premiere. I'd love you to watch the YouTube premiere to give it some some traction on the algorithm. I'm going to put the link down in my Facebook uh, comments, um, and I'll put it here for those live in the room as well. Uh, but it will also be streaming as well. So let's cut over here to 
my beautiful oh just got the little notification from 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 youtube that it's coming it's coming okay right so we're gonna go over here over here share the audio we'll just have a little break if you want to take a little break go to the toilet get a drink get some tissues you might need them this episode is epic um Our little revolving advert on. If you are ready for transformation, if you are ready for that 2.0 version of yourself, creating this business that you are proud of in a positive way, that is creating the income, the impact and the influence that you want. The way to do that is what I call activating your miracle frequency. And your mi miracle frequency is where you are just a bundle of those higher frequency emotions every single day. You are in a higher consciousness. You have stepped away from the victim consciousness to unlock this way of living your life where things happen for you. Synchronicities and miracles are part of your status quo. You are attracting what you want to you with ease and you are in this place of freedom where you get to create what you want every day without those limiting emotions. I learned once from a TED talk this idea that emotions aren't just this thing in your mind like a bank that they're stored in there that they're just sat in there and then in the moment your brain taps into this little emotion bank and takes one out and then says here you go this is how you should react emotions are created completely from scratch from scratch in the moment you are in the experience they are created from the belief system that you have so if you can change your belief belief systems then in the moment when your mind, when reaches, your mind back reaches back into, into those, experiences, those experiences there will be no, will be no negative emotions negative that it emotions latches, that onto, it latches onto, onto to divert, to divert from, an from an experience that aligns with, that your, aligns truth. with your truth the emotion, the emotion will be created, will be in, the created in the moment of joy of excitement, joy, excitement. Something that takes something you that forward, takes you something, something that gets you into gets powerful, powerful action, action, something that allows you that to allows take risks and, and go big, get, get super, visible, super visible, use your voice, use your scream, voice. scream rooftops. from rooftops, what it is that you, believe, is that you believe can change the, can change the world. world. So work out that truth, connect, with yourself. connect with yourself, learn about learn yourself, about cut yourself. everything, cut out, everything that out that is misaligned to you, start healing those limiting emotions and have the courage to step into your power. We all have a story, my story created the blueprint that I have to help you because I know how these emotions 
emotions can limit what you want in your life. But if you're like me and you have that soul goal to make a difference and do it in a way where you are wealthy and able to experience an abundance in your own life, give your children the most amazing experiences, give to projects, give to charities, create foundations. I am here to show you a way forward where you can have it all and it can be easy. It just takes courage. Courage is the line between those lower frequency emotions and those higher frequency emotions. And in those higher frequency emotions, if we can live through those emotions, joy, unlimited love, enlightenment every single day because we have resolved those emotions of the past. We get to have those emotions guide our interpretation of the reality that we have and guide those big life decisions that we make and guide how we take action on these powerful strategies that are given to us in our business to create the results that we want. We activate your miracle frequency in such an easy way. I have created Created I have created seven, seven simple seven-minute seven neurosomatic minute rituals, rituals that tap that into the ancient, the ancient wisdom of your body of your and, body. Tap, and into tap into how we can how work we can with your subconscious, work subconscious mind, mind to create to new create empowering, empowering belief systems, belief systems a, new level, a new level of energy, of energy and, vibration. and vibration. And all you have and to do have is to use these seven simple seven-minute seven seven neurosomatic rituals seven times a day. I have created a free app where you get to tap in to these amazing Simple, simple, powerful rituals, powerful rituals. And, at and at the same time, connect with a community, with a community, of, people community of people who are on the same journey as you, journey as you seeking what seeking I call what awakened, awakened wealth, wealth, where you are creating, you are creating money, money in a way in that a way aligns, to, aligns, aligns to your aligns joy, to your joy and, and passion and desire and for desire impact and freedom. And freedom. Freedom. And where you are supported with accountability, tap, tap in, in seven times a day times to, yourself, a day to yourself, yourself to connect with, to your, connect truth with your truth and raise your vibration. And raise your vibration. A client came a client to me once came and, once and I offered her offered this her suggestion, this suggestion of, the of the seven by seven method, by seven method. Just, sitting just sitting with herself, creating space, creating in, her creating space in her mind every single day. And she said, Claire, I just, I just can't let go of the to-do list. I just can't let go of the thoughts that go around my head. And I said to her, are those thoughts creating the reality that you want? Are you you making the income from the action that that you're taking taking and she said said, no no are you making the impact that you want want from the action that you're taking taking? no no do you have the influence influence from from that procrastination that 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 you're feeling and that that self-sabotage that is happening from these thoughts is filling up your head and filling up that space and she said no i said so what do you trust more do you trust those thoughts Spiraling constantly, spiraling constantly, filling your head filling with your head rubbish, rubbish, leading to action leading that to is not action, powerful, not powerful leading, to leading to inaction, or do you trust sitting, trust sitting in the space and creating the vibration of everything that you want so that everything that you want starts attracting to you? you have, have that inspired, inspired action, action come, through come through from a place of truth, place of truth from a place of the truth of you, so that your business is a radical expression of who you are and how you want to make a difference in the world. And she said, Oh my God. I trust the space. This client went this client on went to earn significant, to earn significant amounts, amounts in her business, in her business. And, I'm and I'm inviting you to do the same too. The same too. If every single if thought, every single thought has, an has an energetic equivalent, equivalent. if that energy that is what energy is creating what is your creating reality, reality because, because everything in your reality, reality is a mirror to who you are energetically, what do you trust do you more trust to create more to what you want? Jump into Jump the link into below, the link below and, and access my access amazing my Awakened Wealth, Wealth community. community. Download, Download the app that is going to help you to tap into, to into those neurosomatic rituals, rituals every, single every single day. And also and tap into, also tap other, into resources other resources to grow to your grow income, your income, grow your impact and grow your influence. And thank you for listening to this video. I will see you right over there soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. There we go. So what we're going to do now, what we're going to do now is head over to YouTube for the premiere of A Baptism of Fire, (gasps) episode five. Ray, when are you with me? This is like super terrifying. Uh, We're going to share the screen. I'm going to go to, oh, no, it's not there. Give me a second. YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Make sure I'm logged in. I am logged in. My videos. The premiere. 
here. Amazing. Where are we? We go back over here. Oh my goodness. Got the sound. Here we go, people. Here we go. Get the screen out a little bit bigger. Give me a second. I will make this work. <laughs> Raywin's here. She's excited. Ah, here we go. <clears throat> oh my goodness me. My name is Claire Williamson and this is my episode of A Baptism of Fire. Welcome to my documentary, A Baptism of Fire. There is an ancient principle that to move from one octave of your life to another octave, certain things have to happen. If you think about an octave in music, each octave plays at a completely different sound, at a completely different frequency. And effectively, what we are doing as we move through these certain things is ascending in consciousness, changing in frequency. If you really want to create an entirely different experience of life, you have to vibrate at an entirely different frequency. And there are challenges, rites of passage that are gonna come with this shift. For the shaman, this would have been their journey to overcome fear, to awaken their lion's heart, to become fearless so that they could truly step into dynamic receptivity with spirit, develop true obedience to divine will and be in response for the betterment of humanity. In Atlantis, the warriors would travel to different cities to learn to go through certain emotions so that they could become stronger. And they would spend as much time as they needed in the city to go through the challenges, to be able to overcome this emotion. In the rainforest, we see the young sent out into the forest to learn to fare on their own, learn to eat from the forest, work in symbiosis with the forest and bring that wisdom back to their tribe. In this episode of A Baptism of Fire, I want to share with you the challenge that I went through. 
as I took my beautiful three clients to best-selling authors to a massive step up in their authority and light leadership. Behind my smiles and celebrations as they continued to win, something very big was happening on a personal level. But first, let's cut to our intro. My name is Claire Williamson, AKA the Millionaire Shower Woman. I am the author of Awaken Your Miracle Frequency. It is easier than you think to have it all. I had this crazy idea of profiling the journeys of three of my clients who are also publishing their books as part of my program, The Unleashed Awakened Wealth Mastermind. When I published my book, I went through what I can only describe as a ritual of initiation to playing bigger in this way. And I realized something powerful. This is the ritual of initiation to a tidal wave of sales and opportunities. You have to step into a fire that changes every level of your being and burns your old patterns, default expectations, and all of your programmed judgments and assumptions to the ground, just like a baptism of fire. maybe seven or eight years old and watching my dad in the kitchen, severely stressed. We lived in a big house. I went to a private school. On the surface, we appeared to have it all within the four walls of the house. Things looked very different. My mum has struggled with mental illness since I was, possibly since I was born and I think my dad was struggling to hold on to this wealth that he had created, this successful business that he had made. I had this memory come back of him standing in the kitchen and I was standing behind him watching him and this intense feeling of, it's okay dad, I can take this from you, I can, I can wear this burden, don't cry dad everything's going to be okay. And what I realized this year was that energetically, I took this bag of burdens from my dad and I placed it across my own shoulders. When you lead a light business, a heart centered business, a business driven by your immense desire to make a difference in the world, to to help people. It is really easy to always want to go the extra mile to do that. I made a lot of money very fast in my business by selling very high ticket programs. And what I began to realize as I pivoted my business and I wanted to help more people was that this high ticket made what I did that was so incredibly powerful and was making such a difference to people completely inaccessible to most and I wanted to change that. I wanted everybody to be able to experience the kind of wins that you have seen Carmen, Judith, Vicky take. And so I made the decision to change up my value ladder, to offer way more in installments and to also open the first phase of my Awakened Wealth Blueprint absolutely free. I also made a substantial investment into bringing a publishing house 
into my company so that I could begin to publish authors as part of this blueprint because of the power of a book to put you in front of your ideal clients and the power of the system that I've created behind the book to close those ideal clients in as little as five days. As the book project rolled along and Vicky, Carmen, Judith began to write their chapters, began to create this system, was a bunch of people that I had really tried to help by offering really low installments, really extended plans, start to skip out on their payments. Payments. Come up for me, please, because this is obviously bothering me. It's, it's really making me feel anxious, like fully chest heart pounding. I can feel almost like a little bit <clears throat> childlike, a little bit like I want to kick all my toys out of the pram type feeling that, but I don't know if it's just a, it's unfair or whether it's, whether it's deeper than that in maybe some area of like my self-worth. I can't get to it. It's, it's interesting. It's like I, I lifted off that idea that I carry their burdens and now I feel more in a neutral place of, you know, you're investing something, just pay your bill. Yeah. I keep getting shown as well. Like I got a speedy ticket yesterday. Or didn't get it yesterday. I got it on Eden's birthday. I was rushing home for a party and clearly got pipped by her. And I thought to myself, another bill, I'll just pay that. It's a pain in the ass. It's not, you know, it's like, oopsie. There's not a nice feeling getting caught speeding, but I will always pay my bills, you know? And, and maybe, okay. Oh, Georgie, what is it? It's really getting to me, eh? Was there a time that you, you couldn't pay your bills and you, you've done it to oh, someone else? always my entire life. Yeah, like, so maybe, maybe it's that guilt that you've yeah. done it to someone else? In there somewhere you need to get rid of the guilt? Do I feel guilty that I can't get them to switch? I don't think I feel guilty that I didn't pay things in the past because ultimately I always did pay them. Maybe that's it. Like even in the darkest of times, like even if it was on a deferred payment installment or through credit debt or like I always paid. And we have been to the, you know, well, we lost our home for God's sake. Like. Was it because these people, they're actually big, big energy leakers? Because if you're, you want to help as many people as possible. It feels like a massive energy leak. Yeah, but you can't help everyone because they ultimately have to help themselves, don't they? Mm. Being able to switch off that emotion of, yeah, like it's down to them and not nothing in the course and nothing in the program is, it's them, not you. Like if they actually went through it, like you said, it's half the people you've seen, they're actually using your content. And I think that's probably where it's all. Mm, that's why I don't think it's a self-worth piece, because I think I've, I've gone over that hurdle. Mm, OK, so I'm really going to have to sit with this, eh? Because it's like, I feel like it's part, it's, it's part of the business, too. It's like, I don't want to, I don't want to step into this place where I'm cold. Maybe there's an element of yeah, but you've always wanted to help people are you then going again going back on that pledge to just help people but it's like it's creating an energetic block it's like i can feel the lack of flow and i know the flow is just so important it says the truth and your authentic truth which isn't people that aren't ready is it is people that are ready to okay so you're getting somewhere there because that's just made it go off again and that's what's happening in these people's, you know, they're, I think they're reaching something in themselves and it's a block and okay. So it's not that they're unwilling to go over it, it's that they're throwing it back at me. That's what's coming up now. It's the feeling of when they hit that wall, instead of seeing it as part of the journey, going through it, doing the work, keeping paying, they're like, here you are, chucking it, like, this is... Not immediately, obviously, they are misaligned or just don't want to do it or whatever. And, and then the minute we say, no, you have to pay, then they chuck it. So it's like... Yeah, and that's the, the piece, isn't it? Like, 
how do you get people who want to avoid these feelings past that point to be like oh, actually yes this is a benefit and that's what the coaching is in the course is isn't it it's bringing all those things up to the surface that people don't want to deal with but they have to deal with but it's getting ne- across feelings the blessing and the curse in your business in your life as you've seen with vicky carmen and judith this journey of progress brought up a lot of feelings and a lot of feelings that were not really to do with the present moment or the present challenge that you're going through it's just that something about what you're going through triggers old feelings from the past the thing about your feelings is that they define who you are and who you are defines how you show up the decisions that you make if you are truly a light leader and you do want to go out and change the world you have to get to grip with the feelings that you're experiencing in the moment you have to allow them however sick scared insecure they make you feel this beautiful process of allowing emotions to rise allowing yourself to be the atlantean that walks into that city to go through the journey of facing that emotion learning to be okay through that emotion and, and, and learning that emotions lesson allows you to become neutral to that emotion. So that whatever's showing up in your, your reality doesn't trigger old feelings from the past. Because if you are living through these old feelings of the past, you're basically just recreating the past in the present moment and is that the light leadership that you want? Do you want to be able to, to go out there and shine a torch down onto a path for people to follow? Or do you want to become a lighthouse? Okay, so it is coming, I'm getting like a buzzing. It's like a buzzing. It is related to how they, the carrying the burdens thing. Interesting, it's almost like, well, if I go to them and say, fuck it, then fuck off. It's like, I'm just dropping them even, I don't know. So at the end of the day as well, it's, it's a two-way relationship. It's not you just carry the burden. They also have to commit. And once they've commit the finance, then they get the person. That's right. That's really powerful what you just said there. Because that's exactly it. It's like, even though it's not about me carrying their burdens, I am their coach. But they have to commit. Like, they have to take action. They have to not just give up. Something about the giving up, eh? The giving up and and then the narcissism around it, like the, it's your fault. You know, it's like, you seemed like good energy and now you're a horrible person. I thought, no, I'm just, I was trying to help you and you came to me. I think I'm in crisis because it's like, actually they are the people that need the help. They all my brother, a little bit, but then I'll go broke if I try to help. If that's what you get when you try to help them. You know, it's like, I can't run a business where people don't pay. And I do give so much out. I mean, I do give such a lot for free. Like I was thinking about my time that I give, you know, even to the accelerators on top of what they get, you know, extra sessions, stuff through the post and then all the training that I do and all the emails I say, there's, there's gifts in all of them. And it's like, but if somebody's looking at something and they've got this thing inside that just tells them that they're a victim to the world and nothing's going to change and they're waiting oh the the silver spoon pipe to them and no no one no one even said thank you like oh thanks for offering or nobody inquired is there an issue they just came at me angry like you said that there would be a and i was like wow like there's also like we had that lady come in to the accelerator and she gave us a link to her podcast that didn't work and i just went back to her and said Oh, I just checking in. The link doesn't work because it's asking for emails and we've got to subscribe. It's like, where's the free link? And then she sent it back. People just want to hear what they want to hear half the time. That's very true. And that's... Look how grown up she looks. Oh, hey. Have a nice day. A trip. Oh, a trip. Otani Wainuku. It's not Otani Wainuku. Otani Wainuku. 
<laughs> if a girl listen to a teacher or anything that you're not supposed to. Thank you. Thank you. Just need to. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Jay's hair. <laughs> I love it. Go and sort your round teeth in your hair. Who's that? It's Georgie. Oh. Mm. Wow. Okay. So to go forward, because we can't just like, that's the energy leak as well, isn't it? Just giving, 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 giving. Try, oh, sorry. He's trying to get this perfect. And, and then people are just. So I think you just said it before. They'll hear what they want to hear and they'll see what they want. So you can say anything like part of the time and they come to you, you know, I was like, yeah, but there was a sentence around that as well. <laughs> it was like there was before and after that piece. And you're just like, but well, they say you can lead the horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Like that's basically the oldest saying <laughs> that there is. And I think people then when they're angry, it's easier to take it out via email, isn't it? Because it's not personal. Whereas I think if you got face to face with them, I know it's hard. Or if Joe or I got face with it, then it's very hard to then not pay. I've watched other coaches do it. I don't know how they're getting people to pay money. Uh, maybe they just have a huge churn. <laughs> but there were 60 people that signed up to the book, even though they got to the page and there wasn't a coupon code. They paid for the book. I feel like it's a business thing, like it's a branding thing, it's a, a company energy thing, it's like making it a nice place for you, making it a nice place for me, having good clients, because there's a massive difference. There's this experience in the accelerator where it's just epic, right? And then there's this shit underneath and it's like, I'd give it up, I'd give it away. I'd walk away from my business some days because of it. It feels that yucky. I think something that I'm, I'm struggling to compartmentalize is that I was just as a child put in a lot of situations I should never have been put into and growing up I've carried this feeling like you know I just got I got it wrong all the time and I made bad decisions and whereas revisiting some of these memories it's like I would never put my child in that situation why was I on my own why was I why was I not with my parents you know all of these questions and I I, can't, I don't blame my mum and dad because they just weren't they weren't in a place to but I've carried this belief for 40 years that in all of these different places I just got it wrong and it's starting to dawn on me it's, and this is the piece that I'm working with in my own inner work at the moment is that feeling of innocence and purity On November 10th, 2021, I accidentally took my dog's life. This has been a journey of deep grief across the last couple of years. But at the beginning of this year, 2023, I really thought I had closed circle on. I really felt like I'd come to some pace of place of peace, some place of forgiveness, but as the months rolled on, I found the grief getting worse and worse. <laughs> I wish I could help you. But do you think you need to forgive yourself though? I realised that I didn't feel that innocence and purity, like there's still a level of like, um, I took his life for you know it's... I think I had a breakthrough last night because in my visions like he's always been just away you know like whereas last night he came and he rolled that's okay you go away how I please how I please just looking back to okay I think if you think about it in what you teach others, it's like the message and the learning and you think you, time is a healer and with everything you've written and going through your book, like, you know, maybe it was Benny's time to leave this universe to teach you and... I just feel like he waited in that car and I know, I, I even know, like, that he He's a dog, and he probably doesn't even think about those things, but 
and maybe it does trigger this whole piece of like was that what I was doing when I was a kid was just like waiting for somebody to come back like I know like there's something there's something that's and it's being rooted up by these people and I can't I can't get my fingers on what it is but just sit with it and just don't force it just I hate, you know, the I hate the grief I hate I hate missing him He's always with you. <laughs> he is always with me. Like, and I get what you say. Like, it's a star-crossed path. Like, I trust that, and I trust I trust it with Benson too. But some days it just doesn't make any easier that there's like a you know mountain-sized horse missing from my life. And his his love like was unconditional. I know I know that, but did I break some? piece of trust because I didn't go to him I didn't go to him I didn't even think to go to him <laughs> and I don't know why like I don't know why I didn't know he was in that car but as you've said to me the why questions are the ones that are the hardest the why questions are never gonna give you the peace that no. you yeah, the why questions make us sad because <laughs> grieving is part of life and it just means that you loved someone or something and unfortunately that's the price of love sometimes isn't it grief sometimes you just need to cry I, I know that there's some connection between it feels like it's something to do with love like it seemed like such a profound awakening for me that, wow, you know, love can be unconditional. You can just be an innocent child, you know, having your own children and realizing they just, there's not, there's, they just don't know. And then I have struggled in the last year to really remember and I guess process all of the times, like all of the things where it was like, no wonder I carried a burden, you know? of because I felt like it was I was being asked to be an adult in a child's body you know and it's affecting how I'm seeing people it's affecting how much I'm giving and willing you know to be taken advantage of right it's like they say people it's it should be a black and white you bought something pay for it <laughs> whereas it hasn't been it's not how I want to go forward and I have to draw some sort of line under somewhere because the energy leak is just huge. Unconditional love and light leadership. What can those two things have to do with each other? How might your inability to unconditionally love yourself be blocking unlimited ab abundance in your life? At the beginning of this year, I, I channeled a message from Spirit that a miracle would be brought into my life. I have to be honest that immediately my mind went to material abundance. Would this be the breakthrough, the break free to that million dollar line? I had no idea that the miracle would be Lots. Huge lots. As I processed what I was going through at this time that you're watching in the documentary, I took a two full week social media blackout. I took myself off, away, and cut off all of the crutches to numb how I was feeling. When you run a business from your phone, it means that your phone is at the end of your arm constantly. And I got into this pattern of, of distraction. I learned a lot about myself in those two weeks. And on the last day of my blackout, I went down onto the sand
I looked out onto the waves. <laughs> Said out loud to Benny, my dog. <laughs> I'm letting you go. I'm letting you go now. And as I looked down onto the sand by my feet, as I said this, this beautiful shell that appeared in the waves was one of those shells that the middle had washed away. It was just an outline of a shell. And I picked up this shell and I looked at it and I had a profound message from it. <laughs> that if we're really to become that lighthouse, we actually have to become a transparent window for divine to shine through. <sighs> we have to let go of everything that is clinging us to the past, that even about anything at all. And we have to become unconditional love. We have to become the ability to look on every single moment as a beautiful gift. And to do that, we have to free all of the parts of ourselves into love. All of the parts that make us feel insecure. All of the parts that make us feel ugly. All of the parts that made us believe we did something wrong. All of the parts that have made us feel unlovable. You have to free all of them into love. And when you begin to free all of them into love, you begin to bring all of yourself into every single moment of your life and you become love. You become pure love. You become the highest frequency of love. And that's what happened <laughs> from that point. I felt so whole, so unbelievably whole and magic started to appear in my life. People, experiences. The last couple of months have been absolutely wild. The proof that you can magnetize anything that you want into your reality, anything. Everything that you set your mind to in intention, you merely have to set your mind to it intentionally, intentionally and to that intention because it will manifest. It will manifest. It manifests from you. You are God. And if you are a light leader, that comes with big responsibility. My most recent journey has really been learning how to step into that dynamic receptivity with divine will. If I am that transparent window for divine to shine through, then what is my purpose? What am I here for? It's not the material things that I think it was. Big house, the flashy travel, even the financial freedom, none of it feels important anymore. What feels important is to keep stepping forward as a loving leader, as a woman who embodies her divine feminine power, but also her beautiful, masculine power in balance in divine union to be able to stand up for what I believe in not be afraid and to always trust that everything is happening perfectly in the perfect moment so that I can use my voice so that I can have radical expression so that creative expression can be my way forward so that my business matches who I am on the inside, everything that I love, and I can bring that frequency into my world in every single moment, because I know that beyond anything else, frequency will be what shifts the planet to more abundance. Every single one of us learning how to sit in the uncomfortable feelings that we have, embrace the mystery of this life, past lives, and all of the clutter that it is placing in that window frame so that you can release it so that you can
take the wisdom from your wounds and light a path for others to follow. Because like you said, it's your value and you're like you said, you're feeling that burden, but it's not your burden and it wasn't your burden as a child. I do intellectually know that. I just feel like I I still feel like I'm carrying it. I feel like I don't, well, I I don't know. We're stepping up, aren't we, again in the business on a fucking huge level. But obviously I saw how I've been picky and not pitching to people and not pulling them across the line because I've been afraid of them not paying. And that's not, I mean, that's ridiculous. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's finding the innocence of a, you know how my kids will just look at anyone and they will trust them. I feel like I lost that part of my soul a really long time ago. Yeah. I think I'm getting somewhere now and I don't trust myself either still I don't think because of Benson and again it comes down to pure there's there's there was nothing intentional at all you know it was just an innocent mistake it just was a fatal mistake it was just a you know and again I was in a situation I shouldn't have been I put myself in it tired not asking for help whatever yeah and i see i would never happen. have used my voice and that's the thing like that's been a big breakthrough as i will say now i need help definitely but you do and you beat yourself up around it because like you said it's, it's just want them to think you will always be there for them you haven't had that to you so you just got to be kind to yourself yeah, it's just like, interesting when I had that breakthrough last night and it was like you are innocent and it was mirrored and it sounds strange but I he, he visits me most nights and he never comes to me he always is at the end of the driveway or part way down the field and he just looks and he's always dashed off and then last night you know how they do they come and roll and like had his big jowly face in my face and nudged up and and i think that's what's happening in real life is i'm i'm getting these people that are just mirroring an energy from me of something that around I think if I can shift, they will shift, actually. I do. I believe that. <laughs> and that the processes won't even matter. It'll be just like, it'll be just a different reality because something in here still needs to move into a place of something around the innocence and trust. And it's something around like taking things as they are rather than with that burden i'm gonna i'm gonna um feel into it thank you right. who, who knew fucking payments could take you down such a rabbit hole of fucking trauma <laughs> and loss <laughs> and grief and missing your dog <laughs> i get tricked at the most random things and i think that's what it is isn't it because it's that's that's teaching us something and it's coming up for something like Bits is still here, Skylar's bits. I know. I know. We, think, we think that Benny's come back as Sky because she does the weirdest things that he used to do, like sit in the middle of our road and trust. In Carmen's episode, you saw her journey to trusting that spirit has her back. Ultimately, the next level of your soul advancement, what I call the soul pilgrimage, is to understand that spirit is not outside of yourself. You have to learn to trust yourself. And this began the most beautiful journey, very recent journey of really exploring this within myself and coming to this place of understanding that we all have an unlimited source of creative power that actually can be quite scary. That maybe somewhere within ourselves, we don't, we don't trust the responsibility of this power and this just matches the reflection in our external reality. We think that we don't trust others, but actually we don't trust ourselves. If you're in a place anywhere 
you are ready to take your light leadership to a galactic level of success, but also alignment, feelings of bliss, creative expression like you have never had it before, doing things in your business that light you up so much every day that your business begins to feel orgasmic. The next step in your soul pilgrimage is to trust yourself. And at this point in this beautiful documentary, as you have now seen the journeys, the stories of Carmen, Vicky, Judith unfold, as my own story has been laid bare for you today, before we now start to bring this series to a close where you will see the wins, the transformation, the changes that happened with my clients, Vicky Carmen and Judith, because they chose to take the journey of publishing a book that, like I say at the beginning of this documentary, puts you into a ritual of initiation for the sales and opportunities that you want, because you have to face yourself, because you have to sit in the discomfort of what you feel, because there's no way out when you sign your signature on that line of publishing, when you've made your investment, the only way out is through. The next step in your soul pilgrimage, the next part of your ritual of initiation is to trust yourself. If you would like to take that journey, there is a link down in the description of this video below where you can book a call to talk to me, to share your story with me, to help me to see the light leadership that you want, the lighthouse that you want to become, and for me to help you to see some of the blocks that perhaps you don't, that really are blocking this radical expression, this full light. I hope that you have enjoyed this episode of A Baptism of Fire, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, thank you, Raywin. Raywin's just said, well done, that was outstanding. Um, yeah, I mean, when you are a leader and when, you know, you have clients and, you know, you're taking them on their journeys and it's really hard to admit that you're going through things in the background, but I think why I wanted to share that episode was to demonstrate just how much is unconscious and that is at whatever level that you're at right you know I where am I seven years into my business double that in personal development you know three to four years into this spiritual awakening I put a, a funny reel up the other day about you know um this journey with your spiritual awakening you know you you go through these phases of thinking that you've you know you awaken and it's a shock you spat out or you spit yourself out of the matrix and you start living in this world where you're like how the fuck didn't I see all this before and then you can't unsee it and then you sort of start to get a little bit comfortable with this dynamic receptivity right and you feel like you're working in partnership with spirit and then you know then spirit pulls one out of the box and you're like holy shit where did that come from but it is all working for you it is all working for you and it is always working for you and the message in that um documentary is to really you know if you're at a level in your soul business where you do want to take your influence your impact your income to a galactic level, I'm talking the million dollars, it has to be now a journey of self-trust. It has to be this um, elimination of separation. It has to be the step into knowing that you are God, spirit is within, and it is the ability to let go of, like allow your life to fall away, allow everything that gives you safety and security to fall away, right? And that that takes a lot of uncovering 
your fears. It will be a journey of seeing that a lot of them and a lot of your, even your programming, even your um, unconscious blocks, like a big chunk of them won't even be yours. They'll be collective, right? And it's not until you really start to get into this stuff that you start to see where you're just holding on to something that actually creates a feeling in the moment that blocks you, that will stop you stepping out, that will stop you stepping up, that will stop you saying yes. And everything that is showing up in your reality is showing up on purpose for you to step up, for you to step out, and for you to say yes. And we have to get to this place of of surrender. Um, so Raywin's saying, uh, so Lisa says, spot on, exact, absolutely just that. I got this in my challenge message. I told you, trusting myself and others while I love myself and others unconditionally. Yeah, like I think immediately the lens goes out, doesn't it? And you say, oh, it's them, right? It, it's them I, I don't trust. It's, it's um, the situation that is making me feel uncomfortable. But we've got to realize that everything is a mirror. It is a hall of mirrors. It's all coming from you. So if you don't trust them, if some mirror is making you feel insecure, we have got to come in. And we have got to say, actually, no, this is within me. This is radical responsibility, radical responsibility of there is something within me that I am ready to shift. Um, Raywan says, I've watched all the episodes and I've cried in them all. Lol. <laughs> yeah, me too. If you have missed any of the episodes, I am going to be replaying um, episode four and episode three. Um we're going to have a bit of, sh of a shift in the schedule <laughs> because we're riding a creative wave of chaos. I'm going to invite anybody at this point watching on the live stream, I'm seeing that number cre creep up, that this is an open space. If you want to come into this live stream and you want to talk to me, you want to share with me, you want to be coached by me, you absolutely can. There is a live stream restream link. You can jump into this live room. You can share how you feel, what's going on. Um, and also you can get some support if you want some support. Lisa says, awesome. Um, I would like to take a moment to, to talk about um, Pulse. So all the way through this event, you have been seeing this beautiful advert for um, an event that's taking place. This event is called Pulse, and this event is taking place in Costa Rica. And my intention with this event is to deeply re reconnect you to the sacred current that runs through all of us, that it can be really hard to fully um, embrace. Now, what happens when you go into an immersion like this is there is only you, there is only me, there is only the group, and there is only spirit. And what I've seen happen both in my online and offline events, so specifically in Mexico in January, where we went through a three-day immersion, the quantum leaps are indescribable. You know, we get to be together for three to five days. Um, Costa Rica is five days. And we get to we get to get into your body, right? Because we can't do that in a in an online program. Well, we do do that in a, in a I mean, Raywin, we do do that in, a, in an online program, right? But this takes it to another level. You know, it really takes you to another level. We go into experiences, activations, ceremony that unlocks whatever the hell it is trapped in your body that is keeping you playing small, that is stopping you saying yes, that is stopping your radical expression, that is squashing who you are and and is absolutely blocking your massive potential, your divine will. We're going to take you to such a deep level of trust, which means we're going to take you to a deep level of vulnerability. You are not going to feel comfortable in these five days. But in you not feeling comfortable and in you having nowhere to run to or distract or numb or escape, your entire fucking life is going to change. Raywin's manifesting her way there, right? You have to be there. You absolutely have to be there. It is going to be the most beautiful experience. 
it is going to be, like I say, life-changing. The place that we're going to, Posada Natura, um, was gifted to me in a new moon vision. So I had I, I, I ceremony with the moon every single lunar cycle. In fact, I work with the moon every single lunar cycle. And I teach you how you can do this in my Quantum Leap portal. So if you go down into the comments, there is a link to my app the Awakened Wealth app. You can upgrade to the portal through there and um, you can see how I work with the moon because it's really powerful. And so every single new moon, I'm really asking for uh, intention, vision, insight. And I'm usually bringing it through from the previous lunar cycle, right, of what I've experienced experience these lessons this and so I was in visualization and I was being guided by a cool guy called Yogi Brian I don't know if you've discovered him on, on Spotify and in Instagram he's he's wild and anyway I I I asked my higher self to come to me and I saw my higher self and I start to walk towards my higher self and as I'm walking towards my higher self I got shot it felt like I well now, since a vision that's come through in the last couple of days, I'm wondering if I wasn't shot and, and whether I was stabbed because something came up and through. But I felt this, this like penetrated me through my heart. Boom, I'm down, I'm dying, and I'm looking up at my higher self and I'm saying, why am I dying? And she says, I say, because you weren't living. And as I can feel like the life slipping away from me and it was so interesting because I had two near death experiences this year as well. So, you know, this whole overcoming fear of death thing was very uh, ripe in my in my mind um, and feeling mortality, you know, feeling mortality, realizing that there was more of life I wanted to live into and I wanted desperately to live into it as my authentic expression, as all of me. And I said, show me, show me where I am meant to be living. And she took me on this beautiful like tour of possibility. And part of the possibility was an envelope on a table. And on this table, it says your next retreat destination is Costa Rica in, and then it just said N-A-R-A. And so I came out of this vision. I was like, N-A-R-A, Costa Rica. Oh my God. Like, whoa, okay. I'm, I'm, Wow. So I start to look for towns in Costa Rica and there's two that start with N-A-R-A -A. and one was just like, it was, you know, it didn't seem like my kind of place. The other was smack bang wallop in the middle of a, of a rainforest. I was like, we're onto something here. I, was, I searched retreat venues in Naranja, which is the place in Costa Rica and one pops up, one. So I go onto their website and I'm looking at their, um, you know, their, their offerings and their venue and the packages. And this video pops up and this video says, um, you know, experience Pasada Natura. And so I click through to YouTube and I'm watching this video and I realize within about 30 seconds that this video was a video that I'd clipped from in 2020, a mind movie where I, in 2020, I decided that I wanted to, um, lead retreats and so I just got onto YouTube and and found videos that I resonated with and I'd clipped this 30 40 seconds out of this video and I'd put it in my mind movie and I'd watched that mind movie every day since and well for about two years I'd watched it every single day and it just dawned on me I was like holy shit this is this is the place in my mind movie talk about manifestation talk about things finding you talking about divine will talking about divine fucking destiny. And I knew, I knew I had to put this event on. I knew I had to put this event on. I even canceled an event that was planned for September because I didn't feel like this about it. I didn't feel like this about it. This felt divinely guided. It felt like it, it is meant to be. And so we have five days booked in, um, in Costa Rica. The dates have just moved. It was meant to be the 14th, but it's now going to be the 17th I believe and you it's all everything included you know the space that you can see I'm going to show the advert in just a moment um the space the food uh the experiences anything that we tag on top of that including you know beautiful experiences on the beach um the medicine if there, there is a medicine temple and the medicine temple is 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 led by women women shamans which just lights the fuck up in me. You know, it's like this thing is just divinely written. So we're going to have five days in Costa Rica together. 
and I promise you it's going to change taken this sacred pulse within you and your entire reality is going to manifest out of that I promise you everything will change I'm interviewing you uh, Judith Yunk yeah I'm sorry, Judith. I need to learn German. My client, Judith, my beautiful client, Judith, who recently finished up in my program. She's been with me for nearly three years. Um, and, you know, the experience in Mexico really has changed her entire business because it unlocked something in her. It unlocked something in her and it re released something deep in her. And everything has continued to evolve from there. I'm going to be talking to her later about that. I'm going to be asking the question, what happened in Mexico? Because it's like, what happened in band camp? What's that? What's that film? Um, what happens in band camp stays in band camp. What happens in fight camp stay? Oh fuck knows. The film anyway. Like I'm gonna get her to share and 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 talk about it because if you haven't experienced retreats, then you have to know how this. Uh, it's like being in a petri dish, right? It's like the most mind blowing expansion and quantum leaps. If you have been in retreats, then you know this already. You know the power of this. But maybe you've done business retreats. I want you to experience a transformational retreat and actually guarantee that your business will shift from this. And so for two days, I'm going to be offering a priority access, priority um, early bird entry to this retreat. You have a $500 discount on that priority access and um, early bird price if you have been. So you're going to be, be, be able to save, you know, a lot of money and to get on the list to receive the details as soon as I launch them and like I say this price will be available for two days and then it's going to be going up um not to full price but it's going to be going up so if you're feeling the you're feeling it right now right you're feeling it Raywin's feeling it I really want you to um go down into the comments click the little wait list button and put your name in it it does not mean that you're signing up. It does not mean that you're obligated. And it does absolutely mean that you can ignore me if you want to when I when I send the information. But I'm just going to be sending the information. What have you got to lose? Put your name on the wait list. Let me know that you are curious about this event. And I also want you to know that this event is actually free in my high higher level programs. So in the elite level of my mastermind and in my elite one-to-one, -one, you're getting that for free. So if you are really feeling like you're resonating with me right now and what I've talked about today, then I would love for you to book a call and chat to me and we'll see, you know, whether what I do can help you get to your next octave. Um, if you're like, oh, well, you're kind of resonating with me, but I don't really know what you do. I want you to come back to the replay of this event and watch the second hour because I did a masterclass at 12 p.m. that talks into my Awakened Wealth Blueprint. So the nine steps that I'm taking my clients through, clients like Raywin, um, shared just before that the shift was within one week and she was part of a group that came from the last mystery school who all experienced income shifts, most of them within uh, four to six weeks and one of them within eight weeks. So like if you're looking for that shift, I can create that shift and experience of Costa Rica as well for free if you step into one of those higher level programs or you can just invest in the retreat and get that beautiful priority access early bird offer. So um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to wet your appetite and share this beautiful I'm going to hope that there isn't a um an echo on it because somebody reported an echo just before but we'll give it a little try we'll just go across and so you can see this beautiful Posada Natura
So you might feel that you are living your soul's purpose right now. You might feel like you have expression. You might feel like you are aligned. But I want you to be open to the possibility that there is more. I want you to be open to the possibility that your real expansion and the next level of your evolution. If you are ready for transformation, if you are ready for that two point up. Um, it is, we need to start moving into this area of what you don't know and what you don't know that you don't know, right? This beautiful place of absolute infinite unlocks from the feelings within you that we have to remove the layers of insecurity, doubt, where we feel ugly, where we feel unsure, all of this stuff to really get in and connect to this sacred pulse. And then we need to know, as we talked about in you know the presentation around the fifth holistic circuit of the brain, we need to remember how to activate this ancient wisdom in our body. We're gonna be learning all of that and not just learning, but actually going through in practice. We're gonna spend five days, like I say, in absolute sacred ceremony in the middle of a beautiful rainforest in one of the most beautiful places in the whole earth, in that beautiful biodiversity with beautiful conscious food, with everything lovingly prepared so that you can spend, invest this time in yourself, invest time in your solitude, but also invest time in community, the power of people like-minded on the same journey. That feeling of going alone in your soul pilgrimage fucking sucks. You know, I've, I've been there myself, you know, emerge... I felt like I'd already emerged from the chrysalis, but, you know, in the last few months, I've realized that I'm only now just emerging fully from the chrysalis. And, you know, the people that I'm meeting and the experiences that I'm I'm having on a deep soul level, these beautiful soul connections are, yeah, I just feel so grateful in my heart and I know from this experience that you do have to let go of you have to let go of what you know. You do have to let go of what makes you feel secure. You do even if you don't consciously know that you're holding on to it. You have to be open to the miracle to come into your life that you didn't even know that you were seeking but it will match your vibration when your vibration changes when you shift and when you shift your vibration and you start living through this sacred pulse your expression changes everything changes so what I'm going to do now is I uh, what we're going to do for the rest of the evening is begin to go into interviews that are going to be loaded onto myu.tv which is my brand new conscious platform well platform for conscious creation and we're going to be hosting a podcast on there and providing a space providing a place for you to sip your soma so the legend behind the soma breath modality that i use is that the rig veda or oh, it's a legend it's a i mean that's probably true like most things that are legends um they used to um they used to take a plant to access this divinity, to access this super conscious mind, to receive the messages that would evolve their uh, progression as, as, as human beings, right? And they took so much of this plant to access these altered states of consciousness that it ran out and they started to panic that how are we going to advance? How are we going to progress? How are we going to stay alive? And then some clever Rig Veda actually realized that he could access these things with his breath. And, you know, that's been my journey is to realize that so like a, the mystery school, awaken your inner guru. So much that I sought outside of myself is actually within. And when you add in self-trust, fuck, you've got a fucking, you know, boiling pot of power and actually recently I realized that that's what's scary you know the idea that you can have an unhinged power that you can have because power can create and power can destroy right and that's your responsibility that is your responsibility and to know that there is only good with this power is to believe that there is only good in you which requires healing it does right and so I called Mayu Mayu 
that also came through a vision because I had this beautiful visualization with the 90 year old version of myself who whispered in my ear and she said, you know what, stop worrying, everything's sweet, everything's written. And then she said, but you've got to release a podcast. And I said, what the fuck? I don't want to release a podcast. I don't have time for a podcast. And I knew that I had no choice because it was another one of these bloody downloads that was going to happen whether I liked it or not. And I sat with my altar afterwards and I pulled a card and the card was from the Earth Warriors pack and the card was Mayu. And I read that Mayu was um, a galaxy that the deities, the shamans, the deceased souls would go to sip their soma. And so I want to offer through mayu.tv a platform for you to sip sip your soma for you to dance listen to amazing music create feelings for you to connect with other conscious creators for you to attend events for you as a conscious creator to put your events on there your music on there your somatic ceremonies on there and for the podcast to open this network and you know give you a place to consume the stuff that is going to help you activate this fifth holistic circuit of the brain. So um, the interviews that we're going to be going into at the end of the, the event are actually going to be loaded onto the podcast launch, which is coming in the next few days, which is so fucking exciting. So exciting. Um, but what we're going to be doing between now and then is I'm going to play you back um, a couple more episodes of A Baptism of Fire, because I want you to see the journeys of Judith and Carmen specifically that have been... Um, so dem demonstrative, if that's a word, a demonstration of, of everything that I've talked to today, especially Carmen in her expression, and especially Judith with how what was so unconscious and stored in her body and how we have released this for them to step into their next level on a galactic level. And if, like I say, you're seeking that galactic next level, then this is going to perhaps help you to warm up to what I do the way I do it. Um, so I'm just going to go across and put the episode, Carmen's episode on, and we're going to watch that. And I hope that you enjoy it. And I also want to say as well, like, um, if you are here live, hello, and if you want to jump on this live stream, you know, if you want to be in this room and you want to talk to me, you want to share something. We had a beautiful like absolutely off the chat with a guy called Don earlier and he told us about sound frequency and um, vocal alchemy and it was fucking wild you know it's like this is this is my you the sharing space this is what I want to create collaboration voices expression creativity um, so if you want to jump in live, there is a link in the captions of um, the live streams that are going out in various places and you just join the room and drop a comment and I will I will bring you in uh, in between these episodes. So just going back, this is the beautiful story of Carmen. Carmen is um, I'm actually gonna I'm gonna read it right here. So um, her episode spirits got my back. And basically the stage before the stage that you just saw, which is the stage of radical trust of yourself is the part in our spiritual awakening where we go, oh, wow, there is something that, you know, there's a higher power. And it really transforms how you view yourself and your potential. And so in this episode of A Baptism of Fire, Carmen steps into this first stage of radical trust and be begins to believe that, that spirit has got her back. And this episode is so profoundly inspirational because when she started working with me, she actually started in the same place as I started, which was struggling to put food on the table for her babies. And that is a situation that none of us want to be in. Um, it's horrible. And she was struggling. And to step into my program was a massive, like an unbelievable leap of faith that she took and it paid off. Um, so she stepped into my mastermind at the elite level and, you know, it has helped her reach her income goals quite quickly, but it's done so much more than that because she stepped into a stage of spiritual, spiritual awakening that most people are unwilling to take. And this is what I call the creative wave of chaos. This is where you step into co-creation with spirit. It's about embracing the chaos, tapping into your inner power and learning to trust trust yourself ultimately completely and 
you know, this is where you unleash the divine design that is in that star seed. And this is where you live into the fullest, most exciting, most potential holding part of your life, right? So Carmen's episode really begins to demonstrate you. And certainly Judith's episode is going to go deep into that, deeper into that, how it's often the fears that we don't know that we have that hold us back from reaching our, our goals. And by delving deep into this mystery, which is what we've done during the mystery school this week, um, and you can see actually the, the intros to each of those workshops on my profile, just 13, 15 minutes. And if you want to watch the full workshops, you can access them for free through my book um, as a bonus, Awaken Your Miracle Frequency. It is easier than you think to have it all. So there is a link to that in the comments. Um, by delving into this mystery, you can begin to address duality and awaken your inner guru. So if you're feeling ready to trust yourself and create an easy, abundant life, if you're ready for radical expression, boldness and leadership, then I really invite you to watch this episode right now. Um, which I am going to play. Let's give me a second. We'll take it back to the beginning. I will share my screen. Woohoo! Loving watching the live numbers go up. Comment, let me know where you're dialing in from, what you're excited about, what is resonating. I would love to hear. Um, Have we got it? We haven't got it. We've got it. We haven't got it. We've got it. We haven't got it. We've got it. We've got it. One, two, three. Here we go. In this episode of A Baptism of Fire, I want you to have a realization about your own radical expression. The clients who come to work with me are on a soul pilgrimage. They're coming home to the real truth of their star seed. They're feeling the stirrings of something bigger, a bigger mission, a bolder message, but they're meeting themselves. They're meeting a wall of their own resistance. They're often lacking clarity, feeling unclear, knowing that they're playing small, but not knowing how to play bigger. They are aware that there is a marketing element to how they are stuck, what to say, how to stay, how to say it, how to connect with the right audience, how to reach more people. But they've gone far along their journey of soul awakening enough that they know that their blocks are deeper than that. They know that the blocks are at the crux of why they can't surrender and allow for the best outcome to manifest the outcome that is your divine destiny. I'm excited to share the journey of my client, Carmen, who goes deep into her soul's remembrance. Welcome to my documentary, A Baptism of Fire. My name is Claire Williamson, AKA the Millionaire Shower Woman. I am the author of Awaken Your Miracle Frequency. It is easier than you think to have it all. I had this crazy idea of profiling the journeys of three of my clients who are also publishing their books as part of my program, The Unleashed Awakened Wealth Mastermind. When I published my book, I went through what I can only describe as a ritual of initiation to playing bigger in this way and I realized something powerful. This is the ritual of initiation to a tidal wave of sales and opportunities. You have to step into a fire that changes every level of your being and burns your old patterns, default expectations, and all of your programmed judgments and assumptions to the ground, just like a baptism of fire.
fascinated by the idiots who wear the flying sir- squirrel suits, and how do they practice that? <laughs> I think to myself, okay, there had to be one jackass who started it. <laughs> there had to be one guy who said to himself, you know, those squirrels with the flappy wings, I could get a suit like that. I can make something like that, and I can jump off the roof of my house. <laughs> you know, okay, and then they break a leg. You know, and then they get back on the roof, they alter the suit, and they go again. And now we got guys who are walking to the top of mountains, jumping off, and literally flying. Like a bird. Like a, like a flying squirrel, right? Or a flying bat. But when you go out and show people, say, like, you know, my family life sucked, but I got through it. Or I had, you know, traumatic issues, and I got through them. And I, they say, well, someone's rode yeah. away. Someone's jumped off the off the, the side of the building and flow, flown, and they lived. So I can do it, too. Amazing. I've started writing my chapter already first 400 words <laughs> Go yeah. For it. yeah i never felt as my true authentic self i felt as though i always had to be a certain person to please others you know that good little girl the one that listens the fuck up and does as she's told i'm sharing this deeply because i want you to know how much this impacted not only my life but also my first pregnancy and birth which was an absolute shit show i was brought up in south africa by very strict portuguese parents with a very firm belief that working hard was what was co- what was what called in financial stability even the school i attended added fuel to the programming that i already had it's your typical entry point onto the conveyor belt system of be a certain way birth a certain way and live a certain way love it absolutely oh. wonderful writer oh my goodness for me it was the typical thing was i wanted to finish school and my idea was wanting to become an actress i wanted to go to hollywood and i was all the way in south africa and my parents shut that down straight away no you're not going you need to do a beauty therapy course. So I went into a profession that I didn't even want to do until it reached a point where I was like, no, I don't want to do this anymore. (laughs) This isn't what I'm meant to do. I mean, I've been going through my own sort of clear nose, um, my own sort of, uh, you know, oh my God, what am I doing? I'm out of my depth. This is crazy. This is like, you know, the discomfort has been insane. And I've been going through that. And again, it's bringing my body back to feeling safe where I'm like, it's okay. It's a book. It's a chapter in a book. It's all right. Slow baby steps. And it's, it's all doable. It's like, you know, being able to kind of get that safety. I don't know, clients are coming through this um, in this last yeah. bit of May which is yeah it's yeah i guess it's like the falling into the trust um part that yeah because before i used to tell myself a story of oh it's the 15th of may there's no way i'm going to reach that goal but now i choose to tell it differently i look at it as if to say oh it's the 15th of may cool i've still got 15 days to to show up and and you know things can still change like things can change on the very last day you just need to keep going you need to keep going and that's why so many people <clears throat> fail to make it in business because they give up right before they're about to go and and make it right i mean i could have given up but i kept going and through every other part where i felt the discomfort i've kept going i haven't i haven't stopped a lot of people who have <clears throat> big success talk about that three feet from gold and they've experienced it, they've seen it, I've done it, because you are literally in the deepest di- discomfort right as you are. Closely. 100%. We've got to watch that ego mind. Like, it can speak all of its stories, but it's whether mm. you give to those stories, what what attention you give to those stories. Yeah, what I've had to go through. You guys don't even know the half of it. I'm just so grateful for where I am right now. Oh, Carmen. <laughs> Because not so long ago, I mean, I had barely any money in my in my account thinking, how the fuck am I going to pay for things? And now the money is coming through and yeah, it's just the gratitude that I feel for it. And I know that there's so many other people in the same position and it's just kind of wanting to shake them and say, fucking wake up because there is a rainbow, there is a tunnel, a white light at the end of the tunnel and it's been full. Oh shit, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> and go and shout it because people have to hear that, right? Because there's oh. so much of the opposite, there's so much of the darkness, there's so much of the bad story. Yeah. And it's people oh, like yeah. you who are succeeding. Go share it with pride, good pride. Oh. Thank you. Good on you. Good. Massive win. <laughs> and I'm going to share something because I think it's relevant. Um, but. Yesterday morning, I got an email for a bill that I still hadn't paid yet. It was outstanding. I didn't have the money to pay it. 
when I got the email, I freaked out, literally. Tears in my eyes, crying. I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like the typhus in my chest, everything panicked. And then I remembered, oh, hang on, I've got a couple hundred quid coming into my account. I can pay some of it off. And I thought, no, I'm not going to do anything now. I'm going to go for a shower. I'm going to wash my hair. I'm going to cleanse myself from these feelings. And then I'm going to come back and regroup. And when I came back, there was an, a message from a client of mine saying she had just transferred the rest of the balance from her doula package, which was, <laughs> and it covered the, that bill as well as another bill that I had to pay and another bill that I had to pay. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like I was just so grateful. I couldn't believe that that had happened. Things happen when we least expect it. Um, that's kind of what I wanted to say with that. I wanted to actually ask something because yesterday I did a call with um, a client of mine and I did some energy work on her, which I've never ever done before. Just energy work of me trying to pull the feelings that she held in her body away from her. And it was really weird because I don't know if any of you have ever done it, but I, it was the first time I did it and I felt a numbness in my hands. And I was like, oh my God, what the heck? Like, I was sort of like freaking out a bit, like thinking, shit, it's actually working, <laughs> kind of thing. So I want to be able to incorporate this more into my work. And I'm just wondering how do how do this more? With yourself okay. and in secret. If you can focus on your energy and start to be connected with your energy body and start to move your energy around, mm -hmm. then theoretically you can do it with others as well and then, then when you're in client situations just notice what you feel when they're talking i remember talking to karen on um really early on and she was talking about um was it where you held back from really expressing your your message like what you want to really talk about and i got this shooting pain down both of my tops of my legs that so the work that we did in that session I didn't mention the feeling but I I talked to that area mm. and guided mm. I've done it with you too we we we, we did one lens session you yeah. know you don't even have to be sat in front of somebody you can mm. feel their energy but you have to be attuned yeah. to energy it was the anxiety in her chest and um in her in her throat I think it was and it was just me with obviously through meditation as well as um, doing some clearing process, just me kind of almost like pulling away that energy from her. I could feel like as I was pulling my hands getting like that numbness that, you know, like it was something was happening. And then afterwards when I asked her, you know, how does it feel now? And she's like, oh, it's gone. I was like, oh, okay, great, amazing. That's, <laughs> yeah, that's um, beautiful. And powerful. Yeah, yeah. And also a result too of mm. the way that you have reconnected to yourself, yeah. to your truth. I had a call today with the most aligned client ever, um, who's from South Africa. Bizarre, right? Um, lives literally not far from where I am, wants me to be her doula. Um, she's pregnant, she's um, expecting a baby in February. So really wants to potentially book me. She just has to speak with her husband, but she's the type of person that already purchased pregnancy courses even before she got pregnant. She's already done ancestral healing with her, like, you know, past generations and their births. Like, I was just like, oh my God, you are like the dream come true. <laughs> She is the dream because come true. She, she, <laughs> she, she she's dreamed. Done. She's, she's <laughs> right? Done the word. Sometimes not epic for me either. I sometimes have really shit days too. Um, but I kind of come back and I just keep the vision going and trust that, yeah, everything's going to work out. So what I thought it would be really cool to show through Carmen's documentary is my process. With my process, I work through very specific steps that I call the Awakened Wealth Blueprint. The idea that you have an operating system of beliefs and you really are a robot to these until you bring awareness to them, which I call 
the soul pilgrimage. And on this soul pilgrimage, you will experience a wild remembrance of your spiritual gifts, of your true purpose and destiny, a reclaiming of your responsibility for this divine service and expanded capacity energetically so that you can receive the energies of the higher mind. The really cool thing about the Awakened Wealth Blueprint is that I have made the first phase of it available to all. I created a cool app called the Awakened Wealth app and you get to start this journey. What I've recognized is a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs, light workers, star seeds for strategy. They're looking for the magic bullet, but the magic bullet is you, which is why the Awakened Wealth Blueprint starts within you, in your inner world, creating coherence, beginning to come back to your true authenticity and beginning to learn how to create, not with your conscious mind, but with your alpha mind, with your super conscious mind. Clients like Carmen get to really go deep into the next phase of the journey, which is where we begin your brand rebirth. We start to align your business to a radical expression of the soul's truth. And we begin to bring in what I call the personal story formula, which is your entire history, all experiences that you have gone through, that you were meant to go through to get you to where you are, and you're meant to take the wisdom forward. So we really dig into this brand rebirth, beautiful brand alignment and your brand story as we begin to go deeper into your soul pilgrimage. And then we begin to birth your soul story. This was the journey that I took. When I wrote Awaken Your Miracle Frequency, it is easier than you think to have it all. And I experienced such success publishing this book, but also using it as an evergreen sales asset that I am now helping my clients to do exactly the same, to take away the complexity of marketing, to take away the need to talk to social media all day long. There are lots of benefits to having a book, including being able to take this bold message out to more people and create opportunities. But there has to be a system behind the book that ensures that the people reading the book step into your world, step onto your journey. So we create this system for you in the final steps of the Awakened Wealth Blueprint. And then we also launch what I call a content wheel that drives people into the system and converts them into clients in as little as five days. And that includes people that are completely cold when they connect with your content. To give you an alternative to the ways that you are striving for your success right now that might not be working for you, and the way that this blueprint goes outside of strategy and into helping you to restore trust in yourself, trust in the universe, and take everything in your business to the next level. Spirit's got your back. Have you recognized that yet? I wrote the post, the minute that you try to control birth is when your birth becomes out of your control. And someone just commented and said, wow, what a quote. I know that that's true for birth, why the hell am I trying to control this? Why the and hell like, are you trying to control this? Tell me. Because uh, I'm going to be able to make the amount of money that I made a few months ago because I made it and then I didn't make it. Is it going to be that fucking yo-yo pattern like that? It yeah. will be whatever matches your energy. Yeah, I know. I know. And your energy comes from your belief systems. <sighs> it's been the exhaustion of the birth that I, I know that that client was completely unaligned for me. It's almost like you feel like you have to be awake because obviously you're in their home, you're looking after them. You don't, I didn't take any breaks. I didn't even nourish myself properly over those two days. I know what I've done wrong. I totally know it. Which is a beautiful gift because you can now see. Yeah. Big breakthrough. It was huge huge and now it's looking like everything's falling apart but actually it's not it's aligning so we have to ask the question how is this aligning for me like normally i would have been like Fuck, what am i going to do this and the other but i didn't i was like okay fair enough and then also just obviously trying to trying to drink more water also so 
that's going to be one thing but i do want to get back on track with the meditations the breath work just take that pressure yeah. off you will naturally okay. drop back into those breath works and meditation if you can commit to the okay. seven by seven method you, your okay. body needs to remember how good it feels being mm -hmm. in meditation because it very quickly forgets and this shit up yeah. here is just ridiculous i mean honestly i stood in the shower yesterday I'd had the most mind-blowing clarity driving home from school. I was like, wow, I haven't had a coffee and I feel so clear. I feel amazing. I get in the shower and my brain did this weird, oh, is this what it's going to be like now? Is this living? Like, this is so depressing. <laughs> you haven't like oh. had a coffee. And I'm listening to this voice in my head going, what? <laughs> that is exactly what happens when you're going in the right direction and you're doing the right things and you actually feel the minute you start feeling good this little shit in here switches on because it's unfamiliar yeah. i just like put my tunes on and dance into celebration of the clarity and wanted more of it i didn't even yeah. want a decaf coffee yesterday it was wicked it was it just felt like freedom right but you've got to take the smallest step to remember the feeling okay. the good feelings thank you i would love to hear what you are with down in the comments. If you are enjoying this documentary, A Baptism of Fire, subscribe at the button below and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you do not miss out on finding out whether their stories have a happy ending. You threw all caution to the wind. You fully unleashed. You didn't worry about money. You didn't worry about, worry about whether clients would even listen. You didn't, none of that would matter. What would you say? It's funny you say that because yesterday I went on Clubhouse. Uh, um, there's a physiology room that I'm part of um, as a guest, um, one of the stage. And we were talking about self-sabotaging birth. And some people came on there with, um, their views about uh, self-sabotage that it was you know the body parents you know husbands blah 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 i brought in you you self-sabotage your birth <laughs> because wow. of the fears that you have and i went on this massive not even it wasn't even a rant it sounded like a rant but it wasn't a rant it was me just i was so passionately just sharing that it maybe came across to some people as a bit of a ramp because I was blah, 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 blah. Uh, the lady that runs the, the, the club, she was like, yes, yes, yeah. Like she was agreeing with everything that I was saying. I felt good. I felt good just unleashing and talking about it and saying to people like, yes, we can blame the medical healthcare providers. Yes, we can blame this. Yes, we can blame that. But ultimately we need to be looking at ourselves because we are the ones that say yes and no to it. You guys need to dig deep and find out what the hell's going on within. Because once you start working on your internal world, your external world will change. It was in my heart, I felt, I felt full. So that is beautiful. And that is beautiful to say, I felt like my heart was full. I was talking from passion. Mm -hmm. We are looking at the unconscious body. Because the unconscious body is switched on all of the time whether we're, we're awake, whether we're asleep, in constant reaction. In there, in that experience, you're placed in a position where it channeled, it flowed. You yeah. expressed. Yeah. Not all the time, but like moments when I'm intentional, like for instance, the writing of the book, when I look down, I may just I focus and it, it like it might take me a few minutes but then it starts flowing when I get started it starts flowing with my content creation again it varies like today I've got a reel that I need to post and I'm thinking oh I need to write a caption but I'm like Fuck, I don't know what to write <laughs> when I'm not in flow it takes me ages to get something absolutely out the anxiety starts coming through it's like oh i haven't posted yet oh i haven't you know it's, i get like annoyed that i haven't posted yeah. yet and i should have posted and i haven't there's a lack here there's a lack of mm -hmm. something that is required for my survival and so i'm going to go into the survival response so mm -hmm. the energy from that and this is why we've got to get conscious but we've also got to um we've also got to understand our process of getting into flow what takes you into flow? I don't know, because I'm sharing so deeply something that's so connected to me and, and to my growth. 
it feels right being able to share this with others and I feel that people will resonate with it and I guess it's just having that space. It's that quietness also to be able to creativity to flow through and get myself into a state where I feel calm and I'm like, okay, cool. I'm good to go. Let's let's do this. If the mind gets overthinking and I get too much in my head, then yeah, that's there's a whole nother ball game that's needed for that. You're connecting with your root, but you're not then shooting into a survival response and overthinking it. You're actually flowing there and it's which tells me the body feels safe to go there. So what what it almost feels like I'm going back in time to that version of myself. And I know that obviously the past is the past, but it's almost like I feel myself going back as myself now into the past with a different lens and looking at it and you know with a bit more clarity not from the perspective of of reaction but from the perspective of this has happened you know and this was sort of the outcome and it's kind of more creating the awareness i guess i find myself reflecting on the past those past moments and understand why they happened because obviously my parents were scared you know it was their their fears that were projected onto me you can look at those past experiences from new perspectives stay in a calm state mm -hmm. and have a walk around those memories if that is the underworld and you can drop back there in this healed and calm mm -hmm. grounded empowered state walk around mm -hmm. those experiences how do you step into the middle world what needs to heal for you to take that side step mm -hmm. actually there is a belief system to be healed somewhere i guess it's partially that belief of no one will believe what i'm like will believe in what i'm saying no one will get it Maybe it's linked to the unworthiness of not being worthy. I don't know why, but embarrassment is coming up. The word embarrassing, like, oh, how embarrassing. Like, you know, if someone was, was to tear me down, like that's the immediate thing. And I know that's, you know, that's that little child that if she was to be shamed in front of someone or whatever, you know, she'd be like really embarrassed and shy away and just, you know, shut down completely. Cause that's what used to happen with me as a child. Then a part of me afterwards would come out and be like, I'm going to show you one day. This is beautiful. Is that the worst consequence? For me, it feels like it is. It's the embarrassment of it not being right. Would you rather feel the shame and the embarrassment over feeling broke? Or would you absolutely prefer to feel broke than feel the shame? Uh, no, I don't want to feel broke. <laughs> what is the programming that has to shift the programming that has to shift is, is is me creating the safety within and letting myself know that it's okay that no one's perfect i know that no one is perfect nothing is perfect that i am entitled to be able to speak my truth also that whatever i say it's not wrong and it, if it is wrong, someone will come along and say something. And if that person does say something, we can have a conversation about it and maybe I'll learn something new or, or not. So what might that. be the best case outcome of if every single reel, every single caption, every single post, every single story had exactly that approach, mm -hmm. that energy, that expression, mm -hmm and that alignment to what you truly believe. It would call in the people that believe and that get it, and the ones that don't, it will send them packing, which is fine, because that's what we want, right? We want the people that are soul and aligned to come towards us, and the ones that aren't, off you go. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Does anything happen in your body when you imagine that best case scenario Everybody that is aligned hears what you says and rushes towards you. Yes, 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 Carmen, give me more of this. The heart. It's that same feeling in the heart that I felt when I was talking full. Good. Yeah. This is good. Yeah.
I feel the fullness in my heart thinking, yes, I get to help this person to change their trajectory of their birth or of their life. I want you to seed as we go into the breath work. I'm coming out of this breath work with my caption. What I want to say, the world needs to hear. You know, you what you know that you won't feel shame because you know there is nothing mm. to feel ashamed about. You mm. understand you are not that child, but potentially your energy body is still falling back to old survival imprints. Yeah. Traumatic events, the triggering it, in the reptilian brain, it's not it's not words. It's mm. colors, shapes, sounds, smells. So yeah. that is why when we're in certain situations, trauma is still triggered. Even though we have changed the belief system and then we, you know, we need to be aware of the, how the environment is a triggering event that is causing an unconscious um, sensation in the body that creates an energy of lack. So it's kind of like we actually have to um, create, we create neuroplasticity by leaning into the new behavior, like attuning the body to associating this with this, this with this, this with yeah. this, this is the, when I do this, mm -hmm. this happens. Do you know, because fear mm -hmm. is anticip in anticipation of pain. So if you rewire on a body level, comfort, mm -hmm. assurance, safety, this is why the breath works so powerful when we breathe yeah. into retention and then suddenly we don't die. And in unconscious situations of unsafety, there is no creativity and there's the creative blocks. The post becomes hard. The expression shuts down. We'll go mm. to the place that feels comfortable, which is probably not what we're meaning to say. <laughs> and we can't find the words for what we want to say. And if we don't say what we want to say, we won't attract the clients we want to attract and, and we'll play small and we'll continue to play small. At the end, we're going to touch base and see if your heart has given you the words that you want to say, truly want to say mm -hmm. in this caption. You in? Yeah. To breathe, following the count. Taking your breath out, just sit in meditation and you can open your eyes. A real tingling in my hands that I even brought over through the root and then something started like flickering in the root and then wow. I brought it up to the sacral and something started sort of flickering in the sacral and then I was coming up to this area and it just felt full and then oh that was amazing anything comes through for your caption yeah i think from my first pregnancy um where i kept shutting out the fear and kept telling myself to just think positively think positively tell that story tell that yeah. story yeah yeah oh hello should we yeah. say bye bye Blessed. bye bye sweetie perfect That's awesome great. Thank you. Bye. See you soon. Bye bye. It's just um, around the um, the Instagram. I've, I'm literally getting um, stuck in the the bio. I don't know why. I don't know why. I think it's the whole the whole element of the fear, the discomfort, the putting something uh, <laughs> bigger out there, um, and showing up like as a different identity um, and what I'm offering. Because you want you yeah. want to tell that to them in a, in a really short, snappy sentence. That's it. Yeah, that's it. And then that's how I can bring in the story of, you know, having a newborn baby, looking at my account, 37 pounds being in my account, having all of this shit to pay. How the hell am I going to do this kind of thing? Do you know what I mean? So what have you got in words <laughs> that we can play with? So I've just got how you birth how you birth defines how you lead um what were my other notes that i put down that one definitely has to go in, in with like fire bombs <laughs> birth your way to success uh that was another one birth your way to quantum success how achieving a utopia birth can skyrocket your life there's this one account this nail account that has got like 50 squillion followers because she just literally says in her bio i'll give you daily tips magnificent nails and it's so specific it says that there's a payout 
achieving your utopia birth and entrepreneurship can coexist. And I think you should use that unstoppable word because that's in that that's been in your marketing, hasn't it? It has, yeah, it has. Because it's funny, I'm currently coaching a woman um, who's who's the birth that I attended in December last year. She's a business owner, also. Like she's so fixated on these, so fixated about getting things perfect that she's failing to see the bigger picture. And yesterday when we were talking, and she's just sent me a message this morning, basically saying, you know, um, well, it's almost like she's seeking external validation which is where I was. It's like you don't need external validation. You need to be the one feeling content and happy and, and uh, you know, ecstatic about what you're doing. It's not about anyone else. It's about you feeling good. Um, and it's like, oh my God, that's me. <laughs> that was me a few, you know, a few months back seeking the external validation. And I think you have to consider like giving yourself a massive, um, like a big up, like having, having something in that that um bio that says i am a birth and business leader you know how i call you yeah. the Brett brown of birthing like mm, yeah, owning yeah. that right what you're saying is completely like thought leadership calling out those women who want to have it all who want that power and um freedom of choice you know birth and business leadership that's what I've just put in here. Yeah, I think this is perfect. It, it literally it, it merges everything that I'm looking at offering. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, my client for August has messaged finally. Oh, tell me what's what's going on? She's cancelled. Right. Two and a half thousand pounds I was meant to be paid today and I'm not being paid it now. I'm trusting that whatever fucking plan the universe has. I know it sounds crazy, but I have been doing this a long, a long, a long time enough to know that we we never lose. We never, ever, ever lose. We create space. It's funny though, because before, if this had happened to me last year, yeah, I wouldn't have handled it very well. Exactly. I would have been massively panicked and I'm actually pretty calm about it. I replied back to her, just said, oh, I'm really sorry. You've had a change in heart. I think personally it's because of, I think her husband's kind of put her in a tight spot because I don't think he was on board with the whole thing first time around, um, which is a shame because obviously it's not just myself. It's another two people that are also kind of were part of her birth team. Um, but it is what it is like, you know, there's nothing that can be done now at this point in time. I can't, I can't change her mind. I can't say anything, and it's not my place to either. So all I can do is just fall into trust. Um, there was someone that I had a coaching call with to potentially coach her, sent her my package details. She came back to me this evening saying that um, she needed, she had been having a conversation with her husband, and um, that uh right now it was a no but it doesn't mean it would be a no in future because she really vibed with me and blah 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 but the money the interest rates of the house like you know the, the that sort of story coming through mm -hmm. and i went back to her and i replied and i'm fucking proud of myself because i basically said to her what you're telling yourself is what i used to tell myself before i decided to jump in and I just said, you know, well, what I want you to do is I want you to go away and journal on what is your real fear behind investing in yourself. Wow. You know? What is your real fear behind it? Um, and I hope you don't mind be being me being upfront and honest. Um, but I kind of, yeah, it, it's it's asking yourself that deep question, you know, um, because the thing is, um, I genuinely want you to ask the question because I want you to spend some time journaling on this um, then just see what comes through working from a place of abundance requires another level of commitment that doesn't include comfort because she was saying I want to get comfortable Nothing. it doesn't include comfort <laughs> otherwise everyone would be doing it I don't know where that came from <laughs> I hope you don't take what I've said the wrong way and if and when you decide to I will be here to support you when you're ready I thought, no, I'm not going to keep quiet. I'm not just going to say, oh, okay, no worries. No, you want to hear it? You're going to hear the truth from now on. That's my truth. Like, I, you know, that message will call in your birth CEO. You know, it's like, yeah. how can you use that in content? Because that is exactly how they're feeling, in content. right? I know. We've got two weeks thereabouts. Mm. I want to talk in the coaching about your book launch. 
yeah yeah i think it'll be good i think it'll be good i've got my free my freebie already sorted i've included a visualization and a workbook i've sent the link beautiful we plan something around um the book launch date so mm -hmm. it's sort of like just take tailoring your marketing now towards well, what are you going to do what are you going to do in these three yeah. to five whatever you choose i'm doing my seven day mystery school it's like today i pushed through the discomfort on doing those emails it was re it felt really uncomfortable because I kept second guessing myself. I was like, "Am I writing what is right? Am I am am I understanding it correctly? Like, do you know what I mean?" And all I wanted to do was shut the computer and just go in, away and do something else. Like that's literally what I wanted to do, but I kept pushing through. I was like, "No, it's fine. It's this is just a." Clay said this was just a messy draft. It's fine. I can just do this and it's okay. <laughs> That's a whole different, another oh. version of you. That is a whole different oh, identity. No. That yeah. is somebody who's sticking it out. And that's beautiful. Yeah. That's what we've got these yeah. tools for. I'm going to push through it and I'm going to do it. I've decided I'm going to do it. I'm not fucking around anymore. I'm done with fucking around. that episode like I love I love that journey right of that is what the journey of radical expression is it is in the you don't know that you don't know and you begin to create the space to tap in to who you truly are and you begin to create from that possibility you know Carmen is lead, leading a movement um, she is going to be joining us in a little while to talk about that. And I'm actually going to be interviewing on, uh, I'm going to be interviewing her on her story and the resistance that she felt to sharing that story. Because I think this is really important, right? Radical expression does require us to get vulnerable, to uh, feel all those fears of people truly seeing us seeing us in our imperfection, in our flaws, all of these things that we feel insecure about. Um, so I'm going to put the call out again. If anybody would like to join me here on the live stream and chat to me, I am open to that beautiful creative wave of chaos. If you feel like you have something to share, something to say, you want to promote yourself, you are so welcome to jump in. Um, love that journal what fears are coming up in it yeah right yeah what Carmen did with her client like bring awareness to this stuff that process like what I say to clients when they're on the fence and they're fearing the investment is I say that the fear that you're feeling in investment is a quantum leap in itself right if you can allow yourself to make an investment and put yourself in that discomfort and face the fears that you have, you're already telling the universe that you believe something different, that you believe in possibility instead of that you believe in yourself. And there's an energy with that. And you'll often see when clients come into my program that their shifts are immediate, right? Because they have a shift in belief. They believe something differently to what they did before they invested the money. And there is, there is an exchange too, right? We um, an activity in the quantum leap method that um, I call the give to gain, right? So you think about this idea of circulation, that we actually have to give something to receive something. If, you, if you've downloaded um, Leading with Light yet, so in the comments, you have your little free download link. Um, and I was just sending it out to everybody who's been in mystery school, who, um, you know, I said I would connect them to this little chapter that I wrote that really talks into how you're blocking yourself from receiving abundance from these unconscious fears that you have. Um, but, you know, we have to put something out to receive something back. Lisa says, yes, I got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and so this, this activity and you can do it right now, you know, you can close your eyes and you can really feel into the vision of what it is that you want. 
and ask yourself that uncomfortable question of like, what am I really not giving to make that happen? So, you know, it might be that you want the 10,000 followers on Instagram, but you feel resistance to going into your DMs or resistance to posting every day. Um, like I talked about before, you know, these aversions, resistance, assumptions, uh, attachments, that they all have an energy that is going to manifest lack. Um, and we have to get over those, but we have to see them first. And so Carmen took this beautiful journey of really seeing what she didn't see, both in her blocks, but also in her possibility. And then we went through that journey of getting over the vulnerability to share. And of course, being in my elite mastermind, this was a very somatic journey. This was, um, yeah, a lot of going in and doing the kind, kinds of things that we're going to be doing at Pulse. So what I would like to do now is to move our bodies because I'm feeling really static. Um, I'm going to share a, a song that I love and we're going to breathe and move together. It's a really, I'm just hoping that fo Facebook doesn't shut off the live stream because I'm putting music through that probably is copyrighted. I'm going to take a punt that it is unknown enough that it's not going to create some sort of massive block. <laughs> uh, ooh, yes, DM chats and adding friends. What happens, Lisa? You feel what? You feel uncomfortable, right? And then when you feel uncomfortable, the little stories go around. Oh, what are they going to think? What are they going to say? I remember being in a network marketing company I'm still in and I used to actually fear people picking up my messages because I thought fuck if they pick them up I'm actually gonna have to have a conversation and the idea of having a conversation used to make me want to shit myself so I mean that's crazy right we are creating our own lack by these feelings that we have but we can change these feelings so this this um this music is super cool and what we're going to do is we're going to breathe to the music. So it uses this beautiful breath rate of and what let go. Resistance about their resistance. Think I want to sell. Lol. I see now how that was my projection, right? So what are we going to do in this music? We're going to let the fuck go. I want you to imagine, right? being in front of social media, having a list of people to DM and putting yourself into the most incredible, like fucking charged up state. And what we're doing when we're breathing like this, right? It, and I don't recommend doing it too much because you'll hyperventilate, but we're creating a, a like a connected chain of breath. Um, all power breathing where we're creating a, di um, a bellows in the diaphragm and we are releasing more carbon dioxide than we are um, breathing oxygen in. <sighs> or it might be the other way. I can never remember. Either way, we're completely shifting the, um, the chemical state of our body. And we're accessing this beautiful fifth holistic circuit of the brain. We're creating really good feel good feelings. One of the things that is going in for the last day actually of our lunar cycle in the quantum leap portal is a is a, a sex magic uh, morning ritual. So what we've done through the lunar cycle in the quantum leap portal, which is your VIP membership to the Awakened Wealth community. Like I say, the Awakened Wealth community is free. You are all welcome. You don't have to pay anything. You get access to the seven by seven app. Um, but you can also choose to step up step up in your intention, step up in your investment just a tiny bit and really become part of the Quantum Leap community where you're supported by me, Leap coaches. You are, you've already met one of them today, Joanne. You're going to be meeting another one, Carmen, in a little while. We're going to be interviewing her. And what we've done in the Quantum Leap portal is I introduced you to this, uh, this, this ancient sex magic to help you to understand it. I uh, put in a beautiful ecstatic dance wave that helps you to really connect with this sexual energy and actually feel your energy and become your body, right? Let go of the conscious mind. We also had a live presentation from Joe that goes deep, uh, deeper into this topic. I'm really, I mean, I'm still like buzzing from that uh, session that she did. We call her session the high frequency, high frequency mastery session. And it was fucking wild. 
And we're going to have Carmen coming in in the morning, New Zealand time. So that'll be Saturday evening, uh, UK and maybe during the day, US, um, to talk about healing sexual trauma. Because if we're going to tap into this creative life force, we actually have to heal our, sex, our sexual tra trauma because, you know, if we've had experiences where we've been violated, where our trust has been um, broken, then we're going to find it very difficult to pull our walls down. We're going to find it very difficult to relax. Um, and I think working with sex magic brings this stuff up to it certainly has for me and has been deeply healing, which is the point, right? It is the point of sex magic is to heal, is to illuminate, is to ascend in consciousness. Um, so I really invite you to, to jump into the app and, and check out the portal. If you're in the mystery school, then you did get access to the portal for free. Um, so if you haven't checked out those, re uh, those resources yet, do get in there, like soak all this stuff up. And right now I'm going to put this song on and I want you to get up and I want you to move and I want you to fucking feel it. I want you to feel this sacred pulse within you and let go. It's called release your limitations. And that's what we're doing in this breath rhythm, this connected breath is switching off the default mode network, letting go, allowing your body to move like we are in the ecstatic dance. We are um, becoming the body, not directing the body to move, but just allowing the body to move itself and seeing the creative flow that comes from that. Um, man, I could get back on the decks now, but I'm not going to. That's um, well, maybe I can. Maybe I should. Now we're actually going live, um, which means I have to set everything back up because we're on this creative wave of chaos and we're here for another 9, 10, 11, three hours. So four hours, maybe a bit more. Um, so let's get this tune on. Um, okay. So remember it. Get into your body. Let go. Bring up this joy feeling. Create this happy, high feeling. Lisa, did you feel the happy, high feeling in the breath work? Let me know in the comments. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. we go are we still live we are still live woo, woo, woo. okay 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 i think it's my phone that's dying okay do we have sound with you ready steady let's really get into this feet on the floor I'm gonna trust that I have sound Raywin see oh she's still there yes I love that she's here she's my wingman ready your belly here and on chest you can check
to let go and breathe. second and I'm going to tell you quickly about this um, uh, this power breath right so with the power breath what we're doing is instead of just this flowing connected breath we're actually going to start breathing in a connected rhythm and we're going to be breathing faster and creating these bellows in the chest so this looks like And I want you to be really careful that you're breathing into your belly. So and you're breathing in with what you're breathing in with intention which creates the exhale that happens and there's no force and what we want to do usually is 30 of these breaths so if you are um, going into your dms or going on to a sales call or feeling any sort of resistance you can use this to get into state right so putting this music back on we're now going to go into our power breath you can do this standing you can do this sitting down um if you start to feel lightheaded sit down carry on and at the end we're going to do our beautiful um breath retention okay and we're going to check in and see how you feel afterwards so i'm just going back to the music it's over here Whoop. don't want too much of this beautiful buzz feeling to you uh, be wearing off because <laughs> it's fucking amazing, right? Okay, here we go. Turning this up. Okay. <laughs> so going into this beautiful power breath, we're going to be doing 30. Ready?
so notice the difference, right? The, and the difference between just dancing and breathing and dancing, bringing breath work and movement together. If you're just jumping onto the live and you're like, what the hell is going on? What is she fucking doing right here? This is trustful. This is my 12 hour live stream event where I have been talking about how to step into the next octave of your reality without any of the force and the push, any of the manipulation and the control, any of the stress and the hustle. You know, we start with awakening the miracle frequency that is within you. And we go a whole other level to become the feelings of what you want before it arrives in your reality, to step into this place of self-trust and connection and also non-duality, non-separation that allows you to, to trust that spirit is within and that everything is written and that you are literally in a big movie and you have kind of written the the script from your soul's contract right and you can meet life differently like that um and we've been talking about the kind of things that stop you doing exactly that you know that you will meet life with insecurity with um assumptions with limiting beliefs with you know, doubts and a lack of love for yourself. Um, and, you know, all of that carries an energy that is manifesting. So I hope that you are enjoying this live stream so far. I want to check in on the time. Give this a little look-see here. Uh, hang on a second for our first guest who I think will be joining us really shortly time now CEST so what we're going to be going into I'm sure she should be here she's 18 minutes late <laughs> do I need to remind her um give me a second we should have Judith here by now where could she possibly be um, let me jump on in because my phone is now not connected and say to Miss Judith. Miss Judith. Okay, perfect. Um, so Miss Judith is coming in as our first live uh, interview in this evening section. Um, and she is going to be talking about um, her experience in Mexico and how that has led to this crazy uh, radical expression, right? And we are um, going to show her episode right now of A Baptism of Fire. Um, because, you know, when we unlock this next level, it doesn't necessarily mean that we are walking with ease, like I experienced, into that next level. It's going to come with certain rites of passage, you know. We set the intention to walk in life as this authentic version of ourselves. Um, 8 p.m. Ah, oh, okay. Maybe that's me then, Raywin. <laughs> um, I might have got the schedule mixed up, um, which is great because that gives us time to watch our episode. This is all working out perfectly to plan. Um, so, you know, we set that intention to radically express, but what is going to come to us um, is, is the rites of, of passage, um, which is certainly what Judith experienced. Um, so her, her episode is beautiful. I'm going to pop this on for you now. And, um, yeah, I would love to know what resonates, you know, because I think Judith, jo this story will deeply resonate especially in those areas of what is unconsciously blocking you and and how that is really manifesting in the experiences um, that you are having 
So let's go over here right now and put this on for you. Oh my goodness me. This will be the last episode that we will be sharing today, but you are absolutely welcome to, um, to jump into my YouTube channel, subscribe, go along to episodes. There have been five so far. There are another two coming. It is extremely exciting. Judith's episode is called um, Learning to Find Bliss in the Present Moment. Um, so if this is about if you, you know, if you're in that position and you feel like you're not arriving, <laughs> you know, uh, you want to get to the next income, impact, influence, milestone, and you're not arriving, I want you to entertain the idea that it's that you don't feel safe to arrive there and that that um, arrival is completely unconscious. OK, so the obvious thing that you look at when you are experiencing plateaus, roadblocks is strategy. What is what is the piece of strategy that I'm missing? Um, and this can wind you up in this place of trying all these different things to shift. Right. Um, and, and they don't work because the problem is on the inside. And this episode demonstrates how a somatic coaching approach can help you un, um, how can help you heal the unconscious trauma that is holding you back from your success. So in this episode, my, my client Judith discovers the hidden reasons that she wasn't creating the income, impact and influence that she was seeking. And her story will help you to understand how unconscious beliefs and hidden traumas can impact your success and lift your energy to unlock greater abundance. Your unconscious stories are a safety net from the things that you fear, but they're also keeping you locked in the past and unable to embrace the present moment. Somatic trauma transcendence helps you to access deeper levels of understanding and unlock the success that you deserve. So you're going to be really inspired by the courage, resilience and unwavering commitment of Judith, just like you have seen in my other clients. And she shows you that when we heal these deep wounds and operate from a place of truth and alignment, Judith felt her truth and alignment in Mexico. Um, and she stepped into life living through this. Right. And this is what brought up the wounds. And this is what happens the rites of passage are there to illuminate how you how you need to align, where you need to heal. Um, they'll reflect in your relationships. They'll reflect in your experiences. You'll call in those things that you fear the most, right? You're trying to avoid them, but you'll call them in because you have to go through them and you have to learn the wisdom of that experience. And from here, this is where our creative ideas and our creative expression can flow effort, effortlessly and radically, boldly, right? Um, and, and it's here that we unlock limitless potential, but it requires courage, it requires vulnerability, and it requires a willingness to, to confront the darkest corners of your psyche. I call this the fire of transformation. So if you're ready to unravel the layers that have been hindering your radical expression and holding you back from your business's potential, full potential, prepare yourself to be captivated by the raw emotions that will create profound revelations in you as you uncover the impact your own stories and human need for survival, as we've talked about today, is having on your life and business. By embracing your unique experiences and vulnerabilities, you will tap into a wellspring of untapped potential that we will share about in Judith's interview. And you will un unlock your innate creative power like never before. So here we go. Here is Judith's episode. Give me one little second to get that on. Hang on a second. Here we are, ready, steady. Go. What if this emotion is the breakdown that you're needing at a soul level to let in what is actually truth? I saw myself at the beach. It was out there on ship, but it was out in the ocean somewhere there. And I was at the beach. I couldn't get there. I started to paddle there, but I got back. On the water, there's a wave. On the water, there's a current. You know, there's a flow that you don't necessarily always have to paddle. Little girl, run, little girl, bang, hustle. I did it again, I did it right. 
Hi, I'm Judith. I'm a transformation coach and a business mentor from Germany, supporting visionary female entrepreneurs, those star seeds, light leaders globally in growing their businesses for this new earth age that we are already in. My name is Claire Williamson, AKA the millionaire shower woman. I am the author of Awaken Your Miracle Frequency. It is easier than you think to have it all. I had this crazy idea of profiling the journeys of three of my clients who are also publishing their books as part of my program, The Unleashed Awakened Wealth mastermind. When I published my book, I went through what I can only describe as a ritual of initiation to playing bigger in this way and I realized something powerful. This is the ritual of initiation to a tidal wave of sales and offers. You have to step into a fire that changes every level of your being and burns your old patterns, default expectations and all of your pro programmed judgments and assumptions to the ground, just like a baptism of fire. I'm joining this beautiful book project because I do believe that your business is an expression of your soul's purpose. And if we look at this new earth age that we're all entering and the way business is done is shifting, the way marketing is done is shifting, the way that we get to be who we are and express ourselves is shifting, this message and how to do this needs to get out to more people. And that is exactly what I feel this book can absolutely support my mission with, together with these amazing other leading ladies. And all together, it's just a whole movement in the transformation of this world and this new Earth age. You want Judith to go next? Judith, are you still yeah. working on that? Are you, are you ready to read it? Uh, I just posted it in the group. I'm not really happy, but it's better than nothing. Let's see if we can make it happy. Go for it. Gosh, I'm crying again. I'm having a shit day. Oh, honey, it's okay. No, oh, we don't want to upset you. Can, can we help you with anything? Or you want to talk about it? You have a coach that wants you to succeed more than anybody I've ever met in my life. So, she really means that. What part of you is resisting for leading in to this new earth reality that you, you see it? That's just a thought coming up that it might mean, it might not, but it might mean that I need to drop what I'm doing right now. So what does that look like? I wouldn't be coaching. How does that make you feel? Scared. No, I, I would be more sharing all the things I see and I know. Recently, I felt kind of tired to walk people through these processes. What if this emotion is the breakdown that you're needing at a soul level to let in what is actually truth for you. It's that Rumi quote, you've got to break your heart enough times that it's finally open. And when it becomes open, it doesn't mean it makes sense, but it's shattering the paradigm of everything you've ever believed and allowing you to step onto your path of purpose but exciting at the same time. Yeah, mm. most, most exciting things are scary. Hey, this is Judith again. It's vlog for week three and four of our book journey, Leading with Light. And it's just, oh my goodness, there's so many things going on and happening 
challenging things, exciting things. And I just wanted to share a few insights of how that journey is going on for me. And so my chapter is all around new ways of entrepreneurship and new ways of doing business through expressing your soul's purpose, right? Because I was struggling a lot with really, is it that, that really the ideas I had for the subtitles of the chapter, if that matched the roadmap and the client journey within my world. And I thought I had to rearrange it, but then I reread it. And that was a positive thing to really come through. I read it and I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so good. And it makes so much sense. So it was just around a little bit tweaking and, and twisting things a bit, but not like I had thought to kind of redo it. So that was that was a really cool thing. <laughs> it got me laughing. Um, and I've already started to write a little bit on one of the topics where something was just coming through and I just let it or pour into the digital paper. That was amazing. I feel a lot of resisting up, which is likewise annoying and exhausting, but it's, it's a beautiful part of all these evolution journeys and the transformation that every new project and every growth step that we commit to be going through that it triggers, right? And that we get to look at. So this book project, the way we're doing it here with Claire, and um and lil from from the publishing house is is just a beautiful thing and it's different to the other two book projects i've already been in so i haven't been worried all the time about being able to write a chapter because i know i can do that the major resistance for this week that i identified coming up it is some pattern around it's a self-sabotage pattern around making it hard to have it the easy way if you understand what I mean. And that is, it's really annoying. You know, I can see myself in it, like observing, and it feels so annoying to me. At the same time, it feels shitty. And at the same time, I'm trying to get over it and through it by allowing, because there's always a message, you know, in what we're feeling, what we're resisting. So trying to see that. So we'll see how it goes next week. I keep on writing. Celebration or a gratitude or both, if you're feeling it? Um, Both. It's a separate step, I think. Another growth step. It's another another evolution level that's coming through. It is. And it is. It's not fully here yet, but now I can see it. And that is what I'm celebrating. It's a really big win. And with that, having managed to, like yesterday, I had another day that the morning was okay, but the rest of the day and in the evening, it got worse and worse and worse. And I couldn't shift it to really, I was like, okay, this, it feels like real anxiety, depression, but it's going to tell me something, right? Um, it came somehow overnight through this morning, but like, you know, like when you're birthing something, it's like the first foot is out, but then it flips back in. <laughs> so kind of like that, if you want. And then this morning was hard again, but something at some point, I'm like, okay, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't like all these, the silent things, the, the still things. And I put on ACDC again, <laughs> Thunderstruck, and that did something to, I don't know, it activated something, it brought something back to life. Then I went to the sauna and, and there was something else coming through, so I'm, I'm more, more seeing. And I felt actually, like yesterday and today, two bird meetings, I'd say. So it's the black bird came twice today. And a robin came yesterday and the day before, like really close when I was walking. Like they don't come that close usually, but it was like that close. It was just jumping along with me. And both are for massive transformation, massive spirituality, massive self-expression, massive, like that kind of thing. And that is what is coming through. I think as a baseline, it ultimately is calling me to fully live the spiritual part and live the like let fully go of all the logic, let fully go of everything all, like, you know, drastically. Full share. Thank you. And sometimes we shouldn't shift the feeling, you know, like it's, it's without any association or stigma or whatever to these lower feelings, there's always beautiful illumination in them. And, you know, sometimes we don't want to shift them at all. We just want to allow them and come right, through but even that even that didn't work yesterday i usually you know when i even that i was just like my whole i could not i haven't had anxiety like that in ages like everything in my body was like this and i, I couldn't make it let go not with warmth not with moving not with breathing not with just being not with i don't know 
it was but that's what i'm saying it won't necessarily go the only thing that i could do is just let it be exactly the way it was that yeah. sometimes is what we and and it can be extended and prolonged and again as soon as association and meaning comes in i'm i'm in a funk oh god what if there's no light at the end of the tunnel again it's all bullshit yeah all emotions are come in waves they all come in waves and you just gotta ride it <laughs> and that was one of the fears the top layer but i couldn't find i wanted to find what was underneath the fear to mm. get to the just allow it to be felt i love where your hands are though look look at where your hands are like they're, yeah, they're here now they're here you know yeah. and yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah i love it yeah trusting the process i had chata class today again and then mm -hmm. she's like okay how do you think you will express emotions and like for me my first answer in my head was like well of course through my eyes my face and words but obviously as a dancer she's like through your body <laughs> And that brought just tears to my eyes because I realized that was the way that I had completely not learned because it was blocked, because I, it wasn't allowed, because it was, you know, that was the part that was cut off. That was really emotional to let that, to have that realization and to let that go. And with that realizing how my body is learning, like relearning bit by bit, it's really baby steps and I see them. And at the same time, that is exactly what you say. I feel that even without the dance, you know, outside the class, like my hands and my arms start moving in a different way. I'm starting to use them with energy and with all of that in a different yeah. way than before. And that creates a different, creates different effects if you want. If there is an identity growing from you right now, if there is a level of leadership, if there is another level of alignment, if there is another level of power, what does that look like because you are going through this situation right now? I was like so much in this finding this what is the position like everything marketing if you want marketing offer that space sales somewhere in the side I have stopped the level that i had before on owning like the finance parts the um that dawned me this morning like even really showing up and owning the whole thing I'm doing as a business. You know, I was in there all the time, but there was so much focus on this. I was so busy with my own transformation and everything that was happening. You know, that I sat several times across the last month that I feel like I'm not getting back into the energy of like really just getting stuff done, but not from the hustle, but really in the in the I'm present, I'm on it, I'm owning it, it's mine like that. Is there any residual memory of this side of you this side of your energy operating in a way that has led you into dark places that has led you into places in the past that you wouldn't want to go to in the future that potentially is still sitting there and restricting the power of your masculine to help you to show up to say no and at the same time i feel my body is reacting but it's been reacting all the time i can't see right now yet where that is coming from if that is coming from the masculine or if that is something else like anything like emotional stuff my dad is popping up he doesn't understand what i'm doing that's weird he's like it's like he's trying to you know he's constantly moving a little bit forward and then backward are you able to shift into his energy and see how he's experiencing you he's afraid he's terrified it's like he's torn in between the he wanted to be there for me and provide a safety but he couldn't he says he wants to be f there for me now but he doesn't know how because he doesn't understand me he doesn't it feels for him so far away like he can't access me and where I'm moving for him doesn't feel safe. <sighs> well, this is a bit hard. Like I feel like I want to tell him that I'm his little girl and at the same time I'm a grown woman. 
but there was really there was hesitance to say I'm your little girl because there was on my end the I'm not trusting this fully coming up the whole right side of my body is tensing up again mm. you don't mind me saying as well the left is also strung up yeah it feels like it needs to protect what is the truth Hi everyone, so this is week five in the book project, Leading with Light, and I'm going to tell you this is crazy. I'm likewise excited, but I'm like literally a little bit, well not freaking yet, but getting a little nervous. I have not started really writing beyond the outline for the chapter, right, and my, my talking points, because that is the positive and the exciting part of it. There's so much going on inside, so I'm finding yet more more levels of clarity yesterday we had a call with um the publisher so so nice people so helpful and so appreciative i described it as like it feels currently like every day i'm downloading information i'm getting more clarity i'm, I'm so connected to the galaxy to the universe and my inner knowing my soul that like every day more information and new things are channeling in which is it's filling you know it's just all the puzzle pieces are coming together so that this huge thing talking about the new way of business this new earth way what does it actually mean to feel and sense and partially live fifth dimension world right where we're so super conscious and aware and we're sensing so many things but then what does it actually mean to bring this back down into business here in our world essentially it is it makes me smile a lot because essentially it is exactly what I'm talking about in my business, what I'm teaching people, what I'm coaching people through, right? right? Because it is finding way of expressing what is your soul's purpose. Bye, I see you next time. I have this two-fold question again. So it is, we might end in like a process, I'm not sure, and probably it will lead to the business solution for today. As they do, uh, yeah. So I found myself, look, now it's a bit better, but this morning, and I did the breath work this morning, I found myself really struggling, and I don't know what I should be doing. And likewise, I'm not sure what I'm blocking so that I'm always taking myself back to wherever. I've come so far as never, and now I'm supposed to tear it down again. Like, why? I saw why I was so afraid of having the success because there was there was one experience from a past life and the rest was all coming through collective babies having been cut out of the womb for like decades and ages and you know you burst something and you lose it right away because somebody's taking it and then I could trace it back to all my life you know every time Sports was a good example, as my parents tried to bring me into like five million different sports things. So it's like, she's gotta be good at something. Same in school, I was never sucking at anything, but I never got good at really, you know, I was always average plus a little bit. But there was never anything was like, I'm really good at. Like the vision board thing this morning, it gets the same pattern, you know? I saw myself at the beach, it was out there on ship, but it was out in the ocean, somewhere there. And I was at the beach and I couldn't get there. I started to paddle there, but I got back. And I'm like, I've shifted so many things. I've changed so many things. I've let go of so many things. Like, what more? What if the new beginning, what if you are seeing the sign around the new beginning through the lens of before instead of a new way of new beginning because where you go or where you don't go or won't go is to just stop paddling you know to just sit and to be on the water there's a wave on the water there's a current you know there's a flow that you don't necessarily always have to paddle to move just wait and see you know just allow are you resonating with judith's story unfolding 
I would love to hear what you are resonating with down in the comments. And if you are enjoying this documentary, A Baptism of Fire, subscribe at the button below and make sure you hit the notification bell so that you do not miss out on finding out whether their stories have a happy ending. What if this emotion is the breakdown that you're needing at a soul level to let in what is actually truth? I saw myself at the beach. It was out there on a ship, but it was out in the ocean, somewhere there. And I was at the beach and I couldn't get there. I started to paddle there, but I got back. On the water, there's a wave. On the water, there's a current, you know, there's a flow that you don't necessarily paddle. Because when you rest, you open. You open to receive, right? Yes, and I've been there a lot the last days. I'm not really exactly sure what got me off. It is healing the automatic. We sometimes can't know because it is automatic. And that's why bringing to it, even if it's over and over and over again, it's just that reminder, oh, yeah, okay, there's another way. What is my new way? When you go back, you completely lose that beautiful perception of, of what actually is and the way that we see it, right? Which is, you know, your content is on fire. There's people, like I I commented today to keep the comments going. Cause I was like, people are, people are commenting. She's bloody got this. But you don't see that when you close down, you don't, and, and then if you're not seeing it, you're not appreciating it. If you're not appreciating it, there's, there's no appreciative juju that just said, oh, we must be missing something here. We'll, we'll, we won't bother sending more in, right? It got me frustrated. I got really almost mad at myself. I'm like, what am I doing? You know, because um, it felt like the new kind of pattern to flee myself into because apparently something is still missing. And I know that this is, it's bullshit. I'm not really sure what it is. The only, the other thing I noticed is because yesterday, like in the um, breathwork session, as you kept emphasizing this, when you tap into the bliss, and I was, fuck, I was in everything, but I was not really in bliss. I still can't really get to bliss. Like there's micro moments where I feel good and there's expansiveness and, you know, I have all the connection and the vision and all of that. It just rather feels like I'm at peace. Which I'm is true. Sure <laughs> yeah, I know, it feels good. I know that's good. good. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'm not sure if this is actually still true. I don't know feeling and having joy so much more over the last 10 15 days compared to the whole like past five years judith that has to be learned too right because the body has it it remember don't don't fire it or wire it you lose it feeling we forget how to fucking feel we have to remember how to feel to feel safe to feel you know it's like we even have to practice that smelling the roses almost you know, I'm sharing content daily and here and there I'm pitching the accelerator. I started sharing a bit more in the beginning of introduction who I am, but then, you know, there was two people actually into yesterday for the first time. And that's what you've got going on right now. You'll have people binging your content because you're not selling at them because it is deep. It is, you know, interesting. There's so much shit on social media right now. Like you are not shit. You're interesting. You're different. You're compelling. I think there's one part of me that is just like a angry little kid that just like, fuck, but I just want people to reach out with this. I want to work with you. Can we do this? You know, I want to come into your world. I, oh, there's an element. I don't want to be begging them anymore to be working with me. So you get those baseline rhythms in and you just keep feeding it, but in peace and in joy and in lightness. You know, that it's new moon right now, right? So it's new intentions. And I set my intention. I set my like vision. That affirmation that I put into the my Facebook group, that was mine. That was what I had to tell myself. You know, I, I, I danced with it. I played with it. I, I ceremonied it. And we have to do this. We have to talk to ourselves. We have to talk it up. We have to get into that mm, 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 feeling of joy and lightness, even if it is complete fucking delusion. But the more you get yourself up, 
the more the reality comes up to meet you, right? It's just that if you go up and then you look down and go, for fuck's sake, it hasn't moved yet. And then it just goes, <laughs> it just feels you just sabotaged it. You got to keep floating and keep finding reasons to float and keep, you know, celebrating and thanking and, you know, it's sort of like, and this is what I'm saying. It's like a whole different in the moment experience of life, almost breathing, slowing down, experiencing, because I'm not going to play to the ego that says it's more important. I choose what's more important. It was interesting because I say all of that, but I got called out on, on a, a story today because I didn't want to go into the discomfort of doing a live video. I was like, oh, you know, I've got to, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. And the answer was, it'll take you five minutes, do it right now. And then I realized that I was sitting with the discomfort of, I don't know what to say. I won't know what. Old story, Claire, bullshit. Open your bloody mouth and the words will fall out. As soon as you catch yourself, you go into the new story. But if you sit with the bullshit, the bullshit will just keep, and you'll just be like, oh yeah, I need to like, so it's sort of like, what are your new stories? Write them down. It's like a new experience of life. You can write it out over and over again and then find that mm -mm -mm feeling in it. Of course, it's the same thing like last year and the year before and six months ago and three months ago and last week. I it's feel so like tired of it. I just want to get out of the other end. That yes. right there is a story and that's the, that's the paddle, Judith. That's the, like you're paddling. Whereas it's like, smell the goddamn roses right now because where you are at is beautiful. Be in it. What's stopping you from experiencing it fully, even if it doesn't feel like your entire unleashed potential? I'm feeling confused. I want you to sit in that boat and I want you to take me to the experience that you had where it felt like what you were seeing was way out there, way out there. I want you to take yourself into the boat in vision, in feeling. It's two scenarios. They're just coming in and out, in and out, interchanging. One is I'm not even in the boat. I'm standing in the be at the beach, feet on the in the water, just like a few centimeters. I'm just, I'm seeing the thing on the horizon. What's going on in your body? It's like having to give it up, like I can't have it. Do you believe that's a true story? Well, there is a part of me that does believe that. <sighs> Why do you believe that's so? Something around unfair, being unfair comes up. Somebody is taking my hand and pulling me away from the beach and it's like, but I can't see who. And it's like, yeah, no, no, but I want to be here. I want to go there. This is where I want to go. But the other person like, no, 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 come on, stop dreaming. It's not for you. So feeling into your feminine power, how do you want to respond to that? It doesn't know how to respond. It goes back into this. I don't want to be dominated. And I want my needs and my wants and my wishes to be seen and heard. I don't want someone else to decide for, for me. Steady your breath. Steady your posture. Breathe up again. So connect down with the earth. In this vision, I want you to sit down on the sand, feel the sand, feel the earth, feel the earth's energy running up through you as you breathe. With the sound of the waves, hear the sound of the waves, hear their rhythm, create peace and serenity. And with a completely open mind, with the curiosity of a child, look out to the horizon to place your hands on the waves. To imagine that just by moving your fingertips, you can bring that vision towards you. Slow up your breath, Judith. 
something inside still does not feel safe to just fucking sit there and have my hands on the water. Yeah. <laughs> You've placed your hand on your heart for a moment. And I want you to say thank you for seeing and feeling the truth of this unsafety. Feel into the gratitude of seeing the truth because it's reflecting and it's stealing away the present moment. You feel ready to find safety, true safety. Feel the water. Feel the innocence of the elements, the purity of the elements, the sand, the earth, the water, the sun, the air. So continue to breathe, steady breath in and out through the mouth. Just placing your focus on the horizon again, placing your hands on top of the water. Just feel that power you have in your hands to pull that horizon towards you. See getting bigger, feel it getting closer. Back right in front of me. How close can you touch it? right here and I'm already <sighs> like she got up she grew up it was a bigger version of her and she just stepped into it it's like a wall you know it's right in front of me it's like a wall but like a like an entrance more like a gate what is on the other side I don't know yet good question explore this vision you can take that entire practice into meditation when you feel the unsafety in your body. You go to the ground, you feel the sand, you feel the earth, you feel the energy, you feel connection, you feel all your senses. You bring that horizon towards you and you step in and each time you're going to explore a little further, a little deeper. Thank you. You're welcome. I've been doing all of those things all of the freaking time. I just wasn't sure, I don't know, something, whatever automated reaction pulled me that far out again. Look how quick you're coming back. This, this is new. This is the new way, you know? It's like, it's not, I'm going to fall out for weeks and weeks and weeks. It's, I'm going to fall out, I'm going to step back in. Yes. And you can, build, you can build that feeling of safety. And remember, you, you find safety in the words. Even just telling yourself, I'm completely safe, I'm completely connected, feel this beautiful sand, smell that beautiful sea, feel that beautiful sun. Oh, how beautiful. Words are so powerful. As long as you're breathing into the truth of the words at the same time, one of the reasons that I've taken up skateboarding is to find the, the that five-year-old's playful trust, you know, like to know that if I move and discover and like I can fall off, but I, I'm actually okay. You can, you can, whether it's headstands, handstands, rolls, you know, just feel into how can I remember that that playfulness, the innocence, because that's where a child finds find safety, isn't it? In absolute pure innocence. And you can re rediscover that, you can. Yeah, it's the two-year-old. I guess it's as well a lesson again of letting go of an idea of how I think it should be. Absolutely. And again, you can use affirmation. Start playing with the language of unpatterned potential, infinite possibilities. Get excited about that. That is when those doors are going to swing open and you're going to get the back door message. <laughs> when the doors are open, right? Yeah. And I know I will find that, you know, those marketing questions. <laughs> I know that shit. I'm teaching that shit. And the most powerful marketing comes from inspiration and you can't get inspiration when you're in your beta consciousness. 
and your brain waves are going too fast and your body doesn't feel safe and you're in a survival pattern. You can't, you can't. Interesting how long it can take to, you know, that whole journey does not like not complaining or not really resisting is really, it's more like, wow, interesting, you know, how many levels, how deep things go, how deeply why things can be, likewise how it can be shifted, you know, like the whole observing the whole thing. Which is why you have to sell yourself because, you know, it's starting to believe that you can be in front of somebody even who's earning a lot of money and this shit's still going on and they've got no idea how to fix it, but you do. So owning that, you know, wisdom from these rites of passage so don't be afraid to sell to them because you can move them forward from where they are. <sighs> Hello, my lovelies. It is week six of our Leaning with Light book project. What can I say? This week has been really emotional for me. It, is, it was the week with the deadline to hand in our chapters. I had another internal shift and up level, another piece of transformation through all of what was going on currently. There was the moon and there were several other things like inside of me wanting to come out. It had to do with another level of self-expression and writing the book has absolutely pushed buttons on that process. So no more hiding at another level more clarity on saying what I really want to say. Oh my goodness, there was resistance. It all came up. Um, then overnight, I got another download for what I'm supposed to be sharing here, like who I am at soul level. And that then I was strongly called to integrate that in the book as well. So I sat the next day and rewrote about half of the stuff. Essentially the whole business model is shifting at the moment so it is just it's a very interesting time but a really intense time and I feel a book project like this book project is absolutely contributing to pushing the right buttons I can say to to just get get the process going also the growth of the business end while we're obviously in the back end checking at okay how can we use the book as the final part and how does it connect to the client's journey once they enter our world so it's a lot of clarity it's a lot of clarity it requires to really deeper into the own processes of my business as well i sat in front of that before myself a lot of times not really knowing where to start but now how it is you know there's clear things to be weak so it's a good thing, even though sometimes it's really not comfortable to do so, or it's like, fuck, I don't want to do it. But, you know, probably when you got these things, you know, you got to do something at a certain point of time and deal with it. And just, you know, you allow yourself to get to the thing. It starts to unfold. I really, I found myself in the old pattern of shit. There's a deadline. I cannot miss the deadline because what will it mean if I miss the deadline and the old fear of failing and then being rejected, not being good enough again anymore, you know, all the stuff from the past, it creeped up, it really creeped up, and I was like, what is that? But it really got to me, and I talked to Claire this morning about it, and really just voicing it and saying as it is, and then letting it go, so that I allow myself, because I had helped myself back because of that, to just hand in the chapter a bit shortened and then ask the beautiful people from um, the publishing house to support me. So it was another step in the journey to allow support when it's there anyway, right? Because communication, expression, all of that, right? And it beautifully fit in with what I'm writing about anyways around self-expression and connecting to your purpose frequency and how you can then leverage that in the new way of doing business. So yeah, that was basically my week six. And now, now I just handed it in. I did it. I handed in the chapter. I'm curious to get feedback on yeah, what, what else I can change or how I can shorten or well, any other feedback.
Wow, 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 wow. Oh my goodness. And look who we have. Like, Judith, you need to wake me up. Like, I'm starting to, I'm starting to, I'm starting to drift now. <laughs> Hi. Hello. 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 Yeah, on your end, yeah, good morning on this end here. So I just got up basically. So this is the fresh start of my Saturday, but you guys, oh, especially it. you've been on here all day, I feel. <laughs> I know, and Facebook kicked us off. It must have just been like, yeah, nah, we cannot handle this. Um, yeah, but it's been amazing. It's been it's been so amazing. And you know, we just watched your episode of A Baptism of Fire. I saw and I have one question, Miss Judith. Go. What the fuck happened in Mexico? Because <laughs> that to me was the starting point of the most incredible ascension. And I said before your episode that as with every ascension, the awareness and the connection to what is really holding you back does not immediately mean that you are resolved it is just the doorway into the rites of passage that help you to resolve it which i think is what we saw in your um book journey so going back to that question like mm -hmm. share what happened in mexico in the retreat in mexico I love that question and also opening up with it because to me it is actually a full circle question. I just reflected on that yesterday, looking at where I have come to right now, especially the last four to six weeks again have been another up level of that. Yes. And when I looked at it, it, it all traced back to exactly January. Yeah. And the month I spent in Mexico and then specifically also these four days with you on retreat. So before I go into a bit more detail, the one thing that it had opened up and that started then there as a result was the light language is opening up. Yes. And that was another level of breaking free into who I really am. Wow. Into the soul that I really am. And I got answers to that question quite recently and confirmation. So gotten to that level now, if you want, October, November, what my true name is, what the true soul's name is. Wow. wow. That is really beautiful. So, but going back to January, I mean, what did we do with you, right? You called that neurosomatic retreat. And then, I mean, if you know what you, what that is, you can have an idea, but if you don't know, you'd be like, oh, what the fuck is yeah. that? Yeah. Right? So basically, if I want to sum it up, what you did with us, what you guided us through was a complete journey, multi-dimensional multi yeah. on energetic layers, on physical level, like combining everything that we are and opening wider. I mean, you always get to where you can get on your journey, but the purpose and the intention to allow each of us who was there to get at least one, if not more, and for me, it was definitely more than one step closer to breaking open to that inner core. Yeah. And that is what we do in this type of work, right? If we look at soul work, if we want to call it like that, you've got to break through and free all of these layers. And the thing is we're, we're so past these, what years ago used to be like the deeper layers. You know, when I started coaching like five years ago, the major focus I had was on the emotion end and the mindset end and these kind of things to break that open to access subconscious and create shifts and limiting beliefs and all the things that we know. But with the times that we're in right now, that is just, I could even say it's too slow or it's too surface yeah. because the energetics have shifted, consciousness has shifted. And the work we get to do to experience really, truly who we are. And that is what your work is about yeah. before you then tie it back to the business. But, you know, get to get to the core of who people are. And that is what you did with us in Mexico. Open that up right through the work. When we go through the somatics, when we integrate the body, we got to integrate, integrate the body. Otherwise, it's not possible. 
we store everything in here. The memories in here, the feelings are in here. As a shit ton to release <laughs> before you really get to the core, before you can really access it. Yeah. And then, in my words, described that is also what I'm talking about in the book the evolution journey that we walk through, right? We have a long period where we look backwards a lot to understand the trauma and understand all the things on all of these levels. But then at some point, there's like, like a saddle, like a turning point where it starts to move more forwards. And that is the journey when you start to rather learn to dance with fear through your evolution steps because you're moving rather forward than looking backwards and understanding and healing and capturing. But that, that is the work, essentially, I feel that you did on the retreat and that you did also on the online retreats I shared with you. And that's probably a huge part also in whichever way that you're going to be doing in Costa Rica, right? And, and that is beautiful because when we, we will always have, to my, uh, my opinion, the mix of sometimes there will be backlashes to past things or past lives again because we need to understand another thing. But then we're overall more on the ascension journey forwards of the evolution and that is then seeing what comes up as the next layer of resistance looking into what the fear that is naturally coming through then is just inviting us to see to understand to embody to integrate and then to take it and bring it into action in whatever you do and that is more or less just the game and the journey and sometimes it's scary as fuck but it is exactly and I guess that's why you also called this event trustful, right? Because you, you've got to fall. You've got to go into free yeah. fall, as scary as it is. As it is. Um, I definitely had tons of moments like that on the retreat. And then also then on the journey of this year, coming to where I am now. And from that very first moment, realizing in Mexico, like, our oh, light language, I had no idea what that is. I had never heard about that before. And then understanding, oh, this is coming through me. I'm apparently a channel of whatever it is. I had a night where I was just laying for about three hours and my whole, basically my whole face started to move my jaw. It was like someone needed to rearrange muscles and, you know, everything in here for it to, to be able to express these different languages. You know, those of you who listen, who speak different human languages, you know that like, for example, when I speak English, that language happens way more in the front of my mouth. When I speak German, it's way more in the back of my mouth. When I speak Spanish, that's even more in the front of the mouth. And with the light languages coming through, I figured there's different areas in my mouth that they come through too that have never been really used if I want. But obviously, you can use it if you train it. And that is what these ascension processes also provide for me. So, you know, sometimes I'm just laying there and I still have these things like the last weeks and nights when there's new activations. Because what I learned now is that apparently I can channel all of the light languages up there and the cosmic ones, like all of them. I've got the con confirmation multiple times now and more and more are coming through. But every few weeks I go through that thing again. I lay there in the night, mouth, body starts to move to open this up in order to be able to channel it through in the way that it sounds right if you want and sometimes i still feel like when you learn a new language you know and you get to the point where you can speak it but you still feel it's a little bit wobbly and it doesn't sound 100 percent right yet this is what it feels like for some of them and some of them run through even smoother now that is really a core thing that i can say that is very tangible and something that is 100 percent new on top versus i'd say the normal evolution that we run through where it's about opening up consciousness where it's about opening up your heart where you know it is letting go of certain fears or beliefs or patterns which definitely is also a result of the retreat work right no i think you're, you're right on the money like accessing these gifts because when the body is stuck in fear then we're in completely the wrong part of our brain to activate what is there waiting for us, you know, to make that beautiful divine connection. What you said, um, I'm not sure the exact words you just used before, ah, to channel through, right? You know, we've talked today about how you have to become a transparent window 
which mm -hmm. divine shines through, which means a hell of a lot of letting go. And usually, you know, we think about letting go, but the thing I think we don't think so much about is where we are actually attaching to material security at a really deep, unconscious level and how that deep unconscious level of attachment is sitting in our body. I, I felt that with you when we were in Mexico, you know, when we were, were in one of the ceremonies and the tension in your body, like the unconscious fear in your body as you began to allow it to illuminate to you and that beautiful process of allowing and releasing and I think not only did you look like an entirely different person when you sat up, but you said that across those few days, you even felt differently in your body, right? You felt more freedom than you'd felt in a really long time. Yeah, true. It is. Because the work, I mean, we've we've been doing body work, if you want, for more, more or less four days, right? Yeah. And yeah. that is, you know, if you just, if you just, Think about that when usually even if you do daily practices of breathing or any of these things what do you do you do maybe half an hour an hour maybe you know if you really dedicate time maybe you do two hours but when do you really create space usually you don't unless you really join an event like that to really do that and i've oh, just seen yeah. that two weeks ago i ran an own retreat down here in germany nice. with two of my vip clients then and that was basically the same thing, you know, even for me holding the retreat. And I'm curious to hear how your experience then is, if that is similar. You know, I was completely in that energy and in that vibration, even though I was delivering for them and providing for them and also channeling through like you did. Um, it is such a different space. And, you know, I keep telling people, you know, go to retreats here and there, you know, create that space, go, because you won't do that. And it is. I won't say maybe it's impossible, I don't know, but it is hard to really create that for yourself because yeah. the group energy is something that carries part of the magic. Yeah. But then also having having this space location-wise and having the dedication for yourself to be in there. I mean, I don't know, how long do you do Costa Rica? It's another four days as well? Five, five days. Five even. See, yeah. that is, you know, when do you create like a full week to be with you? And to allow your body to release, to understand, to learn, and to integrate the wisdom that you carry inside anyway. The activation of DNA, the activation of soul, the activation of, I'm, you know, I call it pioneer wisdom, but you can call that whatever you want. But it is just the knowing that you have deep inside. And that is what is the beautiful magic of these kind of yeah, retreats versus doing the work daily or being with a coach or mentor weekly or something, which is amazing. But if you can create these spaces once or twice a year, that is just accelerating everything that you want and opening up at such a different level. And as you see from, you know, the experience in January I had, we're talking now it's beginning of November and all of that that has unfolded from it. I mean, obviously I've been keep going on going the steps, right? I've been on the work still. But if you look at what the baseline it was that it has created for me to then keep on doing the things and allowing to open up, that is just, I don't know where that would have taken me if I had not gone there. Mm. I mean, I would have obviously evolved, just probably not to that extent, right? And that is what we then also saw in the in the book journey from what you just played before from the episode because that was summertime and that was another profound kind of turning point for me if you want when you just sat you know sometimes you gotta break down lose it all but then you can look into all of these areas you look into relationships you look into money you look into business overall you look into you personally we are constantly losing a part of ourselves because it has to die and I've died so many times this year in all of these. Yeah, it is. We had a very crucial point in our marriage. It was a deep turning point. It was on question. Um, financially, it was very tough in the middle of the year. I had really struggles that I haven't had in years. It turned all. 
and it put light on where I had to look at and where I had to make shifts that I hadn't made before. Personally, I died on so many levels, letting go of these old versions, this life, but then also what has come through over the last weeks a lot from the evolution of speaking more and expressing obviously all of these channels. I figured one of the blocks was in some past life, I was um, these, gosh, I keep forgetting the English word, you know, these guys back in times with kings and queens that were there to entertain the king and the queen with these funny hats, you know, chest. Chest, exactly. Yeah. And I was one of those, but that person had not originally been that, but it had been like a white magician, a very powerful white magician, which had then been, or had his tongue chopped off and made the jest so he couldn't practice his magic and he was to obey the king and queen's order and he wasn't allowed to practice anymore because it was then you know like the witches burned or the heads chopped off kind of thing just in a different version but the tongue was cut off so and i felt that that not being yeah. able to speak and to express and then i got to release that beautifully and bring him back and through that process was when opened up because the core soul of, that was in him was me in that light being called Mali that I got to understand that who I am. That is how I got to the core of that. And it's all about the expression, right? And this is what we're talking about all of the time here, authenticity and expression. But we can only access, and that's the same for me. You can look at all of the steps of my journey Going back to Mexico, the expression, as you said, my body felt different. I did feel different. I look different. We store all of these blocks inside on all of these levels. And there's more things that we don't know than we know yeah. until we know. Yeah. And we uncover that. Yeah. I mean, let, let's, let's, because, I mean, we've both been in a very business oriented mastermind and in business programs where is the room to sit in and explore these you know this dimensional aspect of ourselves that is playing through the present day I was I was I was talking to somebody the the other night and just in flow of this conversation and then these words came through and I literally went from here to the floor I felt sick I felt anxious I said stop this um something's coming up and they're like what is coming up <laughs> you know and I, I closed my eyes and I just began to breathe into this feeling and I said death mm. and mm. they're like go on <laughs> And I'm allowing it and I'm feel like I'm literally feeling like I'm I want to be sick. Like I don't want I don't want to see what my body is bringing. I could feel it. My body was bringing up. And I've had a few experiences like I shared with the new moon ceremony that I did early in, in the year. And I was walking towards my higher self and I would felt like I'd been shot through the heart. Whoa. And it was it was a past life experience of being stabbed mm -hmm. and not only just stabbed, but. I think I was stabbed by my one true love <laughs> and wow. like, you know, I was just, it was literally just three words that catalyzed this feeling in my body and knowing to travel journey with these feelings and allow the vision to come through and to let go of fear and find the wisdom. I was able to really understand myself at a deeper level. And I think that's what you've done so profoundly in the way that you have been able to invest so much time into retreats, into the mastermind program, into your own practice, to open this space, to be fully open to what is coming through, to journey with these feelings and the visions that they open up. And this plays directly into your expression the 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 brand expression like I don't think you could have invested like twenty thousand dollars into some branding coach or like marketing specialist to do what you have done with your branding this year I mean it is it's mind-blowing dude like it's mind-blowing it's so beautiful it's so aligned it's so you know 
it's actually really vulnerable too because you've taken a leap of faith into a very very niche area that you in lots of ways to your existing brand but it is it is not been in any sense of form uh force or push it is just literally been channel you can see that it's just channeling through you in absolute pure divine creativity I, I mean talk to me about that talk to me about that it's epic yeah it is and that is what i'm what I've learned to incorporate, I have to find my way this year in how I'm teaching business and how I'm doing that and bringing that through as well. So it was in parallel, if you want, this new way of doing that because we are in this new earth time. Yeah. And that requires a different approach to marketing, to sales, to business models overall. The way you look at business, especially in the bubble that we are in, it is service-based and it's people-oriented. And that is a different game versus doing e-commerce, right? That's a, this has changed as well. And I feel I might tap into that next year again, maybe <laughs> closing another loop, but let's stick to our body here. Um, what has changed to me in the most profound way in this industry, and especially if we are online, most people today are online doing this, right? Like we, we are marketing online and we're selling online and what has changed because everyone is in this higher levels of consciousness and awareness, it has unconsciously influenced and also changed the way people take decisions. Yeah. And how they connect. Yeah. And that is even if it's unconscious on their end, as the person that is marketing and talking through content and talking is that live or written or whatever it is, but what you are marketing needs to consider all of these levels and this is where multi-dimensionality in business and in marketing and sales comes through as well yeah and this is the reason why what worked last year and the years before all these templates and if you just apply pure strategy it's just not working yeah. because people smell a mile against the wind if you you know if you are just yeah, 100 plugging in, yeah plugging and playing the damn dm script somebody gave you or you know the template for what to say in a post, you know, if you get a structure, how to write copy and you only, you know, you only switch maybe yeah. five words because then it's your branding or your offer or something like that. If that is the only thing that you do, people won't buy because yeah. they get that it's not really coming through you. You can use the structures, right? You can use that to understand for yourself the logic of how you sell, of how you talk to people, right? That is, there's a lot of psychology in this as well, overall. Yeah but it's it's no use if you just apply that from logic and this is the the gap that so many people don't get we yes. are in this time where we have this fifth dimension and the 3d here but you've got to bring the 5d down here however you want to call that if that is about sacred union you can look at it from that space you can say five or 3d you can say it is the male and the female principles bound together energetically in expression mm. whatever you want to say it is the oneness that needs to come through to you and and in the content and it can only come through yeah in if that's visuals if that's copy if that's live when you speak you know we we need to go away from having five million slides in canva or you know having 16 post-its here on i don't have any post-its or notes here yeah. I know when I'm speaking, it's just coming through. You can just ask me any question. I know that I will know what to say because I'm trusting that. Well, I was going to say, you, you. I mean, the title of today's event, Trustful, you trust that. You trust yourself. And that's huge, right? Because we've talked about that today, how ultimately we don't trust ourselves. And it's beautiful that you've talked just then into the the masculine feminine energies because i guess we've seen this industry of pushing the divine feminine you know and um and then on the other side i'm sure there's been people pushing the divine masculine but what we want to see is is the fact that they are equally powerful in their own right and obviously they complement each other in how they help us to have expression but that power is something that is huge and i think actually we don't trust that power we don't trust that infinite 
like you know you you feel into um yeah I mean yeah like creativity can create or destroy it's like do we trust ourselves do we really trust the responsibility that we have to I don't know you might want to say get it right not destroy but also not destroy this beautiful safe secure reality illusion that we live in right it all comes down to trust and I think oh sorry go yeah go on I think I was gonna say I think you found like a, a really significantly deep level of trust this year so I do I did. I hand that over handing that ball across yeah I did I did and looking back I can say I definitely had to because otherwise this would all would not be possible and if I bring that back to the marketing end this is why sometimes when people come to me they usually come to work with me when they are at that point having gone through evolution themselves and they're looking for this but they're stuck in the strategies and then they don't get what is their next level usually they're running if you look at that picture of a box that was the old world that they were operating in, which was fine until the point when they opened up and expanded in their consciousness and their being. And but with that expanded version, they're still trying to operate here. And that is it's just not working anymore on so many different levels. And this is one it doesn't come and connect to the marketing end and to complementing on what you said, adding, you know, when, when I look at marketing over the last years, especially in this online space, we came from this massive area, what everyone here calls like the bro marketing approach, right? This very male, masculine, pushy kind of thing. Then came a wave that was like the first wave I feel it was just called emotional marketing. You know, it was the feminine counterpart, very emotional, very flowy, very soft, a bit overdone if you want also, <laughs> yeah. you know? But that, then the next, the last wave, I feel, is what then was called last year, probably, or maybe year before, attraction marketing, mm. which is amazing, comma, but the thing is, it doesn't work if you don't trust. You can't attract, and you, you know, you can copy paste the best converting posts from somebody else who's killing it with it, but who is completely connected inside, completely intentionally focused and present and in trust you take the same thing add your words your branding your offer nothing happens if you don't trust because you can't attract from a space of scarcity yeah and that is why i i knew that but that is what part of my journey this year was about as well to get to that point and this is then how i looking at attraction marketing i'm like okay but what is the next level now because we have this fifth dimension and you know we are coming more and more through us and our soul side rather than through the human side of the brain and even the emotions and the body's mastery of that, yes. But how do we create? That comes from the soul side, it right? Does. And so I call that reverse engineer marketing. So we're starting from you. We got to bring in you so that in the end, you get to attraction marketing if you want, if you want to still call it like that. But you can't get there if you still operate on scarcity on any level and on not trusting either that it's safe to be you, that it's safe to just be, that it is safe to express yourself. That is a huge part of my story based on the experiences of this lifetime. But then also like when I look back to past lives, that was all about like, just look at the jest with the tongue cut off. It wasn't safe to express. It, yeah. So, and that is, that is the journey that we need to walk through. And then when you get to your inner truth, when you get to the core of what really is your truth and you feel safer and safer to express it, you're finding the words to say, then this is what comes through in your marketing. And then your content starts to feel authentic again. Mm. If you then apply a few of these like clever things and smart things from psychology or you use the structures, you know, somebody gave you and you infuse both, boom, that is when it's really working. 100%. You know, like, I'd love to talk into this. Um, it's it's not safe to express. And that that's what we have seen, you know, since COVID, since people sort of tried to have a voice and tried to have expression. We have seen platform censorship. We have seen cancel culture. We have seen shaming. 
I mean, it is insane. We have seen Elon Musk invest $40 billion into a social media platform so that people can actually share stuff without censorship on it. So, you know, it isn't safe to express. So as as a marketer, as a creator, as a, you know, a light leader right now, this is really important. This overcoming your fear is absolutely important because what we're seeing on the other side is this beautifully subtle, fucking scary overtaking of our expression by chat GPT, by other, you know, AI that is there to just come it's the unhealthy masculine fucking like in absolute you know armor i'll just i'll just step in and let me take that from you and let me express that for you let me sprinkle my my fairy dust on your canva post let me you know summarize this in your email which is in our fear a very easy way to escape the discomfort of the journey it takes to connect with your ability to express and I think we're in a very dangerous place in terms of how we navigate forward with this, because I see it as this beautiful opportunity as light leaders to get over these fears and to connect with our soul side and to express through that in full light, radical expression. But we've got to start doing it. We have got to start doing it. More of us have got to start doing it because I think it could be so easy for just the next person and the next person and the next person. And they're saying with AI that, you know, uh, there's going to be like 100,000 books published a day and people wouldn't even need to be able to put a sentence together. Music is going to be created without even a singer or a, movies are going to be rewritten. It's like, I mean, it's insane. It's insane. What, like, talk to me on this. What are your feels? What, I love what, that you opened this. What are you channeling oh. on this? <laughs> yeah, I can see. <laughs> and I love that this is coming through because it it divinely I'm coming from one other side, but I get back to this one. When I was on the retreat with my clients two weeks ago, we did I was called to up front to do a constellation work with them on our country here. Wow. So I got I got this channel through to for Germany, really for the land, for the ground, and for the collective to do the setup. And so I sat with the question, okay, what is the question that we want to ask in there? So what is needed that we look at? What is the aspect of it? The question that I got through that we then put into the constellation setup was how can we bring in more love and peace into this country, really in the land, but also in the collective. Mm -hmm. And what we saw, and then I tapped into, okay, which elements do we need? What do we need to look at? And then obviously we had the land itself. We had the collective here of the people. What then came through was as the collective as well, both world wars, as the history of our country. Yeah. We had the German angst, the fear, and guilt. Wow. That was very powerful. And what then through the process came through the guilt required and requested the media to come in the media as a whole and wow. i was like oh now i'm getting curious i'm like okay wow. well, it, it, it was so interesting um and then the media came in and it was it came in you know and then i stepped into the energy of the media and what it the first thing i got was like you know it came in like this bro Gosh, I'm rocking the show here, you know. Everyone's just dancing the way I want. <laughs> you know, if I say fear, everyone's on fear. If I say dance, everyone's going to dance. Like that kind of an attitude was that. Then we cleared a lot of things. And in the end result, you know, I had my participants and myself join the setup as ourselves to understand what kind of a message or service we could have our own on our own. And I stepped in as well and something pulled me, the media wanted me to come over. So I stepped over to the media and I'm like, oh, what, what is it? You know, why do I have such a strong connection here apparently to the media? Mm -hmm. And then I, it dawned to me and the whole energy shifted around it and was like, 
the strong invitation to stop looking at the media as the externalized enemy that is out there, the huge thing that you know is dominating over everything, where you as the small person are powerless against if you want, like it was in the past. You know, you couldn't publish anything yourself. You couldn't really, but today, and then I got this calling, like shift that around and also with others and for others and take them. And that closes the circle back to AI because it is about expression. Use, and that is media in the broader sense as well. Because yeah. if you talk about movies, if you talk about um, songs, that is all media in the broader sense. And that is expression. And the strong invitation I got was be part of it, create it. Understand that you have the power to change that because you will create it. It's not them just giving it to you and you have to swallow it down. But if you don't like it, change it because you have the power. And this is the overall call of the time that we're in right now that I'm feeling that we're all called to step back into sovereignty. And then if I, if I bring it back to AI, I hear you on everything that you say and it's a very fine line and I feel we have to get to these higher levels of consciousness to be able to use the technology in a way that it's serving so that it is not stepping into that role that you described where it is dominating because okay. then it will become just the new version of the old level of media when TV and newspapers and radio stations in the 80s, 70s and whenever dominated everything and nobody could have an influence on that. Maybe if you got lucky at some point, you were famous, you got invited to a radio interview. But well, you know, that's not the same as today. We can use the internet, we can do podcasts, we can do all of these things. We can publish books. We have a voice. We have a fucking voice. And we get to influence that. Yeah. We get to influence that if we use our voice. And I yeah. think, you know, that that's that's the thing, isn't it? It's just so easy to to feel your discomfort and and swallow your voice and i'm talking to myself right here right now you know like all of these big bold moves i've taken in my business and in in my expression and in my creativity and then coming to this place of realization that within my four walls i squashed my voice I had a fear of being fully seen, you know, so, and, and that was, that, that was actually quite unconscious, just like, again, going into your episode, just, you know, when, when, once you see it, you can't unsee it, but sometimes seeing it, it's there, it's like the fucking huge elephant in the room, but you don't see it because things have always been that way and you've always felt that way and, you know, and, and that, that level of discomfort to express your truth, you know, to share it. It's, it's not easy. I know what makes it easier is this journey that you've talked about today in this interview, right? And that is just continuously connecting with the authentic truth of yourself, getting into this right hand, beautiful, creative part of the brain where you see another perception You've just shared such a beautiful perception of the whole AI media, social media thing that we don't get from what we know. We don't get from our logical root of the left-hand side of the brain, but we do get it when we allow ourselves to let go of that. And actually, yeah, like, I mean, it's so, so, so powerful. And just those words, if we have a voice. It is, and it is true, we can sit in these, you know, if that is the constellation work, if you sat in breath work, if we are on the retreats, we're in these spaces where we're completely in that. And if we allow to open yes. up and then we have the experience and that is beautiful. And then you come back into reality, <laughs> into your everyday life and you get to apply. And that is hardly and wildly discomfort. That is so uncomfortable. Yeah. But that is where you need to, you know, do that. And about the self-expression I had the same experience like when I said also my relationship with my husband this year like a few months ago that was tough and I had figured the same thing I was holding back this whole more you know the work that I do to the extent and I 
I even used, I caught myself using different words. I was hiding what I would have said to you or even online, you know, on my social media in public was a different language compared to when I was with him because I was dimming myself down so that I was thinking I needed to match a certain level over there. Mm. And then I addressed that and it was really hard. And then obviously the conversation was hard yeah. around that. But at, at some point he was like, you know, he then at some point broke open beautifully. It was hard for him as well. And then it was one of the most beautiful sens sentences I heard from him. I was like, you know, but, but then I see you over there and you are in fairyland and I can't get in because I don't have a moonstone. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my God. Yeah, but that's what I mean. You know, you gotta have these discussions, and it doesn't always have to be like your your romantic relationship. It's it's any kind of relationship where you are. If that is your inner circle, if that is your family, if that is you know, you gotta find a way to allow to express who you are, and that accounts likewise for your marketing. Yeah. If you're trying to be the copy of somebody with a touch of yourself, forget. Yeah, forget it. People do sense it. Yes. You don't know how many. DMs I've got, you know, when I do reach out and people know now that I do reach out through DMs connecting. Yeah. I'm not selling straight, but I'm connecting. And there was a lot of DMs after the connection message, which people usually really love, but then they come back and it's like, don't you start selling something at me? I smell that a mile against the wind. And I'm like, yeah, I know. <laughs> you know it is people know. So don't assume that they don't know. They yeah. do. Oh, they hell do. yeah. Hundred. I mean, authenticity has an energy. Like when I, um, and I, I've experienced this a lot recently, and this has come from me, you know, this fullness, this wholeness, this radical acceptance of everything that I am. And I found myself in these randomly deep conversations where it's like that conversation that conversation would never have arrived to me in my, my inauthenticity and I sat at a coffee table with a stranger um being like rang up by some guy that saw me on the soma breath website and ending up sitting with him in a coffee shop and just having the most intense conversation um the retreat that I went to recently where I was in a room room full of people that was just so beautiful and I, I I tell you what I notice about these experiences these immersions is how much it easy how much easier it is to commit to your expression when you've been through one of these experiences because we've all had the coach like you say have the coach have that space once a week do the daily practice where we get that little sense of intention to do something differently and it's lost right? We get into our robot fashion, back into daily life after the breath work, and we just let that intention slip. But there's something about immersing yourself for a number of days in these experiences where it lodges, the intention lodges itself within so deeply. You become so, um, you, you become the energy of it, don't you? And it can only, like, we know that energy can only ascend and it, it ascends, you know, it, there is no way that you cannot say those words or you cannot do those things. It just burns within you. And I believe that that's our creativity burning in there and that it's beautiful energy is burning away the resistance that we have. You know, that is the magic of the human body is or the, the magic of the energy that sits within the human body is that this beautiful serpent fire can actually burn away some of this resistance that we have if we activate it. Right. If we get it, if we get it spiraling and circling and moving, it's doing some of the heavy lifting for us. Allowing us to express, allowing us to communicate and the difference that that makes in your business is 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 huge. It's huge. I think it's one of the number one blocks for people is how they trust themselves to to really allow all of themselves to come through. No, no limits, no bending, no squashing and no fitting in these bloody boxes. It is. And the thing is, I'm noticing that 
those people who've been on this path of their personal evolution for a little while, they tend to think that, oh, I've covered that. Oh, shit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've covered that. So give me now the strategy because uh, there must be a strategic reason why my business is not flying yet or why I'm not growing from the plateau that I'm at. You know, yeah. they figured out the baseline. They, you know, get some sales going. They understand what their work is doing. But the next level is not coming because they think it is just about the business end. And yeah, okay, maybe I need to clear another emotion. That's okay. <laughs> you know, it's not. It's not. It's a symbiosis of an upward spiraling continuous evolution that we're going through. And that is as we're in, in doing what we're doing here, you know, again, e-commerce, different situation. But as long as you are part of your brand and your delivery and your world that you're creating in the first place, you're creating a brand. Yeah. And that is, if that is a personal brand that you're creating. You've got to bring in you continuously because yeah. otherwise there's a disconnect. And the further we go and evolve, the more this disconnect will be noticed by other people, consciously or unconsciously. Yeah. And then again, we're back into purchasing decisions and the process how somebody takes a decision. Then they won't choose you or it takes a hell lot of longer time. And they need maybe three years of experience with you following you along, right? But mm -hmm. it's not necessary if you switch the fl uh, flip the switch. I love that. I think I think you said it before, right? It's like it's not only um, being unconsciously picked up by them; you're unconsciously picking it up. Like you're you're feeling this 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 like you feel it, right? It's like a, a disconnect, a misalignment, and then the logical mind goes to, oh yeah, so I need to, you know, like like you say, like figure out the vision, what it looks like blah, 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 all this crap. And actually, no, it's like, we actually have to sit in the discomfort of the misalignment and allow it to bring its beautiful message through, you know, allow those emotions to move so that we can see the glimmers of what is truth for us. I actually had a beautiful experience of exactly that just this week. You know, actually, I, I've had a hard time in the last few months seeing the next level I knew that I was getting to my next level because we always know that we're getting there because things get wildly uncomfortable, right? <laughs> the the, yes. the prickly heat, like you guys went through, you get the prickly heat going on. I was like, oh, I know it's right there, but I couldn't see, I couldn't see what it looked like. And what I've realized in the last couple of weeks is just how much fear there was that was blocking that vision. And I allowed myself to go into this fear. I actually allowed my entire foundations to fall away in feeling to that feeling of actually or actually having nothing nothing just 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 being and and all of the emotions that came with that you know the fear the loss the grief the whatever was coming through and I got to this place and it was like it was like light cracking through. It was like somebody had hammered a big stone and I saw visions of myself that I hadn't seen previously that felt so true, that felt so aligned. And it's from these glimmers, it's from this vision, that's where we can take action and the action becomes inspired and there's a behind the action as well isn't it you know we we go to the strategy we go to the logical way but then we sit in resistance because we don't feel like it we don't feel like doing it and we procrastinate we find all the reasons under the sun you know and and it's like if we could just allow ourselves to not be so convinced that we've healed everything that convinced that we we know ourselves be open to the fact that we are this beautiful deep mystery and we're constantly being gifted insights into it that we can unfold, that we can unravel, that we can um, use to just become more of ourselves and, and more aligned on our soul's path as well. Because that seed is written, you know, that, that destiny is divine. And I think we have to take our left hand brain completely out of the puzzle of solving that. I, I mean, I used to call myself the soul goal coach. Like I, I mean, re, I mean, I did used to help people tap in to find their soul goal, but I think we even need to take that control off and just uh, like fully surrender to what is unfolding and allow ourselves, I call it dynamic receptivity in every moment. Like when you are channeling, when you're in the moment of your retreat and you're channeling this constellation for your 
for your city. Like that's so beautiful. But so many people would have fear that the retreat's going to fall apart. The event, what, what if they're silent? What if, you know, and they're, and they're clinging to a plan, like with a death grip. And what are we missing there in opportunity mm -hmm. for divine coincidence? Quantum like it's just magic. the people, you know. I mean, I've I've been in this industry here locally in Germany of all of these kind of events, seminars, retreats, you know, before the world closed down. I, I was very involved in that. So myself as a participant, but also as like a co-trainer, and you know, so I've been, been through this whole like how you do these things, right? Whether it's like a one-day thing or a three or four day thing with you know, exercises all the night through, or yes or no, like the whole architecture of that kind of Tony Robbins style amended kind of, you know, I've done all of these kind of things and I've been like trained on this, how to set these things up. And for the retreat I just did, and I feel that is how you approach this as well, at least how I felt from the receiving end is you set an intention. And obviously I had, and I, I'm sure you had, an idea of the flow that you want the participants to have throughout the experience of the days. Right. So that is what I had. And from that, I mean, mine was quick now. It was like Friday night until Sunday noonish time. But for this time, I had notes maybe on two pages and that also included like the playlist, the track. So I didn't have to look it up. It was just notes on the, okay, now we're in the section, two or three bullet points of the, major things that I felt were important for me just as a reminder. And I've done all of that. I've done ceremonies, I did cacao ceremony, like all of these things with them. There was no script. There was no, now I have to say this. Now I have to do this. And it's just perfectly unfolded all of that through the whole flow. And that is exactly the result of what you just said. And you can transfer that into anything that you do in your business, whether that is a full day-ish retreat, full week retreat, and the flow and orchestrating that, going away from thinking. And it also caters into, I mean, what we're doing right now, we're recording also a podcast, right? And I see the same when I'm currently re -rec I'm recording with my co-host for our podcast that's launching pretty soon. Yeah. But it's the same thing. You know, we dedicated this podcast to doing it like the new way. We don't do scripts. We tap into intuition beforehand, connect both our energies, and then we go from there. And this is how all of the episodes come through. It's just like the conversation we're having right now. We know we had a topic and like a direction to go, a few things, but that's it. That's it. But you got to come to that inner connection. Again, we're coming back to the trust. Yeah. And to allowing to know what is coming through. And you can't think your way through that. You can't. You will yeah. never get there. It's just going to stress the fuck out of you <laughs> because then you're not present and then your mind wanders off and, oh, but what was the next thing I have to say? Where's my notes? And then I miss what you say, so I can't really respond. And then there's no real conversation. Then there's yeah. no connection. Then you have a disconnect. That, that, that's, that's important because you, if you're a light leader, if you're, a transformational coach if you're a healer if you're a shaman if whatever whatever the hell you're doing it's like if you are not in the flow of the person stood in front of you then you're limiting the impact that you can have on them if you're strapped to your notes and strapped to your plan and and and, and I mean even in your content too because we are connected we are in co-creation we can feel we can feel the energy of the person that we're helping and we need to respond in the moment to what comes through like i say in person and a retreat in a an event online in a in an in-person retreat we have to be in the flow of our client um and i think what i'm seeing with social media as well is the change there um you know if we look at the kind of if we look at influencers are doing really really well I think it's because we're actually leading that algorithm with how we're consuming content because social media has become such a fundamental part of our life. You know, I celebrated giving up TV, but I probably use social media like TV in, in some ways. You know, I'll sit and I'll watch my one championship clips and my UFC and I'll jump on to Aubrey Marcus's podcast and Joe Rogan on Spotify, right? I'll, I'll fill spaces of time 
but I'm not filling it with the kind of content that I used to fill it with, which was very much seeking something. It's more now that I'm seeking to feel a connection and to um, expand you know, and I think a lot of people are in that space. They've had this spiritual awakening. They are aware that there are alternative ways of seeing things, doing things, being, and they're looking to find their way into people's worlds and be in that space and absorb what is coming through, what is channeling through these people in these conversations, you know, in these videos, in these um creations one of my one of my one of my mentors had a massive pivot for this reason last year and it's completely changed the face of her business her business does not look the same this year as it did last year because again she realized that she wanted to express differently she didn't want to just keep churning out this fucking value content and how to do content and she actually went into documentaries and she won a big film award for her documentary. And, you know, it's, yeah, the documentary was on cancel culture. So it was really, really good. Um, but, yeah, there's this essence of creativity that is that is fresh, that is exciting. And I think if you, number one, want to avoid being swallowed up by AI, but number two, <laughs> guide how AI rolls out. And number three, like really connect with your, your person, your ideal client. You've got to fall into this flow of crea of creativity. You've got to ra ride this creative wave of chaos, and it's going to come from trust. My final question, when you saw that word trustful for the event, and especially because I know, I mean, I know for you walking out of the retreat, I feel like I'm getting some like really deep um, love <laughs> for you right now. Like, I can hear it. It's coming I'm, through. It is like it's like oozing out. So I just remember this 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 awakening that you had to how how you were trying to control, how you were fixed in certain ways on certain things, and you set this fucking profound intention to let go. And I remember that you had this vision of a car flying down a hill, was it? Yeah, was it? I yeah, I hadn't thought about that for a while, but yes. Had your hands on the wheel, and then I think you dreamed it again, and you just you let go, and you let the car just... I'm getting goosebumps remembering just, and this was reflecting in how you began to live life, how I saw you let go, how I saw you let go of the hours that you were doing, how I saw you let go of the strategy that you were holding on to. I saw you let go of so much and it was really beautiful. So I really want to hear from, from your experience when you saw the name of the event, Trustful, like what, what did that word mean to you and mean to the experience that you've had? I love that question because actually um, the very first reaction and it was the complete logic brain reaction was like, what does she mean? <laughs> Can I just say all of these comments are like, I love Judith. I love Judith. Oh my God, I love Judith. It's like popping up left or right. So the love is everywhere. <laughs> it's coming through everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I had goosebumps when you when you were talking. So I'm feeling that from everyone. Thank you. So I'll, I'll talk to that in a second. Um, but that was like literally if you asked. And honestly, the very first millisecond reaction was, what does she mean with that? <clears throat> but I want to come back to the retreat first and what you just said to be with your clients when you are really working with them, especially then if it is offline in person, but obviously it is if it is content, but then as well, because when you talked about Mexico, what came through as a memory right now was how beautifully you were working in our energy and then specifically in mine, because you did tap into the field of all of us then, obviously with permission, but you did do that and you were in there with me and that I could see you, I could feel you. And that was in a way you were supporting and orchestrating, like guiding in there so that the scene that you just described with the car, and I had that and that was like the fear of it was completely crashing down like a very deep open i couldn't even see where it was falling into and having the hands on the wheel like really tight 
that was the first version of it and was so afraid because I couldn't see where I was falling and the car was going. Obviously, I had no control about the car. I had no control about where it was going and I couldn't even see how I was dying. You know, it was this, please at least show me how I'm dying now, where I'm going. <laughs> yeah. Like these were the things that I was perceiving then until the next version came and I had let go of that and I could just, I let go of the hands of the wheel including letting go of caring where I was falling. And from that, the light came through, basically. And then it, it happened to what you just said. You know, you need that inner shift and the inner decision and the inner choice to let go of the pattern. In my case, it was control. And that is something I, I recommend everyone to move through through these layers because control is what's keeping us back, right? but then can come into reality in all of the areas of your life. Because inside at the deepest level, at the root, at the core, is where you make the shift. But then it is coming into reality bit by bit and it shows up in your reality as the mirror of your internal shift. It will be, feel uncomfortable again until you implemented it full, but that is how the game just plays, right? Yeah. And then moving back to the trust for part, so for me, it means letting go in a way, and it might sound illogical, but in a way, letting go of trusting what you think you know. Oh. <laughs> because oh. it is not. Yes. Yeah. Letting go of trusting what you think you know to be true. Because it is just the outer reality that you see of the perception that you have in that moment. And what if, if you let that go and allow more perspectives, something happens, like you just said, you know, when you look at your next level of business, you need to crack this open because you don't know what else is in there. 100%. And I just did that this week. We closed off with a client and she was in a very similar position. And that is the one when you saw my stories, she sent me flowers. I'm like, oh my goodness, saying how amazing that was where we got out now for her with the new business model and the next level of that. And now she's going to revolutionize the whole entertainment industry. <laughs> you know, it went wow. there. Yeah, in ways that she never thought because she was trapped in these should, but it should be this way, but it, sh it should scale that way. I should, you know, that must be the next step. And it was so misaligned. And we completely dropped that and allowed exactly that to trust not anymore what we think to be true in the reality, but instead allowing the discomfort of not knowing where we're falling 100%. because then we rise. We had this conversation, Raywin and I actually, um, this week, you know, <sighs> when you let go like that, when you let go of everything you're attaching yourself to. And I said to her, it feels like you're like literally falling to the bottom of the ocean, doesn't it? It's like you're, you're drowning. And that's the yes. discomfort that you're talking about. It's like, you know, I'm going, I'm going to die here. And what I said to Ray when, and Patsy, actually, I think it was Ray when Patsy, I think it was a few of them on the call. And it was this idea that actually suddenly there is no bottom of the ocean. Exactly. When you allow that trust fall, it's like suddenly you're going through and you're in this other dimension and you feel so much fucking freedom there. There is so much opportunity there. And it's so bloody beautiful that I want it for everyone, this creative possibility, you know? So... I absolutely love that we've had this conversation. I absolutely love that you're going to be one of the first interviews. This right here, we are, uh, this is creation in motion right now. We are actually yeah. creating and building my brand new platform, myu.tv, which is a platform for conscious creators to express and to uh, collaborate and to network and to give and to receive 
there will be access to events, there will be access to music, there will be access to this podcast, the Mayu podcast, where it is, um, Mayu means the, the Milky Way, it was the Mayan Milky Way, and the deities and the shamans and the deceased souls would go to sip their soma. I want this to be the place where you get to sip your soma, and soma it means body, you know, so it is like going within and, and and dipping into, like filling yourself up with the beautiful wisdom that is all held here that we can access in various ways that you're going to learn about in the content. But also have conversations like this that wake your mind up to possibility and help you to understand yourself and your journey and access amazing mentors like Judith. Um, who is also also an author in Leading with Light. Um, so she talks all about this idea of the five-dimensional marketing in a chapter. Do you want to give a quick pitch for the, the chapter? Sure. So now I got goosebumps while you were opening up this new space of not only the podcast, but your whole world of the TV, the Mayu TV. I love that. <laughs> this is just so, so good. Yes, but basically the chapter in Leading with Light, I'm talking about specifically five paradigm shifts in the way that we do business the new way. And I'm guiding you exactly through basically what we've been talking about, how the marketing end looks different, but how you get to create it through you, how you bring together in sacred union, this human side and the soul side of you, so that you get to that point of expression that feels more authentic and that you let go of that control. But we really also tap into the business end, the reverse engineered marketing approach that I started talking about, then how you speak your truth, but how you then bring that into aligned sales. So it's basically the whole transmission, if you want, from what is inside you brought into the business context and the different steps. I'm, I'm pretty much focused on the marketing end, which then essentially turns into the sales end because, you know, you can't help it if the marketing and the copy is, is aligned and on point, then you don't have to push very hard on the sales. That is the thing, right? And that is basically what the book is giving you in these five different paradigms. There's a lot of my personal story in as well, how I got there and how I managed to get to these several points. There's also a beautiful story um, that also happened in Mexico after the retreat, right, mm -hmm. where I got challenged to understand how I am standing in my own power now, dropping all of the forcing and the controlling. And it was really challenging in that moment it was bringing me back to my past trauma it was looking right in the face of it but then it unfolded in a most beautiful way i'm sharing also that one in the chapter but i'm really bringing it back to the business end so what you get out when you read the chapter is not only my beautiful stories but really the idea of how you can craft together in your business in the next level in an aligned way the marketing and the sales end and then the bonuses that come with the book they give you additional guidance through masterclasses and trainings and workshops and things that you can use in your daily routines to connection inside to connect inside and to work through these things so there's meditations and breath work stuff so it's a whole mix basically that you get um, if you want to dive into that chapter of the book that i contributed i love it and we will obviously be putting the link to that on Mayu so that you'll be able to see this under the podcast when the episode comes out. Um, but I invite you to go over, Judith, and pop it on the live stream, um, obviously Facebook, but it's still live on, on YouTube and you can still post under um, the Facebook previous live stream so that people can actually access that chapter because I know that you have got it available in a beautiful ebook and that people can access it without having to even read the whole of Leading with Light, although I invite you to read the whole of Leading with Light because it's freaking incredible. I was going to say I've got a copy somewhere, but no. Um, and where I'd like to finish is to just, um, you know, we've talked into the power of immersing yourself in an experience like a retreat and um, all the benefits of that. And I, I'm going to share a little clip of Pulse Costa Rica, so that if anybody is feeling connected to this idea of, of awakening this 
sacred current within activating this beautiful feeling of oneness and, and and fully stepping out of all of your limits fully being in radical expression dancing with your mystery across five days and letting go of all of the distractions of daily life being fully immersed in a space where you know you can go within and you can connect with not just me as your guide but with the group and the energy of the group and the energy of the land to really take you to your next level um so i am going to play this beautiful little clip that i've been playing all day long because i'm just you know i'm just freaking loving it so much um let Yo. me just grab this over here i'm gonna give everybody the little goose bumps <laughs> okay so ready goodness me I'm actually like getting full on goosebumps watching it myself <laughs> oh it's so 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 beautiful it is going to be the most amazing experience and as you can hear from um Judith you know like it has transformed her entire year and I believe that this happened for the other guests it happened for me as well it was a very profound experience um very life altering and i am offering a very special package just for two days it has not been released yet but under the live stream um there is a link that you can put yourself onto the wait list to get access to that package first there is limiting limited spaces if you have been on the mystery school this week you get uh, another 500 um dollars off the package that we are doing so it's just you have to get yourself on this list if you're feeling any feeling inside that you you know you need this in your world then put your name on this list and i'm going to thank you so much judith i just i love you so much and you've been such a beautiful part of my life and my business and you know have become a really beautiful friend as well and i appreciate you i appreciate it that you're here and um, I really implore everybody to connect with Judith for support as well, because what she does is, is true magic and very unique. <laughs> Thank you so much also for having me here and for having me as one of the first guests on your podcast and into your world. This journey that we've had has been so beautiful. And I do have a feeling it's not over. It's far not over. <laughs> what else are we going to create? I'm curious. But this has been beautiful. <laughs> This has been really beautiful. So thank you for, for having me here and for having this conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. I'll never forget. I'll just, I'll just share one little thing that the first day of the retreat in Mexico, there was like no, no geckos in this room. And then I think sort of partway through the first day, we saw these little heads, these little geckos just like peeking in. And it was almost like they could feel the energy coming into the room and they needed to come and have a look to see what was going on. 
by day four, the entire roof was covered in geckos. We went out, I think, on the last night, wasn't it? We met to go out for dinner and we stood in the room and we looked up. I was like, look at all these geckos. <laughs> it was like the community of geckos had just come in to be in the energy of the room. It was just so magical. <laughs> yeah, it is. And they are, they are so receptive of energy. They are. It is. They are. They are. They knew, man. So, <laughs> right, I'm going to try to we are going across to the beautiful Carmen, who is also a, an author in Leading with Light. Um, and she's going to be, well, I'm going to tackle her on something that she possibly doesn't want to be tackled on. But this is also going to be another beautiful episode in myu.tv, the podcast that is launching in the next few days. Um, so I'm going to bring Miss Carmen in. You saw her episode in Leading with Light <laughs> tonight or today or the morning there in the UK. Um, and she took this Freaking, you took this freaking amazing journey this year. Holy moly. Like, <laughs> it is insane financially, like reality shift, identity yeah. shift, yeah. radical expression. I mean, where do we even, where do we even start <laughs> this interview? Where do we even start this interview? I don't even know. <laughs> I really don't I'm know. Starting, I'm going to start with the question. So okay. obviously we connect. But Carmen is also one of my beautiful quantum leap master coaches so she has learned the quantum leap method that we're using to create faster results with people to tap into the quantum mm -hmm. approach and also take a, a somatic approach to transformation and business results um and we were chatting on our master coach call the other day about the resistance that carmen has felt to share behind the curtains of this journey like to pull them open mm. and really get vulnerable about what it's really taken to get to where you are and and really what that personal journey has been mm. yeah. what has been creating that resistance mm. <laughs> you put me on the spot now <laughs> i know <laughs> um for me I, I know that it's fear it's fear of being seen it's fear of thinking but who am i <laughs> i'm only this little person that's come from you know born in south africa portuguese background you know that sort of thing and it's like who's going to listen to me it's that whole inner child i think coming through um the inner child that wasn't listened to when she was younger that didn't have a voice that couldn't speak when um when she wanted to she had to think about every single word before she spoke it um yeah and i guess it's part of that in a way coming out but i feel there's also everything's moving so quickly right now in my world that it feels i just yeah it feels like it's all coming you know <laughs> closing in on me oh yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> Yeah, I feel like that, like, right? Oh, I don't know if I can do this. And but it's like it's so the level of discomfort that I'm feeling, even sitting here right now, it's it's subsided a little bit more, but over the past couple of days, there's just been so much discomfort happening because there's just so much happening all at once. Um, but in terms of the actual sharing about it. I guess it's that i guess it's the being seen it's the fear of being seen it's the fear of i don't have fear of sharing the story because i share it with my clients like i share it with them you know even the other day it was like you know talking about the journey so far of what i've had you know how i used to last year i've been last last year this time no not this time last year but probably a bit a few months before i was relying on my mom to help me financially you know i was relying on having a part-time job a temping job that i didn't like because it almost felt like my business just was um it was failing like it felt like it was failing it felt like nothing was working and it was all of that pressure and and just being seen from that element like you know a woman of um, i mean i'm 43 years old and back then I was 42 and it's like, you know, a woman of that age, how can she still be re requiring? Do you know what I mean? There's like that whole self-conscious thing of needing help from parents at that age. 
but it's one of the things that happened. I mean, I wasn't born with, you know, uh, I, I wasn't born with a silver spoon. <laughs> um, I felt that things had to be really hard in order to get them. And I felt that where I was, you know, 18 months ago, of course, that was all the byproduct of what I created because I was always trying to hustle because that's what I'd been told from my younger years, you've got to work really hard. You've got to, you know, do this and you've got to do that. Um, and for me, it was like kind of all of that sort of thing. Um, it's, you know, it, it's having that and it's like, oh, this this feels really uncomfortable sharing this, you know, sharing it one to one base is fun. Sharing it out with the whole open world. It's like, Ugh. Yeah. so when my baptism of fire episode came out, I thought, oh, God, I was like, oh, this is really uncomfortable. <laughs> um, mm. But the feedback that's come from people that have seen it, they're like, wow, like I so resonate with it. You know, people are at that point in their life. And now, like, I feel okay starting to share stuff, you know, and there is going to be a big share ultimately, which I'll share with you guys now. I mean, at the moment, things have literally shifted massively and I've only share, shared this with Claire not so long ago um, but we currently um, we've lived in the same apartment now for I'm trying to think now since 2011 my husband and I and we have obviously three children and the apartment we live in is very very small it's a one-bedroom apartment and it's been a journey where we never thought we would get to a point where we would be at a point where we could sell this apartment because there were always obstacles coming in the way. There was a fear inside of me of selling because I thought, oh my God, if I sell this, then what is going to happen? Where am I going to go? Because we were, you know, we have debts and we have stuff that we're still paying off. And it's like, where am I going to go? And it's this whole caving in of fear coming through. And we've literally actually we've literally just sold our apartment now um we're doing an exchange i can't even believe i'm saying this how quickly this is going but it's like we need to be out by the 23rd of november so i've literally only got like a couple of weeks to get everything sorted we've already got a place a rental that we're going to be moving into which is a beautiful three-bedroom house and every time I think about it. I'm just like, even yesterday I broke down crying. I was in tears and I was just thinking, I can't believe that this is happening. Like, I can't believe that we're actually here. There's that light at the end of the tunnel. It's, it's, it's here. And just thinking about it, there's just so much joy inside of me that I just can't believe yet that we are here. And the, um, you know, at the minute we're going through sort of referencing process on this apart on this rental, and it's like it's that anxiety coming up again. <gasps> what if this happens? You know, oh my gosh, like what if it doesn't go through? But I'm just like, it's going to be fun. We are going to be fun. Everything is going to work out. Like there's just so much trust that I'm leaning into right now. My business is also obviously taking a huge turn compared to where I was, you know, 18 months ago. It's literally, I mean, I have clients that are approaching me simply. I don't do any advertising. I don't do any chasing either. Like it's just everything is organic. People, yesterday I had a message from someone, oh, so-and-so recommended I need to do your session. So can I please, can we please book them in for next month? I was like, yeah you know things yeah. like this they're just happening at an organic level and it's like there's an attraction and yesterday i went on live with one of my um colleagues because we have a podcast together which is called unleash your VBAC power we've just launched it a couple of weeks ago and we went on live yesterday on instagram to talk about it and the energy in that live was just absolutely incredible people were buzzing people were buying us badges my colleague was like Oh, right. so cool. um, they were buying badges she had hosted it on her account so they were buying her badges um, but she turned around at one point she said I don't think anyone's ever bought me this many badges I said it must be your energy Carmen <laughs> I was like <laughs> oh she's like oh I suppose I have to share it with you now and I was like making a joke <laughs> about it <laughs> and I was <laughs> So it was just things like this that were just happening. And, you know, it's just, 
it's freeing. It really is freeing because the thing is where you guys think you are now, like you don't know where you're going to be in six months time or even a year's time, you know, anything, anything could happen. I never thought that I would be where I am right now last year, you know, last year for me. I mean, I remember that quantum call that we had Claire where it felt like the whole earth was raining down and caving on me and I was crying and it was before I'd gone to Portugal to go and do some healing around my dad. And you were like, you're so close. And I'm like, it doesn't feel like that. Like I was literally bawling my eyes out, snotty and everything. And, you know, all of a sudden it's just like, it shifted from that point onwards. And obviously it's been an incredible journey and, yeah, it's just been powerful. I sorry, I've gone off on a tangent here, but now you can't shut me up. When I was younger, it's like, think before you talk, and now it's like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> It's a beautiful tangent. It's like, um, I mean, I say in my book, I think it's the first line in my book, in order to grow, we have to break. Yeah. And I think that plays into our vulnerability to be seen because we're not taught through life that our vulnerabilities our flaws our weaknesses our places of ugliness are valued or rewarded and so we play those parts down but as you go through your soul pilgrimage what you come to realize is that you have to free all of these parts of yourself into love because they actually make up all of you and if you're going to be whole if you're going to this be this beautiful whole expression of yourself, then you you have to you have to live through your shadow parts yeah, yeah. positively as well. You know, it's like if we look at the if we look at you, everything in the universe, it has an opposite. Mm. It doesn't necessarily make the opposite the bad thing. We don't like love on the morning but fucking hate the night. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like it's just a natural state of the universe. Mm. And yet we we fear these polarities in ourselves so much. We feel we fear the these shadows and these these dark places. But for you, I think what has been um, so illuminating and what is actually so powerful for other light leaders out there is knowing how important these shadows are to fully shining your light mm -hmm. and having expression around the the areas that actually means something to you, that actually move you when you're talking about them, mm -hmm. that actually alight this passion within, that will actually put you out on a stage and bloody jaw drop the audience mm -hmm. because it's not something that they've heard before. Yeah. Unless we start to go into these shadow parts, we can't have that level of expression. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can't speak in that way. We can't speak our truth. Yeah. Yeah. I used to hide a lot. I mean, I used to do massage because I was a massage therapist before um, an abuse therapist, which again, if you read my <laughs> chapter in my book, a lot of you will, will realize, you know, very quickly that maybe some of the professions that you've gone into, it might have not been something that you wanted, but maybe it was something that someone, a parent, maybe said you had to go down that route. And for me, that was the case when it came to studying, uh, becoming a beauty therapist. And um, I recall being, you know, with my clients, they would talk, um, you know, we would talk about uh, different things and at one point it would be like um talking about where i lived and i remember clients be like oh how big is your you know how big is your apartment and i remember like not saying the truth i never said it was a one bedroom i'd always say oh yeah you know it's we live in a two bedroom and it's like I, I hit that, like I, I felt ashamed, like there was a shame, a deep shame within me, you know, thinking, wow, you live in a one bedroom flat with, you know, at the time I'd had two kids. And then I remember doing a treatment on another client and um, letting it slip out that it was a one bedroom. <laughs> and afterwards I thought, oh, oh crap, <laughs> I should, you know, oh, what is he going to think? Like thinking about that, but like I'm sharing it with you guys now because do you know what? doesn't really impact me that much because I know that like I am where I am now but it doesn't mean I'm going to be here for the rest of my life it means that there is a room and there's opportunity for growth and for different things to come through and the journey is 
continuously evolving you know there's loads happening but it's also part of you like that yeah. and this is polarity yeah. it is saying that yeah. the three-bedroom house is <clears throat> like you know better yeah, yeah. than the one and and actually yeah i mean it, there'll be more space more comfortable you are deserving yeah. of that abundance but you know what the fact that you have lived mm -hmm. in a three when when you shared that with us or me it was with me on a call yeah. and i was like holy fuck you know, I'm imagining, I think my place is squashed with the, with the, the three of us and, or the three children and, and us. And it's like, to know that you, you'd been living in this one bedroom flat with what, like the three of you, I just, I was like, holy shit, this is insane. Yeah. 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 You know, but that is your story. Yeah. That is your magic. Yeah. That is your gift. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. That definitely. is, imagine the people I want, I want you like, I'm going to drill this, I'm going to drill this down because I was where you were as well, which was in the place of really struggling to feed my children. Mm. Which I know you were in that place. So, you know, you've really come from that, that horrid rock bottom where you feel like you're not just letting yourself down, you're, yeah. le you're letting your family oh, down 100%. as well. And it sucks, man. Like yeah. it is the worst feeling it's in the fun. world. And when you're there, it doesn't feel like, you can create the kind of income shift mm -hmm. as fast as both you and I mm -hmm. created a similar income shift, actually. Mm -hmm. But it is possible. Yeah, yeah. It is absolutely possible. Definitely, definitely it is. And you are the walking proof of that. And that's why you have to share that story. That's why you have yeah. to pull these curtains mm -hmm. back and, and really, yeah. if people can't see where you've come from, how do they know how exciting that's where you are is? that's the right. thing and Re relate yeah absolutely and that's part what part of me is going to be sharing once we've moved because i mean i've got images of myself in the bedroom literally bawling my eyes out just thinking this is hopeless you know i can't like how i can't see it happening this was last year i can't see it happening i can't see this ever changing because it just felt like everything was against us. You know, there was um, the whole um, cladding issue of the building um, at one point where we weren't allowed to sell. I mean, technically, if that still maintained itself, we wouldn't have been able to sell yet. The sale would have potentially only happened like in 20, either, I think 2025. My husband and I were talking about this yesterday and he was saying, wow, like, how did this all happen? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, uh, creation. Come, like, I'm like, so having come through the quantum leap intensive, yeah, and, I know, right? <laughs> like, isn't it crazy, right? That, that yeah. we've spent our whole lives yeah. pushing and forcing and making shit happen, and then you realize that holy crap. Yeah. Like things can change in an instant and it never comes like for me it never comes from the strategic no stuff never. i actually got on a call with my coach um on it might have even been monday this week and it was it was one of those sessions where you are in discomfort from, mm. from the minute that you get on your call yeah because my coach is a little bit like me, I guess, in the sense that I don't avoid those areas of comfort. Yeah. I just guide you straight into them. And it's the playground, right? And he took me into some really deep areas of discomfort. Mm. And he got me to this place of truth, of acceptance, mm. of expressing that truth. Yeah. And what living through that acceptance might look like. And that was what led to me going and sit, sitting on my driveway, actually, for three hours. I, I was in such a state actually getting off the call that I sent my children to my neighbor's house and I asked her to have them for me because we'd had a rough start of the day and they hadn't gone into school. And I sat on my driveway and I allowed myself to, to go into this, this deep fear. Mm -hmm. um, and the shift that happened obviously happened within me but the opening came into my reality within hours like stuff literally opened up in my physical reality within hours of that experience on the call in sitting on my driveway and and being in my process of acceptance and release and 
this is the truth. Like, yeah. you know, we see people talk about manifestation and, and, you know, saying it takes a certain amount of time and there's a six to eight week lag. Mm. No, like if you truly shift on the inside to that profound mm. level, things are already aligning immediately in your. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, I want to share that story about that client that cancelled on me because I think this yeah. is going to be massively oh relevant. <laughs> so yeah. in July, end of July, I, um, I w a client was due to come to London from um, Kazakhstan. Um, she was pregnant. She was going to come out here. She was going to um, have me as her birth support as well as a couple of other colleagues of mine. She had paid a deposit and the day before that she was meant to pay her final balance, which was two, just over 2,500 pounds. Um, she canceled. And literally I was like, Oh my God, 2,500 pounds. <sighs> like really, really like, Oh my gosh. Um, anyways, I had my, Oh my gosh moment. And then I thought, okay, I see something's going to happen. And I thought, no, I'm not going to panic. I'm not going to go on Instagram and say I've had a cancellation. That's what my colleague did. She did that. Yeah. She's being coached by me. I didn't want to stop her from doing that because I thought, no, she wants to do that. Let her do that. That's her choice. Even though she knows the moments that I tell her, like how this works, let her do it. So she did it. She didn't get anything like she had advertised it for a few times and nothing came through. This cancellation happened on the Thursday, the Friday, the payment was due. The Sunday I had a couple of messages. The Monday I had a few calls. Monday I had two new coaching clients that booked in for one-to-one -one coaching. One of them paid in full. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, I had a birth coach client book in for some birth coach sessions, and I had a new doula client sign up for me in November. I made double that amount in that space of time, and that's because I didn't yeah. chase it. I was like so – there was just such a deep level of trust and discomfort also at the same time, but through the techniques that we are taught, like breathing, you know, sitting in the discomfort, letting it come through you because the only way is through it. Yeah. It, the shifts happened. My colleague, when she finally let go, she finally let go. Then someone dropped in and said, I want you to be my birth keeper. I've got literally I'm due now. Do you have availability? And she said, yeah. And she paid her in full. And it was more than what she would have received from that client. And the only reason that happened was because she let go. And then her words to me were, Carmen, I get it now. And I was like, <laughs> good, because I needed you to go through that journey for you to see that the minute that you let go and that you lean into trust, that's when everything can shift for you. And mm -hmm. she was like, I get it. And I was like, good, I'm glad. <laughs> That was one occasion. Yeah. I mean, you start you start to see that you're never really losing anything. Yeah. You're always gaining yeah, something. Absolutely. If it is, if, if, and, and we start to see where we are holding on to, what we are holding on to mm. from a place of security and lack. <laughs> because if we're, if we're holding on yeah. from security and lack, then we're going to get that match mm. in our reality right yeah yeah so we're never really letting go and losing we are always creating space mm -hmm. and in the space is where the miracles happen yeah. now i see a lot of people talk about this oh let go oh surrender mm. and and then you look at how they are embodying that preach and they're not no, no. they're not willing to take no. a leap of faith they're not willing to step out of their comfort zone. Mm -hmm. They're not willing to face their fear. Yeah. They're not willing. You have got to get to the point where you are willing to die, yeah. where you are saying that this can all fall apart yeah. because I trust myself, mm -hmm. because I trust my creative power. Yeah. I trust that whatever is creating, I've created it anyway. Yeah. 
right? I've created the bad shit. That's a, a beautiful rite of passage, isn't it? When you start to tweak and you're like, holy crap, Jesus bloody Christ, yeah. all of this has come from me. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, yeah. I have created all of this. The only one who was ever to blame was myself, <laughs> right? It's like, or, you, or something happens and you're like, oh God, how did I, what did I, you know? Mm. But it's true, right? Yeah. And it, yeah. but it, there's a line there. I talk about this line in my chapter with leading, uh, in leading with light is that you have to cross this line of courage. Mm. Yeah. The courage to really know that you, you, you are, you are going to be fine. And I saw that Carmen, like I saw that so many times again, I like, I have so much love and appreciation for you. Mm. And it's been such a beautiful journey with you because I've watched you listen and respond and trust and seeing you take so many leaps of faith. What has it been like going through the quantum leap intensive? What is, cause obviously you came to me for the, you yeah. know, the quantum leap for your own business. Very quickly you were like, I really quite like this approach mm. and we're interested in learning the method yourself. Yeah. And obviously went through the quantum leap intensive that, <laughs> I mean, that's a wild ride. Isn't mm, it? Yeah, that's really, great. it is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, it was. It was. Um, yeah, it was incredible. There's just so much that goes into that program. Um, it's just so in depth. Like the previous coaching program that I'd attended, it was not nearly as much as what you cover in the Quantum Leap Intensive, and it's yeah, really, really powerful. I mean we go into the depths of really truly understanding ourselves, really unpicking, peeling back the layers. I mean, I was, you know, um, I connected with Bella because she was obviously my, my colleague in terms of the coaching pod and our sessions were just incredible. The breakthroughs that came from that one to those one-to-one -one sessions. I mean, just as much her as me, um, you know, with, with kind of challenging ourselves and moving forward. And, I remember, I remember reaching like the, almost the deadline and thinking, oh, because I'm the type of person that I'll try, I'll want to do everything. <laughs> I've got really good intentions. But then if something comes in, I'm like, oh, okay, I'll do it later. Let me focus on this. Like I get really easily distracted. And that's something that I now am working on a lot more because it just feels like, you know, I have an idea and I feel like, oh, I need to go and do that now. Oh, I need to go and do this now. And I guess you know, it's, it's the way that it is. And there are parts of me that feel, okay, if I hone in on it and I kind of connect and, and just, you know, be more, uh, you know, writing down stuff and, and going from a to-do list, but sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I feel like this free flow just, it kind of helps me be more creative. I don't know. People sometimes think it's a bit messy, yeah. but it's like, that's just the way I like doing it. Um, and sometimes other things, priorities that have deadlines will kind of take a little bit of a backseat. And I guess part of it might also be the discomfort for me because I think, oh, it's uncomfortable. Oh, I'll just shove it over there. I'll do it later. You know, <laughs> I don't want to do it now because, yeah, it's just, oh, it's just writing and sitting at the computer and doing this. And it was the assignments. And I remember asking you at one point, Claire, can, can we have another, you know, can we have another couple of weeks deadline, um, you know, a couple of weeks extension on the deadline? <laughs> and when you said no, I was like, oh, really? <laughs> I remember my face. I was like, really? <laughs> you were like, no, you're not going to have another two weeks. I was like, oh, okay. I wasn't expecting that answer from you. <laughs> and then you said, um, go in. You're a quantum coach now go in and feel into what you need to do to complete this. And I was like, what does she mean by that? <laughs> I'm thinking in my head, what does she mean by that? And then afterwards it landed. I was like, oh, oh yeah, I suppose I could go into each assignment, see what I need to learn and do the assignment. And then the rest I can always come back to because I've always got, you know, access to it anyway. The idea was to com complete it. And a lot of it I had done already, but it was just the little finer points of going through stuff again to complete the assignment. Um, and then it landed. And then, yeah, I ended up creating it and um, sending it over. And that was it. 
and, and what you created was like again wild like this is the thing right the left brain the logical i need to go through every single one of those things yeah we're guided when yeah. we can start to really connect with our feeling center we know mm. we always know yeah. we just have to listen yeah learning the quantum leap method especially in the business that you have like what difference has that made to the way that you're you're creating results mm. for your client oh it's been it's been it's been massively shifting because we i mean i go into like we use a lot of the movement um in sessions um i get them to focus on vision you know the, the quantum leap um when they can have something tangible in front of them that they have done because they they're going through an assessment the initial assessment that we do and then they can see oh okay that's where i'm at right now great okay right what can we work on to get you to where you want to be in terms of your vision like we're always working and leading with the vision people are having mm. breakthroughs i'd probably say the first couple of sessions are the toughest but then from about session three like things are just landing and happening and i have a client that i'm working with that i started working with um probably about a couple of weeks ago and she's had a lot of deep level trauma that's that we've been started to started to pick away at and she's probably had about three sessions yesterday i think was her fourth session and she's just come up with this phenomenal idea that she knew already what she wanted to do but she couldn't quite understand what it was and it's holding like these circles for wild women you know bringing the wilderness back into women and doing that from like a soul level because that's what she feels it's like unleashing the true potential within and holding these circles and maybe even doing stuff online and motivational speaking because even just listening to her I'm like you could be a motivational speaker and she's like really I was like, yeah, because you're just so engaging the way you're talking. And then I said to her, she said, that's funny you say that because I've wanted to do something along the lines of that, but I've never thought I was good enough. It's like these intuitive hits are coming through me. And when I'm connecting with people, like even a session that I did with one of my client's um, husbands, you know, we were talking and, you know, in that session, I was like, you're in a job that you don't like. I can see you doing breath work and stuff like that, like breath work and because he loves, he likes breath work, but he's never explored it as a teaching modality as him wanting nice. to teach it. And he was like, yeah, breath work, but I don't know if I could do it. And I said, why not? Of course you can do it. Why couldn't you do it? Oh, because I'm just so set, you know, in my ways and I've got my job and my family. I said, and? And he's now doing a training course to be a breathwork instructor. I love it. And he's absolutely uh, this, blown by it. This, this is something that's really key. You know, like there's something about the quantum leap method that unlocks mm. your intuitive gifts, that unlocks yeah. this, um, you know, like maybe it's how we're connecting into all of these senses mm. and awakening parts of the brain mm. and letting go of trauma I don't I'm I still haven't quite figured out what it is but it awakens your gifts and your magic and it, it is beautiful seeing you bring this into your business mm. you know yes you have to use your voice because you can feel it but you don't want to say it but you also you know you're using your connection to your own field mm. at, and energy and it's magical. I, I honestly believe that the next um, octave of humanity will be all around frequency and all around how we can actually help others, others' frequency to yeah. shift without some of the old paradigm, old earth paradigm ways that we, we know to do it, you mm, know, yeah. um, which is so much more um, flow, actually. The idea that, you know, so when I had this past life come through, um, a little while back with the ancient Egypt Egyptian mm. connection and yeah. pursuing this this uh, remembrance connected me with this guy in Australia who is rebirthing or remembering um, an, an Egyptian energetics he like a, a healing method mm. 
And obviously, I mean, he the way that he talked about how he'd connected to it, connect like it was almost like he was talking through my past life. And I thought, I'm gonna have to sign up to this program. But it didn't logically fit. Mm. You know, I couldn't see where I was going to put it. I didn't think that I needed it, to be honest. But something inside of me, that knowing feeling, this is being shown to you on purpose. The connection with this guy and the Egyptian connection has just got even deeper the more that we've gone into it. But what I realized with him this week was like, ah, okay, now I get it, you know. And this connects to my episode in A Baptism of Fire where I was feeling this uh, burden to, to help everyone. What if you take the conscious control away? What if instead of, you know, leading to pe- leading horses to water and drinking them, it, it's just about tuning their frequency. It's, it's so hands off, yeah. you know, it's opening up this healing to <laughs> so many people without even being like, without them even consciously mm-hmm. bloody knowing it, right? It's like, it's insane. The next paradigm of earth will be all around frequency. Mm. And it will be so easy. And I think that is that is why these gifts are awakening. And I, I know that the quantum leap method does awaken them. And it's just so magical to yeah. see and to watch. Circling back round though to again, like that circles back round to where we started at the beginning mm. with with being Yeah. Doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Like I know that you're coming into the quantum leap portal tomorrow to talk about um sexual trauma. Mm. Yeah. And obviously what you do with your clients really does work in into mm. where they're at at the most vulnerable level, you mm. know, the 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 way of releasing control mm. and letting go yeah. and opening like talk to me about this. And the, and the connection to, like, the connection, because I, I know, and this is not just something with you, it's it's with a lot of clients, that when we take this journey of self-realization mm-hmm. and we look back on our life and, and sex comes up mm-hmm. in all the ways that we haven't really been in our true power, yeah. in true alignment, yeah. and where we've played into roles, where we've done things that we don't necessarily feel good about, mm-hmm. Yeah, And I, I think this is huge. Like, I think this is huge for what you do as a birth leader, but also as a business leader as well, helping these birthing women mm-hmm. to actually create the utopian fourth trimester mm-hmm. where they can be a mum and a business leader, yeah. right? I, I, I feel like this bit is huge. Yeah, no, it is. It is. The, I mean, the key things when we usually start with the work that I do is focused around healing from the trauma because when women are going into birth they're they're at their most vulnerable and because birth is a subconscious effort anything could literally come up and it does come up you know it does come up all but because so many people are unaware of it they just think it's a normal part of the process of birth they think, oh, she's just going through transition. Oh, she's just having a bit of an emotional moment. And it's like, well, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. This is a woman almost trying to voice what's going on within her. But because the person that's holding the space isn't able to support that, and to be honest, I only became aware of this when I started doing the coaching sessions with my clients, where things were coming up, such as sexual trauma, you know, clients of mine that had been raped, one of them inclusively when she was 15 years old, you know, that came up in one of her sessions. And she was like, where the heck did this come from? And I said, she's like, I hadn't remembered this. She had basically blocked out that memory because it was so painful. She hadn't told anyone about that, not a single person. She had had a really traumatic second birth where in the hospital setting, it almost felt like she was reliving yeah. that exact event because that's what it feels like when you have when you have something where people are doing stuff to you where you feel like you've lost complete control essentially think about it that's exactly what it would feel like because 
you 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 don't have control of the situation because maybe you're overpowered by the person or in a hospital setting by the healthcare providers who at some points you might think they have their best your best interest at heart but a lot of them have their guidelines and policies first you know and not the woman centered care first and when i started unpicking this and i started thinking about it and i started talking with one of the with one of my midwife um friends who she used to be an, an nhs midwife she's now deregistered she's come away from it because she just wants healthy healthy births for women and babies and that's not happening in the system um and and you know we started talking and i said you know there's so much stuff coming up for these women in these birth coaching sessions that is all connected with birth and maybe this is why so many traumatic events are occurring because women aren't unpicking all of the stuff that's happened to them previously they feel like they don't have the control to speak up or the power to speak up that they can't voice themselves that they can't say no that was my case you know i felt i couldn't say no i felt yeah. i had to say yes to everything um and this showed even in my own journey, um, you know, growing up as a 20 year old woman, uh, 30 year old woman, you know, not even 30, but more 20s, where I got myself into some really tricky situations where I felt I couldn't say no. I felt if I had, if I was to say no, that there would be a consequence to that, which would be far worse than me just saying, okay, that's fun. And those situations were really hard. And at the time, like all I wanted to do was run away from them. And I did, and I forgot about them. And then I think it was, was it this year at the beginning of the year, I think that they resurfaced in one of our coaching oh, sessions. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, Oh my God, where did this come from? And it's the thing, how many women have experienced rape without it actually being the fact that they said no but more the fact that they said okay but deep within they didn't want to yeah like that's considered as rape also if you look at it and that was like how many of us out there are there there's probably a shit ton of us you know and this just like it blew my mind and then i started talking with people about it and more stuff started resurfacing so when the trauma is so deep, like that you you're consciously you can't even you can't even um, bring it up because it's so painful. When we go through these deep level sessions, it's gonna come up. Might not come up at the beginning, but it'll come up in a few sessions time. And I mean, I have clients of mine. <laughs> they turn around to me and they're like oh, Carmen, are you going to make me cry again today? I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> am I the person that makes everyone cry? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, you know, but this is peeling the layers back. And this is this is going to help you be able to step into your truth because you're healing from the past. And, I mean, even women, for instance, that feel that they have to use sex in order to achieve something or get something like how many women are out there doing that you know when in actual fact they're doing it because of conditioning because of things that they thought that they had to do because of society's beliefs um you know that was my case also you know my dad cheated mm -hmm. on my mom at the very start of their journey I always felt in order to hold a man, you had to kind of go above and beyond. And I used sex a lot as a way of, of capturing, of, of like staying together, which wasn't true to me because a lot of the times I didn't actually want to. I was doing it just because I felt I had to, you know? And all of those things where we're not able to kind of step into our true power, especially in birth, it's going to affect the same thing. You're going to say yes to everything that anyone says that anyone says you have to do, you know, in business, you're going to get walked over. It's like, you're not going to be stepping into your true authentic self. So for me, when we can heal and work through these layers, and it doesn't mean you've got to heal first and then do everything else. No, you can be doing them connectively together. Like it doesn't mean you have to, okay, crap, I've got all of this trauma. I've got to heal first and then I can set up my business. No, it's not what I'm saying. You can do both hand in hand, you know? So yeah. Does that answer the question? It absolutely does.
I, I, you know, I think what's so, what's definitely come through for me is just how much of this unconscious sex trauma yeah. is held in the body as memory. Mm -hmm. Big time. And it is, like, you're absolutely right. It is the echoes, the triggers, the feeling that you're in situations where, Maybe it is I'm going to be fully seen. Maybe it is I'm being pushed down a route that I don't feel comfortable with. Maybe it is I'm people pleasing. Mm -hmm. All of the, you know, there's so many areas in business, like actually what if it's coming from that mm -hmm. trauma? And what if that trauma is also not just our trauma because you may not be able to name yeah. sexual trauma in your, your own past history, yeah. but what about the collective mm -hmm. trauma that we're carrying as men and women actually mm -hmm. yeah around sexual trauma mm -hmm. that that again came up for me recently of realizing you know connecting with a belief and then saying is this mine mm -hmm. like is this my belief or is this is this collective mm -hmm. because what we talked about earlier with joe and and in the portal this week actually the the quantum leap portal in joe's session was really how um, sex is another area where we look at the ways that um, society has had us pinned by fear. Yeah. It's very much been crafted and molded so that it's seen in a very certain way. We have, we have certain roles, um, you know, and we've seen certain things born like pornography mm -hmm. so that our entire version of what is actually a beautifully sacred gift it, it's just all skewed up it's all completely fucked up actually and you know I think what dawned on me and what feels really important is like what is what is it that my I want my kids to know what is it that my kids take forward <sighs> I, I actually get quite emotional thinking about mm. that and thinking just like you, you know, my own experiences in the past where I haven't been in my authentic truth. Mm. I, I definitely haven't been in my power. Mm. Um, and it, yeah, it, it feels important that we talk about this stuff mm. and that we relate this stuff as well and that we heal this stuff. Yeah. And of course we're coming in tomorrow because yes, we've tackled this meaty subject of sex magic, which is really exciting, right? It's an exciting subject. But it's also extremely triggering if yeah. you're holding on to trauma and you cannot embrace that beautiful creative power within you. You cannot trust yourself, mm. actually. You cannot, because that the, the distrust outside of yourself is, is only a mirror of your distrust within yourself. Yeah. So we, we cannot embrace this beautiful, ancient, creative magic without healing yeah totally <sighs> your session like it's going to be wild too mm, yeah and, and really absolutely. important for those people who are are wanting to have full expression who are wanting to be fully seen because you've got to get mm. away got to get away from these unconscious yeah. vulnerabilities yeah absolutely like areas yeah. where you're just immediately, whether it's consciously or the unconscious mm. body, whoosh, the wall's coming up. Yeah, yeah. The armors are going on, yeah. you know, and you, you're not allowing yourself to be fully seen. You're not allowing. No. And when you're no. not allowing yourself to be fully seen, you're also not bringing all of yourself mm -hmm. into light. Absolutely. And the thing also is it's looking at the past versions of yourself because there was a point in time when I went to Portugal last year in October where all of those past versions of myself came up. Yes. Where I forgave each and every one of them and, you know, just accepted like that's, you know, where I was at doesn't define who I am today. Well, it does in a way, but it doesn't. But it's like you're kind of going through that and you're thinking, wow, you did that. Okay. I understand like you start like unpicking and unraveling what happened and and how it happened and rather than be like oh my god you're so stupid why did you go and do that it was just like you did what you did because you thought that that was the best thing at the time and you kind of forgive and you learn 
you learn from it you know life is all about lessons and and it's all about teachings and i think those very things came up to probably show me that there is another level of healing that needs to occur when it comes to the birth element you know we talk about a lot one of the things that we talk about sometimes is the the cervical exams you know women sometimes want them sometimes they don't that is a very big trigger for someone mm -hmm. that has had sexual trauma you know especially when you say at the first point you don't want one but then the healthcare providers keep coming back and pestering you you know my colleague actually says oh what so they raped you like she blatantly says because that's what it feels like they're constantly mm -hmm. coming at you up to the point that you're like okay just whatever just do whatever you know because they've broken you to that point but when you can heal from the trauma that you hold you can actually say to them just stop did you not hear what i said first time around it's a no you know and that's yeah. sometimes what the role of potentially a doula comes in and does and that's what i do for my clients i advocate for them you know the other day i had a client of mine ringing me in tears because the midwife was at her home threat well threatening her in a way um telling her if you have a home birth that you might die you might die and you'll leave your two babies behind because she has something that's called preeclampsia which hasn't mm -hmm. been diagnosed by the way so i said to her pass me the phone let me speak to this midwife so i said to ask the midwife i said has she actually been diagnosed with preeclampsia and she said, yes, she has, like all arrogant over the phone. I was like, okay, well, how have you diagnosed that? Is that just through her urine samples? No, 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 her blood tests also show that she does. I was like, oh, okay, I wasn't aware of that. Do you mind passing me the phone back to my client? So she said, yeah, that's fine. Pass the phone back to her. Um, I said, did your blood tests show up that you had markers of preeclampsia? And she said, no. I said, okay, well, the midwife just said that she did. So I think you need to go back to the hospital and figure out who's talking bullshit here because someone is, and I don't know who. Do you know what the midwife did afterwards, Claire? She denied that she said anything about a blood test to me in my conversation. She denied it. She outright lied and said, I did not say that in the conversation. Just for you guys to see what you're kind of having to be up against with medical system at the minute. And for me it was like you know this brought up a lot of trauma for my client based on things that had happened with her grandmother who had gone through a stroke you know triggering stuff like that and in her previous cesarean also where she actually had those feelings of of death come through thinking i might die and it's like the thing is no one's guaranteed when they're going to die you know you might walk out of your home and drop down to the floor and that's it game over it might happen in birth it might not happen in birth it might happen you crossing the road and someone hits you with a car like yeah. it's never guaranteed you know whether you're of course home birth is safer because you're in the comfort of your home and birth works best undisturbed going into hospital you are more prone to having interventions and other crap that they hand you on a platter but nowhere is guaranteed you're not going to be any safer in hospital than you're going to be at home because you don't know what your outcome is. And this is a very big message and I'm trying to bring up more now and tell people that you've got to sit comfortably knowing that where there is birth, there is death too. You've got to be comfortable with the two, you know? And again, that takes a lot of uncovering and a lot of unveiling from that end too. So there's just, there's so much to unpick. That, that, it, that, it, that, I mean, that. <laughs> We've all got to do that. We've talked yeah. about that today. Yeah. We've all we've all got to we've got to become at peace mm. with the idea of death. Yeah, yeah. We because life actually emerges from death. Yeah. You know, and 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 that is where Judith said in her interview. You know, she's died over and over and over and over again this year because. It is the death of these identities that we yeah. hold on to. Yeah. It's the death that the death of ourselves. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. And Absolutely. you know, when you go, when you do that beautiful process that you did, when you go back to those versions of yourself, mm. and actually, what is dying there is a perception that you held of yourself. Yeah. True. And the birth of passion and unconditional mm. love, and yeah. elevation in frequency. Yeah. 
for you, it, it's got to be, so, I know we've talked about this, you know, again, taking away projection mm -hmm. and seeing things as they are mm -hmm. to stay in the high frequency. Yeah. But you're going out there and you're tackling issues that are freaking deep. I mean, you are cracking a system that has been entrenched. When I, I, I had a cesarean section with my first daughter mm. for the only reason being that I went through the whole antenatal thing and the only thing I was told was all the bad shit that was happened. I was in fear. Mm. Yeah. I was induced because I thought I was late. Mm -hmm. And it was the it was the same cascade of interventions. Yeah. Usually my second daughter. I decided it wasn't going to be that way, but I had to go through a deep trauma release to entertain the idea of that home birth. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, you know, and, and, in, and in the end, I did end up back in hospital because I did birth her, but I panicked when I felt yeah. the, the crowning mm. and I, I squat down and I pushed and I, I tore myself basically. Mm. So my third birth, I went even deeper with this beautiful healing journey and and had the most magical home birth yeah. but you know by that point I did sit in front of the obstetrician who told me he told me that there was a 99.9 percent .9 um chance that I would spend the rest of my life fecally in 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 in, 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 in I'd shit myself yeah, basically, basically. <laughs> um that there was a high chance that we'd both die and all of this other positive stuff. And I, I, I remember sitting there and, and none of it, none of it stuck. No, no. I remember sitting there just feeling sorry for this guy that lived so yeah. in his textbook rather than in the possibility of the human body and yeah. the power of belief, mm. as you call your chapter in a leading in leading with light, the power within. Mm, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, some of these numbers that they pull out, they're literally pulling them out of the asses. Like, we mentioned this yesterday in my live that I did with my colleague. It's like, they'll lie to you. They will lie to you just so they can get you in and get their own way, you know? Um, but when you become at that point where you just think, I'm not afraid of dying. I'm not afraid of any of the shit that they throw at me. Like you lead in such a different way. You go into that experience thinking, do you know what? I trust I can I can let go. I can lean in and I can surrender to this. I can trust. I trust that this is this is all going to work out as it needs to for me. You know, there's just it's it's different. Whereas if you've got that baggage of fear of dying or fear of your baby dying or fear of something going wrong, it's like anything that they'll tell you, you'll say yes to it because you're so afraid. You'll make that decision based on fear and not from truth. So when you can release all of that baggage fear that you're holding around birth around anything in your life you will go into birth and business mm -hmm. and life in a very different way and that's why they're all so very connected so let's talk about that go into business because you're not just you're not just a birth leader no. you're a business leader and yeah. like i mean you're like i'm imagining you know like fucking superhero women mm. with guns and capes oh, and like them. by the time you get them to that fourth trimester and they birth yeah. this utopian yeah. birth yeah. and they've you know like they must just walk into their business and be like ah! yeah no definitely i've got a client me, just come at me death because you know because I, I think i think this is what a lot of business people don't realize is yeah. just how much fear they yeah. are carrying mm. that is blocking them yeah in in every way Absolutely. you know that just like in birth, if yeah. you can just yeah. relax yeah. and breathe and mm. open, yeah, absolutely. The business is gonna grow itself as you've experienced. Mm. Totally, totally. I mean, this client of mine, she's literally had her baby a couple of weeks ago, um, and she ended up having another cesarean. But the reason for that was because she had a very hypertoned pelvic floor. Um, mm -hmm. and hypertoned pelvic floor doesn't give baby the opportunity to rotate to then be able to be born. And that's because she had been strengthening her core. And strengthening core to a certain degree is good, but when you're overdoing it, it actually it, it makes it really difficult for then baby to do the rotation that it needs to. Um, anyways, long story short, 
she was in a great mindset, by the way, like mind trauma released, everything was fine. It was just that hypertone pelvic floor that was stopping her. Um, so she ended up with a repeat cesarean. She's had her baby probably a couple of weeks ago. And um, she's someone that I'm coaching now for the next year um, around her business. And um, we had our first coaching, well, not our first, we've had a few coaching calls already whilst she was pregnant, but her first one since she's given birth based on her business, she's pivoting her business. So she's focusing around recovery. She's focusing around um, having a lotus birth, which is where the placenta is still attached to the baby by the umbilical cord uh, during a cesarean because she firmly believes that it is possible. And it is, she's wanting to help prepare women parents for a cesarean birth if they have to go in and have one um so she's pivoted her business she's changing her name um there's just a lot of exciting stuff happening for her and that's the thing you can take your you can take your experience and she could have been like oh i didn't get my v back which again at the beginning she did feel a little bit like that she totally knows why she didn't because she even said to me i should have listened to you when you told me about the pelvic floor release and i said you can't do anything about it now. It's it's done. You know, there's nothing you can do now. And um, and she then um, pivoted everything. She's been sitting with it and thinking, how can I shift this? So I said, I knew already how she could, but I wanted her to give the answer. And then she came up with this beautiful idea, which she's calling um, C-section Phoenix, as in Phoenix Rising. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be a powerful one for her, you know, helping women recover from cesarean births, helping women go into cesarean births if they if it's medically necessary or if it's their choice um, and supporting them in that front. So, yeah, it's it's powerful. And you can see, like, you know, she's in such great energy going into this new project and it's just she's going to be launching I think the new brand, I think of the 20th of November. So in a few days time. Um, so she's getting everything together. I've got another client that I'm currently working with too, who her baby is going to be one in December. Um, she started the journey with me shortly after she gave birth in terms of business coaching. And um, it's been one hell of a ride. Like she's got this beautiful membership that she has where women come in. It's called Nurturehood. Um, she talks to them. It's, it's something to do with um, fitness, mindset, and body, but she focuses a lot on um, the coaching element because so, she's a coach, so she brings that in as well as nutrition, as well as exercise, um, et cetera. The women are absolutely loving it. She's killing it in there. She's got one-to-one -one clients. Again, she used to do them on a one-to-one -one basis, like face-to-face -face capacity, charging peanuts. When I, used, when I found out how much she was charging an hour, I was like, what? why <laughs> she was like um because that's the rate that everyone charges i said i don't care what everyone charges you need to be charging more let's how can we do this for you to charge more how can we elevate those prices and we did it by creating safety in her body you know and she's elevated them and as oh, she moves forward, it's like yeah she feels safe and every time that we go to up the price, she's like, oh, this feels a little bit uncomfortable. And I said, good, I'm glad it feels uncomfortable. Now go and get the next call. <laughs> and then she'll go and she'll do it. And she'll be like, I've booked another one-to-one. -one. I was like, great. <laughs> and she'll have her kids climbing all over her when she's doing the exercises online, like she did the other day. And she had a... Um, her daughter have a massive meltdown in front of everyone and then we laughed about it in coaching and i said what are you going to do your daughter had a meltdown in front of the camera it's life you're showing people what is possible you know you did it that there's a real theme coming through and i'm gonna uh, uh, hoping that people are picking it up safety in your body yeah absolutely magic comes from safety yeah. in your body and you don't even know that you feel unsafe in your body this is the thing mm -hmm. it's all unconscious yeah we began the day with this idea of allowing the universe to heal you and i just got the sacral stirs when i just said that and looked at you because <laughs> this is this is the essence of it is to allow these experiences that life is giving you to heal 
the trauma that you are carrying, the blocks that you have, whether it's birth, whether it's business, whether it's relationships, Mm -hmm. it's all a gift. It's all this beautiful, magical gift. And it does, it it comes down to this, this safety within, which is a self-trust. It's the trustful. I'll ask the same question as I asked Judith in her interview. Mm. What does that word mean to you? For me, sitting in the discomfort, but, and still believing that everything is going to be okay. Yes. Ah, fuck that. That's like one of the hardest things ever. When you, when everything in your external environment is telling you, you're not fucking doing this, this is ridiculous. But yet that little thing inside of you, there's still that little flicker of hope. Hold on to that flicker of hope. Because even though everything around you is turning to shit and falling to pieces, as long as you've got that flicker of hope, it always means that there is something bigger coming. And leaning 100%. into that is huge. And and you know, like when things look unsafe as well, because yeah. I know that you've experienced this. Many of my clients experience this. That the the inner shift is taking place, but the external mm. hasn't quite got there yet. No. So you know, maybe it's the yeah. ends aren't meeting in the business account. Yeah. Maybe it's the bill, sudden bills, tax bill coming in, and and you have to look upon it with absolute unconditional love, and you have to say. Well, you have you you have to not stir on the inside, yeah, because you've got the foundation within yourself, yeah. yeah, the belief in the truth that you are the creator of everything and yeah. whatever is happening, you fucking got this. Absolutely. You are able to dance in the eye of whatever storm, and not just dance, dance with a freaking smile on your face, mm. and by dancing, all those problems take themselves away. And often what is showing up as a problem, I've found, honestly, is actually the universe gifting you mm. a release. Yeah. This is this is the letting go, right, is to not challenge what is releasing because you've been holding on to it from a place of safety and security. Yeah, definitely. Or just familiarity or the known, to just surrender and say, this is all working perfectly as it should in the perfect moment. Absolutely. There is a song that I used to listen to whenever I felt myself going through those moments of discomfort, um, which is called, it's actually called Surrender, the song. (laughs) And I used to, I remember lying on my mat and just lying on the floor and listening to that song and just then doing a bit of stretching with regards to the psoas and just crying, letting the tears just fall and there being a big release from that. And that was huge, really, really huge. Um, so do it's like doing whatever you can to just let it come through, you know, not stopping it, just, yeah, letting it come through for sure. It's definitely a lot of stigma around that, isn't there? Like, mm allowing yourself to feel allowing yourself and and like we've talked about today you know nobody really talks about the loss that comes with these quantum leaps Mm. because even if you are letting go of something that is not meant for you the chances are that it's been a big part of your identity it's been a big part of your life it's been a big part of who you are and your story and i know i've experienced more than once in the last few years Mm -hmm. where there really has been a deep grief of the the thing that is is releasing but you just got to trust that it's all divine plan and you know i'm so i'm so happy that you Mm -hmm. stepped up not just a right and leading with light and i really invite you as well just like judith to come Mm -hmm. and share your um link Mm -hmm. so that people can read your story in your chapter yeah um but to allow me to profile that journey like your episode is currently the most watched baptism of fire episode so far (laughs) (laughs) and the winner 
Rhythm and Corner. <laughs> wow. Oh. Yeah, it's the most watched. So. And that's probably because I didn't want anyone to watch it. Yeah. <laughs> Worrying is praying, baby. Right. Worrying is praying. <laughs> you know, your, your story your story is resonating with people mm, and yeah. I know that you said um you know I will share when mm. when I and that's one of those those uh conditions yeah if I when I, I if that when that and we've <laughs> we've got to let that go because there's only now yeah yeah absolutely there's only this beautiful precious moment mm. of now yeah and you can close your eyes and you can connect within and you can connect with this sacred pulse mm -hmm. you know the heart it's the heartbeat of the planet you are the heartbeat of the planet you are here like you are such a profound change maker you've got balls of steel i love the content that you're putting out there and the fact that you're fucking like steamrolling like what's that big bloody thing that you just smash like <laughs> honestly like this bullshit of the fucking cor big corporate big farmer oh, big no. crazy yeah. crap that has yeah. women like in shackles yeah you will love the live that I did yesterday because my the my friend, my colleague that I'm that I did it with, she turned around at one point and she said, um, we were talking about obstetricians or something, and she said something along the lines of, Do you know what I really want to do? I want to take, you know, I want to tell women, you know, to take their placenta and to slap it across the obstetrician's face. <laughs> and I was like, oh, <laughs> did you just say that? <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God, can you I, – I can actually picture her doing that also, like just taking the placenta and just pwah, whacking it across her face <laughs> because of all the lies and the bullshit that they talk about, you know. And it's – yeah, it was just – oh, it was it was so funny, so, so funny. But it's the, it's, it's the only stuff that – unless they break out of yeah. that traditional birth route, yeah. that, that's all that they hear. Yeah. And, and there's so many elements that we can say is exactly the same in all areas of our life. And so it needs voices yeah. like this, it needs voices like yours. It needs your balls yeah. of steel yeah. to stand up and be unafraid yeah. to say – the truth your truth mm. that has come from your story you're yeah. living proof of everything that you share yeah and i just think i think it's magical oh, thank you <laughs> you're amazing so I'm just so, will be so grateful to have been on this journey with you and to have you guiding me through it so it's been amazing and it mm. continues on <laughs> in the does. master coast yeah <laughs> Carmen is our beautiful master coach and um, she will be in the quantum meet portal in the morning, 7 a.m. New Zealand, 6 p.m. UK. 6 p.m. UK, yeah. Talking into um, sexual trauma and how you release it, how the quantum meet method can mm. help you to release it yeah. um, and, and why you should if, you know, you want mm. this radical expression you want to stand in your own power whether that's in your business in your relationship or in your life in general um those of you in the mystery school obviously have a free access to the quantum leap portal so take advantage of that those of you who have tuned in today just go down into the app there's a link in the comments um and you can access the free level and upgrade if you choose to jump into mm -hmm. carmen's session but i i I say do it <laughs> and catch up on this epic topic of the whole sex magic topic has been wild. We put new um, themes into the, the quantum leap portal every lunar cycle. So we will be coming into a new theme with the new moon. Mm -hmm. um, and if you want to become an author like Miss Carmen, if you would like to share your soul story, get your message across Two, we have Raywin here in the live room, who is uh, one of the first authors in the next volume of Leading with Light, volume two, which is a movement, a movement to 
<sighs> just be saying more of the things that people need to hear to mm-hmm. know that there is light, that there is hope, that there are alternatives. Um, and you could become that lighthouse, you know. And um, I think we're going to close the event here unless we have any questions. I had, I did have a message from our final guest and she's unwell. Oh, no. <laughs> but we have almost... We have almost made it 12 hours in this epic live stream that Facebook kicked us off, but YouTube's still going. 11 minutes, 34 seconds. No, 11 minutes, 11 hours, 11 34 hours. minutes, 49 <laughs> seconds. Raywin says, I think that is just perfect. So um. this has been the most incredible experience. I'm so grateful for those of you who have been here in the live room those of you who have been following along on social media, dig in, dig into this beautiful community. Um, we're here for you. We are leading you. Carmen is one of four Quantum Leap Master Coaches who are here to support you. Um, and all of those details are available within the Quantum Leap community. So if you have any questions from today in terms of how to connect, just reach out, whether that's through the comments on the live streams um, or through the contact forms or by booking a call. And I just am sending so much love out. Mm. All of you today has been about love. I'm feeling pretty loved up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Jesus, thank you. Thank you to everyone. <laughs> and I am oh. signing out. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Take care, everyone.